Hello, hello. Oh my god. Music audio go down a bit. Thank you very much. I am doing okay, I guess. <laughs> ah, how about you? Last night was like way longer than I expected it to be. I was like, meh, only like six parts. It won't take that long. Maybe like eight hours. I sat for over 10 hours. What the fuck? What kind of bullshit? <laughs> for some reason, as if you didn't sit up long, like sit up until late last night. Uh, I'm also tired, but back it. I want to play, so I will play. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's just fucking jump into it. Yeah, I took ages, so now I'm gonna like see how far I am, like four hours in. Oh, if I'm like in the middle of a chapter, I might just round that up. I don't know yet. It depends, really. I just know I'm gonna take my fucking time with this one because this is like where I like stopped playing like the first time. I don't know why because I think it was because I was like moving or something and I didn't use my laptop as much. Something like that. I don't remember exactly. Anyways. The inherited turnabout. Let's go. What's for dessert today? And Jeff Mass's piece of cake. Macaroons and waffles, lights and fluffy chiffon cake. Happiness for one and all. Sweetest temptations. There, where? Over there. Take a peek inside the oven. Ding. <laughs> Freshly baked desserts. <laughs> Let's cook again today. It really did not take long for the audio to tank a bit, huh? Sorry, that was fucking awful dubbing on my part, but in my... Gregory. Tomorrow, I'm heading towards that fateful place with your son to find out the truth of 18 years ago. But yeah, all the episodes are called Turn About Something. Even in, like, the newer games. Oh my god, this is five days before my birthday. <laughs> Mr. Shields, isn't it about time you told me what this is all about? Why did you bring me to this museum with you? Ah, I get it, I get it. I totally get it. You're not busy now, are you, Miles? I thought it would be nice if we could share the romance of the constellations together. I beg your pardon, but I would like to leave. Sorry, sorry, it was just a joke. Do you know about the final case your father worked on? The IS-7 incident? Yes, Manfred von Karma showed it to me immediately after I became a prosecutor. I reviewed the case file again last night after you invited me here. And, while I don't remember it very well, I also had been in attendance at the trial back then. When I was young, I loved watching my father do battle in the courtroom. <laughs> I... <laughs> During that trial, it was my father, the defense attorney Gregory Edgeworth, against... My former mentor, Prosecutor Manfred von Karma. And while the trial ended with the defendant being declared guilty... I see, so you were there too, at Gregory's final trial. 
In that case, I'll cut to the chase and tell you what, what you want to know. The truth about the IS-7 incident. Museum day with Edgy. <laughs> it happened 18 years ago, during the winter. All the buildings were covered in snow, coating the entire town like a layer of frosting. And it was this in this very place that the incident occurred. This was all before Uncle Ray became a defense attorney. Tiny Ray, oh my god. <laughs> 18 years ago. Miss Redworth, this request sure was sudden, don't you think? Indeed, we were contacted immediately after the client was arrested. My name is Gregory Edgeworth. I am a defense attorney. Oh hell yeah, we play it as Edgy's daddy, yeah! <laughs> I hate that I said that, sorry. I brought my assistant, Raymond, with me to meet our client, but... A murder on Christmas Eve? This is just too much. Ah, in the darkness, a miraculous meeting. Welcome, one and all, to the visitor's room. Amazing! So this is what meeting a client is like. It all happened so suddenly, I was completely surprised. I'm also surprised. Oh, How old is he? He's 18, oh my god. What about- what- what does he say about his badge? Proof of my profession. Polishing it every day has become my routine. <laughs> A thousand pardons for startling you. I am merely expressing happiness through song. This <laughs> was before the guard lost his wife! <laughs> Welcome one and all. I greatly appreciate you coming. So you're the client for this case. Indeed. My name is Gregory Edgeworth. I'm a defense attorney. I will be representing you in court. This is my assistant, Raymond Shields. Nice to meet you. I, um, I'll do my best to help you. Relax, Raymond. Please excuse his jitters. He's working part-time at, at my office as an apprentice. I thought I'd let him assist me in this investigation. So Mr. Gregory and Raymond, correct? I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. My job involves saving my cl clients from crimes in which they were falsely accused. First, I should determine if he is truly innocent. First, I would like to know more about you. Ah, I have forgotten to introduce myself. My name is Jeffrey Master. What? You mean you're... Master Jeff? The world's greatest pastry chef. Jeff Master, the Master Chef? <laughs> yes, I am honored that you have heard of me. All my fans call me Master Jeff. Wowzers, I'm totally starstruck. I can't believe I get to meet Master Jeff. My name is Jeff. <laughs> Raymond seems to know quite a bit about Mr. Master. Master Jeff makes fantastic desserts while putting on a song and dance show. What's for dessert today? Macaroons and waffles, light and fluffy chiffon cake. Listen, it's so hard to sing along with this because the text comes up. Later than the music, so <laughs> over there. Take a peek inside the oven. Look, it's freshly baked desserts. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. I caught up in their song. I got caught up in their song myself. Oh, that's cute. Whoa, I'm so happy that I got to sing with Master Jeff. It's my dream come true. 
Oh, oh, thank you. I am happy to hear that as well. Mr. Master. Raymond. Shall we return to the matter at hand? Yes, of course. My sincerest apologies for making you wait. And where should we start? Tell me about yourself. You are the world's greatest pastry chef. And you are also skilled in song and dance. Okay, you do, you, you do that. Yes, when I'm having a good time, my body just moves to the rhythm by itself. You seem to enjoy making desserts from the bottom of your heart. Oh, <laughs> if you don't have a good time making desserts, you won't make anything good. Creating desserts that bring happiness to one and all is my purpose in life. Master Jeff's desserts are practically works of art. They sparkle and look so delicious. He's famous for his dreamlike desserts. Bringing happiness to all with his dreamlike desserts, huh? The incident occurred in your estate, is that correct? Yes. That's where the great dessert contest was being held. It seems that the body was discovered in one of my creations. They found it in one of your desserts. For that reason, I was arrested by the detective in charge of the initial investigation. I would never do something as vile as robbing someone of their life. I am certain that the police will also realize that they have made a mistake. Really? Hmm. Do you know anything about the victim? He was a man named Isaac Dover. He was one of the competitors in the contest. He was a wonderful man who made desserts of the highest beauty. Why did he have to die? I see. He truly seems to be grieving over the victim's death. I believe I have a sufficient understanding of Mr. Master's personality. Mr. Master, before I accept your request, there is one final matter I must confirm. You did not kill Mr. Dover. Can I take your word for it? Yes, that is correct. I did not kill him. No matter what happens, I would never take another person's life. Those aren't the eyes of, the, of a liar. I understand. I believe you. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us. The pleasure is all mine. I am grateful to speak with someone other than a detective. Next, we shall begin our investigation of the crime scene. We will report back with our findings once we have finished. Mr. Gregory, Raymond, I wish you good luck. Oh, sure it's cold outside. I didn't expect it to be snowing this hard. Indeed, a blizzard like this will probably not clear up for a while. But even so, this mansion is ginormous. So this is what Master Jeff's place is like, huh? If you're going to hold a contest in your own home, you would need this much space after all. La la la. Welcome, thank you for coming. Oh my! Are you okay? I am so very sorry. Would you happen to be Monsieur Edgeworth? Yes, I am Gregory Edgeworth. And I'm his assistant, Raymond Shields. Greetings and welcome, Monsieur Edgeworth and Monsieur Shields. Please call me Catherine Hall. I am in charge of the household affairs in the, the, of this estate, and I am also Monsieur Master's assistant. Ah, oh, no way! You're the famous Kate, aren't you? You know of me? Of course I do! I see you on TV all the time! I'm a big fan of Piece of Cake. Oh goodness! I'm glad to hear you're a fan. Tell me, what is this piece of cake? It's a TV show that's, hu that's hugely popular with the kids. Master Jeff and Kate sing and dance while they make delicious treats. Just like this! Oh no, here we go again. What's for dessert today? Cookies and caramel. 
<laughs> I can't sing along. I want to, but I don't know the lyrics. Oh, everywhere. You're, you just open up the oven. Okay. Now it's time for dessert. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Oh, Monsieur Shields, that was incredible. <laughs> oh, that was incredible. <laughs> I always practice along with the show. Maybe I should tell my son about the show. Man, doing this dance repeatedly sure works up your appetite. Ah, pardon my inconsideration. I've forgotten to take care of our guests. Please relax and have some tea. Oh, this is some fine... Ceylon? Ceylon? How do you say that? <laughs> I should have done more research. I should have looked into the lyrics of the damn song. And I also should have... Oh, Sulon? Is that it? Sulon! Okay, interesting. I didn't expect that. Sulon tea. Okay, well, now I know, I guess. Some fine Sulon tea. I hear the aroma of citrus does wonders for your concentration. I see. So this is what Sulan tea smells like. Oh, these saucers are chilled. Yes, and they help cool the tea more quickly for people who are bad with hot beverages. I see. These teacups also have a wonderful design. Oh, thank you very much. They are one of the few pride and joys of our estate, ordered directly from France. Now we know why Redworth is a tea nerd. Tea nerd, plant nerd, like what is he? Was he steel samurai nerd? Like what is he not a nerd of? You know, like they were made by the famed sculptor Pierre Hoquet. They are my absolute favorite articles of tableware. You seem to greatly appreciate this man's works. Yes, they are like treasures to me. She appears to be very honest about what she likes. Thank you, Miss Hall. But it's time for us to move on to business. Are there any details that you can give us about the incident? Ah, oh, you're right. I sometimes get so distracted welcoming guests that I forget myself. To tell the truth, I was the one who discovered Monsieur Dover's body. So you were the first one to discover the body? Is it true that the body was discovered in one of Mr. Master's desserts? Yes. It was during the judging of the Great Dessert Contest. I heard the sound of something breaking from Monsieur Master's room. Monsieur Master? Are you in here? Ah! When I looked inside the room, I saw Monsieur Dover's body inside the treasure chest. Thank you very much. I am sorry to have made you recall such painful memories. No, I should be the one apologizing for not being much help. Now then, I believe it's time for us to start investigating the crime scene. Monsieur Edgeworth, Monsieur Shields, please find some way to save Monsieur Master. Monsieur Master is not someone who could commit murder. Yes, of course. Just leave it to us. 
then I shall entrust it to you. If you'll excuse me, I'll have to continue serving tea to the other inspectors. Raymond, let's head to the crime scene. Yes, sir, Mr. Edgeworth. Am I seeing correctly? Is that... Is that Detective Bad? Pre... The, the bullet holes? <laughs> wow, this whole thing is made of chocolate. Can't believe I'm actually seeing Master Jeff's desserts up close. Were this not the scene of a murder, I admit, I too would have delighted in this occasion. Ugh, you've reminded me it's a murder scene. I'm getting shivers down my spine. Perhaps it's because this room is cold to begin with. Now that you mention it, this room really is cold. Achoo! Oh my god, it totally is! Never expected a defense attorney to show up so early. Pleased to meet you. I am Jeff Masser's defense attorney, Gregory Edgeworth. This is my assistant, Raymond. How do you do? Detective Terrell Bad, homicide. Mr. Bad, the detective in charge of this case. I had a few words. Mmm, tastes kind of bitter. He ate the paper! He likes to digest his memos in his stomach as well as in his mind. <laughs> Sir? <laughs> what? Uh, wait, how old is... I mean, he is like... 42. Damn. It's just a strange habit of his. Please don't be too concerned. It would probably be too much to ask him not to be con concerned at all. More importantly... Detective Bad, will you give us permission to participate in the investigation? Permission denied. Why? Mr. Edgeworth is Master Jeff's defense attorney. Defense attorneys plant false evidence to try and get their not guilty verdict. I mean, what better... <laughs> <laughs> what better time to freeze that, am I right? I don't want their kind to disturb this, the crime scene. Mr. Redworth would never use false evidence to defend his client. Heh. <laughs> I can't trust that. Coming from a defense attorney. How ironic. Do the police still suspect Mr. Master, even after the investigation? If we didn't, we wouldn't have arrested him. I believe that Mr. Master is innocent, and that's why I have come to investigate. Believing in his innocence, without investigating the crime scene. How naive. That's why I would like your permission to investigate. By investigating the crime scene, I want to ascertain if my thinking was naive or not. Hmm. <laughs> so you don't intend to leave until you've investigated huh, the crime scene? Yes. Cheh. Fine then. I will give you permission to investigate the crime scene. Thank you. But I'll be accompanying you. I can't trust your defense attorneys after all. Listen, it's the prosecutor you should look into, alright? <laughs> if you understand that, you can begin your investigation. That's... a lollipop? I'm a little surprised myself. Alright, let's begin the investigation. Raymond, be sure to take notes on the case. Leave it to me, Mr. Edgeworth. Just begin already. So this was where the body was discovered. Yeah. The body had been removed, but otherwise, the crime scene has remained untouched. Built such a large ship out of chocolate is magnificent. As expected of Master Jeff, I want to try eating it. 
I don't know. I have no idea where to start eating it from. Anywhere should be fine. But if you start eating the crime scene, I'll make you leave. Ah! Don't glare at me. Can't you tell it was a joke? I'd like Raymond to be just a little bit calmer. It seems that the body wasn't... Oh, the, the person... It wasn't discovered inside this treasure chest. The person who discovered it was Miss Hall. Monsieur Master? Are you in here? She heard the sound of something breaking inside this room and came in. I would like a little more information about this. Hmm, what's this? Something has been dropped inside the treasure chest. Hmm, this is. Seems to be some kind of seal with a with a design and initial initials carved into it. it looks like a. S Sign it? S sign s s Why do they use words? I don't know. Is it. Is it oh my god. Fucking. Signets. Okay, it's signets. I wasn't sure. Huh. Looks like a signet crest. Was it the victims? Don't know if it was the victims, but we should take it for now. Cool. And seeing the crest and a broken stand. It seems the stand supporting the ship has been broken. The ship tipped over and broke the treasure chest, didn't it? Ah, uh, maybe. Could the victim have been crushed by the ch by the ship and killed? If that were the case, this would have been an accidental death. But why would he be inside of a fucking chocolate treasure ch treasure chest in the first place? You two aren't serious about that, right? Well, we were only discussing one of the possibilities. I was being pretty serious, though. Good for you, Raymond. Detective Vad, I would like you to tell me about the state of the victim. If you mean a photo of the body, here, look at it. All you like. Seems the victim was beaten to death with a blunt object. Has a murder weapon been found? You should try asking the prosecutor in charge later. It seems he doesn't intend to tell me frankly. So, may I borrow this photograph? Sure. It's not a photo that was taken by the police. Miss Hall took a photo of the body with an instant camera when she discovered it. An instant camera? Is that like a disposable camera? An instant camera is a camera that can develop its film right after taking, taking a picture. Eh? Such a convenient camera exists? Anyway, let's go over the state of the camera scene a bit. This photo, upon closer examination, contradicts the state of the crime scene. I'll have to deduce the contradiction to resolve this matter. Blood! There is no blood in there. Eureka! <laughs> Are you sure the only thing the police removed from the crime scene was the body? Uh, they also took away the piece of cloth that the body was wrapped in. In that case, a major contradiction has been created at the crime scene. Contradiction? Detective Bad, please look at the crime scene carefully once more. The blood stain that should have remained at the crime scene has disappeared. Definitely didn't get any reports about the bloodstain being cleaned up. I'll check forensics. Mr. Edgeworth, what happened? 
comparing the photo and the crime scene, something struck me as being out of place. In the photo, the chocolate underneath the body remained intact inside the treasure chest. However, in the actual crime scene, it's missing. The chocolate with the bloodstain has completely vanished. Yes, did the police remove it, or was this the work of the criminal? According to forensics, no one has cl cleaned up any bloodstains. I see. Well, that would mean someone erased the bloodstain. Who knows? Okay, logic. That's what I need now. Breaking sound and broken stand. There we go. Due to the broken stand, the ship lost its balance. It would see Miss Hall enter the room upon hearing the ship collapse. Yeah, when Miss Hall entered the room, the ship had already fallen over. At any rate, I wonder why the stand broke. Maybe there was something wrong with the ship's balance in the first place. Is that really true? It appears to be a display of sailing equipment. There's also the possibility that one of these is the murder weapon. No, it looks like these pieces were all made of chocolate. You can't beat someone to death with these. Tch. Misleading. At any rate, and they all have such good workmanship, they look just like the real thing. It really speaks about the level of skill Mr. Master has in his craft. What are you investigating? Sir, I am checking the temperature of the stream. What have you learned? Sir, this stream has warm water. The stream is connected to the fountain in the patio and runs through every room. It's an unusual construction for a room. Mice of the rich. I'll never understand. Okay, I can't look at the water or anything. Elegant tea tableware and cookware are placed on the counter. It looks like the same tea set Miss Hall was using earlier. Is Master Jeff drinking this black tea? On this tea set, only Jeff Master's fingerprints were found. Were his fingerprints found on any of the other cookware? Cookware was washed. Nobody's fingerprints remained. Or he might have been cooking with gloves on. It seems the only thing here with his fingerprints is the tea set. Excuse me, but you are? My apologies. I was meditating. What did you ask, Sir Detective? Actually, I am a defense attorney. My name is Gregory Edgeworth. I'm his assistant, Raymond. Pardon my late introduction. My name is Dane Gustavia. I am one of the pastry chefs. Chefs, chefs. Participating in this con contest. What kind of desserts do you make, Mr. Gustavia? specialty is making desserts out of candy. Oh, what a cute seahorse! It was meant to be a dragon dancing in the sky. Eh? This is a dragon? I think it would fit better in the ocean than in the sky. I know all too well that design is my weak point. I plan to study design and undergo training in Zhengfa once things settle down here. I probably shouldn't touch the subject of design any further. Mr. Gustavio, if you aren't related to the investigation, why are you in this room? So detective wanted to know more about the desserts in this room, so he asked me to come. Since he's one of the contestants, he might know something. Mr. Gustavia, those instruments you use are quite unusual. These instruments are called candy pumps, and they pump air into the candy. They 
kind of look like swords. They're so cool. Indeed, ever since I began using them, no day has gone by where I didn't receive a burn or wound. That's why I wear red clothes, so that not a single stain will ever show on me. Making the swords is serious business. I am always training. Does he injure himself because he hasn't trained enough? Oh my god. Can you tell me about the great dessert contest that was held here? From the looks of this room, it seems the desserts weren't just for eating. The exhibition of Sir Master held was a contest in the art of dessert. The art of dessert? Hold on, wait, there's one thing that I have to fix. Uh, real quick. I just remembered. Uh, yes. There we go. That should work now. I just noticed there was like this tiny white line at the top of the top screen, so I fixed that. The swords are true works of art, made solely out of edible materials. The works of art in this room are all made from desserts. Now that you mention it, the whole room is filled with the smell of chocolate. Sir Master exhibits great talent in both flavor and design. If you are not able to surpass Sir Master in flavor and design, you will not be able to win. Being the world's greatest pastry chef is pretty hard, isn't it? In other words, if I can surpass Sir Master, I shall become the world's greatest pastry chef. That was the price of this contest. The price is the title of the world's greatest... Greatest? In addition to that, there is also Sir Master's treasured angel's recipe. If you want to learn more about the contest, just look at this piece of paper. These were the rules that were given to the participants of the contest. Okay, let me just look at the rules real quick. Prices, title of world's greatest pastry chef and angel's recipe. Rules 1. Contestants' room will be judged starting from the left. Afterwards, all parties will meet in Jeff's room. Any decorations not made from desserts are prohibited. Entering another contestant's room before the judging is done is prohibited. Interesting. Sorry, but I do not know much about the incident. I only learned about the incident after the judging had finished. How was the contest judging carried out? Let's see. Sir Master started judging at 3 p.m. Starting from my room, the judging proceeded in the clockwise di direction. So somehow, Dover made it from all the way to the other side. Oh, wait. From the other side over to Master's room. Interesting. I used the room for the, to the right of Sir Master's room, which is the room we're in now. Next, the room of a female pastry chef named Delicia was judged. A female pastry chef? What kind of person is she? She is a frightening woman who would do anything to achieve her goal. I heard she used a lot of cream to make her fantasy theme to search. And lastly, Sir Dover's room Sir Dover's room was judged. His works were frozen statues made from sherbet. Sh sh sherbet. Paul discovered the body in the middle of Stavia's judging. Gustavia, I mean. She panicked and because she immediately notified the police. Master continued judging without knowledge that the body had been discovered. As a result, Master judged Dover's room in Dover's absence. Hmm. Seems we have plenty of room to suspect Master. I'm lacking in information. It's probably too early to object. By the way, Detective Vad, what were you talking to Mr. Gustavio about earlier? I was asking him about chocolate frame hanging on that wall. I thought something was missing. 
I thought, if I asked someone who knew a lot about the desserts, I could get an answer. Although, thanks to your arrival, I still haven't got my answer yet. Well then, since you've been waiting for so long, we can ask him about it right now. I guess you don't understand sarcasm. Mr. Gustavia, can you assist us with this matter? matter? I train in the art of desserts every day. If you have a question about desserts, please do not hesitate to ask. Thank you very much. Handprint. Let me look at this first. You can make such a beautiful picture out of chocolate? It's expected of Master Jeff. Is this really chocolate? It looks like an actual picture to me. Impressive, Sir Attorney. You know it as well. This picture of an angel is not a search, but rather the angel's recipe. The angel's recipe. The price for the contest. Eh? This picture isn't made of chocolate? Indeed, within this chocolate frame lies a recipe book. Sir Master told everyone when he explained the rules of the contest to us in this room. So the contestants knew the recipe was here. How about it? This frame. Don't you think it's missing something? This, this must be what Detective Bad was asking Mr. Gustavia about earlier. This chocolate frame, there does seem to be a part that's missing. That's what's been bothering me as well. Eh? What's missing? Let me show Raymond the part of the cho chocolate frame that's missing. Look closely at this part with the decorations. Can you see that one of them is missing? It's true! It's different from the other decorations! Hmm, this perfect balance in the decorations is not like Sir Master. On closer examination, it seems this frame is not the only one with missing parts. I need to investigate further. All the desserts in this room each have one part missing. Oh, the candle holder and the sailing tools are all damaged as well. So someone tampered with the crime scene. Perhaps. Maybe. The master vandalized the room himself to fool us. Master Jeff wouldn't do that sort of thing to desserts. Tampered desserts. I wonder if they are connected to the incidents. These finger marks are... These are unidentified finger marks. We don't know who they belong to. Since no fingerprints were left behind. Finger marks without fingerprints. This might be related to the case. Hmm, it's a mystery. He was probably wearing gloves. Ugh, Detective Bad likes dreams and romance. I don't think there are dreams of romance at a murder scene. A man sneezing again. Are you alright, Raymond? Ugh, this room is way too cold. The fountain patio wasn't very warm either. This room certainly is cold. Do you want to wear my coat? Nope, I'm fine. Because that's something that you promised to give me when I become a defense attorney. Huh, that's right. Is the temperature turned down so low? It's been turned down in order to maintain the chocolate's temperature. Why don't you try opening the panel cover on that wall? Panel cover? Oh, there's a secret panel hidden there. This control panel is installed in all the rooms her master prepared. So as not to detract from the search presentation, the cover was closed to conceal it. What does the panel do? It allows you to change the temperature and the lighting in the room. In order to preserve any type of dessert, you can go down to about minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. And how much is that? Do we have to... Uh...
Minus 30, okay. Minus 30 degrees Celsius sounds better than minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm just saying. <laughs> the room would be like a freezer. It's set to 59 Fahrenheit, no wonder I thought it was cold. I'm not even gonna freaking bother. I'm gonna guess it's like... Wait, how can... <laughs> 15 degrees. Okay, yeah, I was like, I was thinking like 10 maybe, but I was like, no, that's not. I was like, 15 isn't that cold. No, I thought it was cold. Let's stick to bad. I'm not allowed to change the temperature, am I? Serving the crime scene is the foundation of being a detective. But I'm not a detective! A defense attorney can't recklessly damage a crime scene either. Indeed, Sir Assistant, enduring hardship is also part of training. In order to preserve chocolate, 59 degrees Fahrenheit to 64 degrees Fahrenheit is the ideal temperature. I'm guessing that's 15 to 20 degrees Celsius? Hmm, the ideal temperature for chocolate, as expected of the dessert chef. Oh, it's but a trifle. This is basic knowledge that everyone, anyone should know if they're a dessert chef. So what's the ideal temperature for candy and fresh cream? As long as you watch out for humidity and hot temperatures, candy shouldn't melt. For fresh cream, around 50 degrees Fahrenheit is the ideal temperature. Need to watch out for the humidity and hot temperatures for candy. I see. Take the bad. He seemed a bit happy when they were talking about candy. Is candy one of his favorite things? Okay, cool. That means we're done with that area right there. Okay, now where the hell am I? Can you sound just teapot than that? Then I have talked to Dane Gustavia. Examine finger marks, examine the frame again. Hmm. Hold on, wait. Had a cert in the shape of a candle holder, huh? titled Light of Fire. It seems that one of these important lights isn't lit. Is it symbolic or... Captain's Log. A chocolate ship, which is also made out of chocolate. It seems its title is Journal of Regret. Running out of rum while drifting at the Red Sea has really made me re red with regret. Reads. I don't know what kind of voyage it was, but it doesn't seem very regretful. Okay, what logic do we have anyway? Okay, we do have that tamper desserts. And why the stem broke, yeah. <laughs> oh, that would have been... I mean, technically, uh... It wouldn't really make that much sense. I mean, they could probably, like, make that be, like, what it's made of in, in the translated version. But in, in, uh, in Japanese, a ship is fune. And... Unless they call it chocolate ship. <laughs> I, I doubt that would work. <laughs> Each of Mr. Master's works had a piece that was missing. Add to the fact that the ship's chocolate stand was broken. I think we can surmise that someone ransacked this room. And the one who did it could be the true culprit. That I don't know. But I think it's safe to say that the ship's stand got broken when the room was ransacked. 
And when the ship fell over, it broke the treasure chest lid. I expect that the lid is a of the treasure chest was originally closed. Yeehaw! Oh, no, I wonder if I can actually look up here. Mm, I don't think it says anything about the chocolate chip here. Nope. It seems our investigation of this room is just about over. I should make it clear. Jeff Master is the culprit. W why? All the rooms in this mansion were locked from the inside. And the only way to open them from the outside is to use this key to the mansion. Do you know who had the key? Master was the only one with the key. There were no spare keys. By using the mansion key, Master could enter all the contestants' rooms. Of course, the key could also lock his room from the outside. However, Mr. Master's room is currently unlocked. Yeah, that's why I suspect Master is the culprit. I'd like to hear your reasoning in more detail. If the body had been found in a locked room, Master would have been the prime suspect. That's why Master made sure to leave the door to his own room unlocked. And to ensure that the body would be seen, Master broke the lid on the treasure chest. After the judging, everyone was scheduled to meet in Master's room. That would have created the impression that the murder had occurred if he was away. Contrary to his expectations, the body was discovered by Miss Hall. That's my reason for suspecting Master. Got that, Ace Attorney? So you also think it was Mr. Master himself who vandalized this room? Yeah. You defense attorneys believe that justice lies in trusting your clients. But I'm a detective. If I believed every poor sap story, I let the suspicious ones get away. I understand your reasoning thoroughly. However, I'd like you to hear my thoughts on the subject now. Hmm, fine. Detective Bad believes that he is right, but I don't give up so easily. I can't accept his reasoning. I'll have to show him evidence that contradicts it. Yes. He already said something. To ensure that the body would be seen, but... What are the notes here? The victim's body was found in a treasure chest made of chocolate. In Jeff Master's room, the cause of death seems to be a hard blow to the head by a blunt object. Some circumstances are unclear regarding a part of the treasure chest and a bloodstain. Each of the desserts in Mr. Master's room have one part missing. Before the ship's fall, the treasure chest lid was closed. Originally, the victim's body was hidden inside the chocolate treasure chest. Miss Hall entered the room when she heard a sound. I think it's likely that this was the sound of the chocolate ship falling over. Yeah, that's what you would think, just by looking at the crime scene. You said that Mr. Master broke the treasure chest he lid himself. But this photo shows that the ship's fall caused the lid to break. The lid broke just before Miss Hall found the body. Then Mr. Master, who was in the middle of judging, could not have broken it. I never said that Master broke the lid directly. The ship was set up to fall during the judging. I believe it tampered with the stand. Do you have proof he tampered with it? No, but the investigation isn't completely over yet. It seems they still haven't found anything conclusive. I'm really not working hard on giving them voices at the moment. I don't know how. <laughs> I have like three men's voices. <laughs> have you found any other fingerprints other than Mr. Masters in this room? Yeah, there were some left on the door. 
but the victim Dover and Master were also among the fingerprints left behind. Before we made our desserts, we all gathered here to have the, ju the judging explained to us. Perhaps that was when we left those fingerprints. You didn't find any fingerprints on the works in this room. What? Someone tampered with the chocolate in this room. So perhaps there are other fingerprints on it apart from Mr. Masters. Hmm. No matter what we find, it won't clear Master of Suspicion. Labby, hurry up and dust the chocolate for fingerprints. Roger that, sir. Detective Bad, we found another person's fingerprints on all the chocolates in the room. Whose fingerprints? They belong to a pastry chef by the name of Delicia. Good work. Return to the investigation. Yes, sir. It would seem that there are other suspicious people besides Mr. Master after all. Hmm. <laughs> I don't need a defense attorney to tell me that. I'm not stopping my investigation. You will just go and listen to what this Delicia has to say. Delicia. Gustavia told us about her not too long ago. Is she really a frightening woman who would do anything to achieve her goal? Mr. Redworth, this Delicia lady sounds mighty suspicious to me. Hmm. It seems that it will be necessary for us to speak with her directly as well. Detective Bad, would you allow us to accompany you? I'm not obligated to do that. What? But you were the one who discovered the truth of the crime scene. Fine. Have it your way. Follow me. Detective Bad. Thank you. D Detective Bad, sir. Are you sure about that? Right now, that prosecutor is in the room. Doesn't matter. Him and I don't see eye to eye. Him? Who's the prosecutor in charge of this case anyway? Manfred von Karma. <laughs> and you're worried about the defense? I. Okay, sure. Fucking go off, I guess. What? Von Karma's in charge? That guy hasn't lost the case in 25 years. Manfred von Karma, the living legend of the prosecutor's office. If the rumor of this courtroom, of his courtroom performance, are to b be believed, He's a man who would do anything for a guilty verdict. No matter what kind of prosecutor he is, I can only hold true to the path I believe in. Cool, that's the first chapter. I want to say that for now, this doesn't look too bad, but god, once we get to like the middle parts, because this is just beginning part two. <laughs> wow, a candy castle! And there are even some fairies over here. Over there, I mean. This room seems to be structured in the same way as Master's room. But it's nowhere near as cold. This room also seems to have been fitted with a temperature control panel. It's over by that orange lamp, right? Indeed, let's not forget to investigate it later. Even so, this room is like something out of a fairy tale. Is this cream-covered castle Delicia's work? Where is Delicia? Oi! Can I help you? Oh my god. Oh, uh, I don't know how to do her voice. Hello, boys. I'm Delicia Scones. In my native England, I'm known as Miss Delicious. That's fucking awful, I'm sorry. 
I'm called a boy, even though I'm already 34. It's certainly a rare experience. But boys? I understand you calling me that, but Mr. Edgeworth? As far as I'm concerned, you're all boys to me. Even that detective over there. My name is Bad, not Boy. Just how old is this woman? Mr. Attorney, let's finish our business here. Hmm, right. You, what do you think you're doing conversing with a mere attorney? Mr. Edgeworth, a, a scary man came out of the candy castle. From Karma. Eh? This man is Prosecutor Von Karma? Manny! So he's Von Karma. Pleased to meet you, Prosecutor Von Karma. My name is Gregory Edgeworth, defense attorney. You will kill me in a few years' time. Blah. I have no interest in the names of defense attorneys. After all, they only exist to be crushed by me. What a rude man. Piercing gaze and furrowed brow. Ugh. He's even scarier than the rumors say. Although that statement was also very rude. Prosecutor von Karma, would you allow us to investigate too? Hm. <laughs> you think I would give information to a mere defense attorney? As I thought, I don't... I won't... It won't be that simple. However, I'll make a special exception for this room. Why did he change his mind so quickly? You, old bloodhound. You call me that. My name is... Bad. Ha! <laughs> a mere detective, speaking back to me. I admire your courage, at least. Bad. Stand watch and see to it that they won't- that they don't misbehave. Why... me? I will not accept your refusal. Well then, I'll be investigating Gustavia's room next. Babysitting again. I wonder why he and Von Karma aren't investigating together. Instead of being on bad terms, it seems like they hardly know each other. Mr. Edgeworth, now that we've got, got Von Karma's permission, we can continue investigating. Yes, his manner bothers me, but I am glad we can at least continue the investigation. Hold it, I also need to investigate this room. I don't want you disturbing the room. So you'll investigate. After me. What? Aren't you the detective in charge of this case? Why haven't you investigated this room yet? The detective in charge of the initial investigation was a close colleague of Von Karma. I came to take over for him. So I only got to this mansion just recently. So that's why he and Von Karma aren't investigating together. Detective Bad, will you allow us to investigate with you like before? In doing so, you'll be able to supervise us and also ensure that we don't tamper with anything. You want me to watch you? You're a strange lawyer. Hmm. I'll let you stick around. A little longer. Yay! You did it, Mr. Edgeworth! Thank you, Detective Bad. If I decide you're holding up the investigation, you'll have to leave. Yes, I understand. Well then, let's begin the investigation. Oh, I thought it was just... I... No. What a work of, fa of fantasy. It's like a fairy tale world. You like all this... You like all this fairy tale stuff, don't you? Huh? Sorry, I got a bit too excited, didn't I? No, it's interesting to me since you're so enthusiastic about it, unlike my son. Your son? He's only in grade school, and he prefers to read law books instead of fairy tales. Edgeworth! <laughs> Miles! I'm worried that he won't be able to make any friends that he can talk to. No. 
Sorry, I was just thinking to myself. Huh, what an interesting kid. I'd like to be his friend. Considering he has really special interests. But that... I mean, I can both see it, but also like, not. He's a conservative and I know it's really cute. But also, uh... Yes, but like considering like the special interest thing, considering how he only reads like law books and he, he doesn't read fairy tales. Could he be autistic? <laughs> I mean, he, he doesn't really know how to like act around people and he's not that good at reading people all the time. So, maybe? I don't know. It would make sense, wouldn't it? <laughs> Great head cannon. <laughs> I'm an interesting kid, I'd like to be his friend. <laughs> I think you'd be more of an older brother to him. <laughs> an older brother, huh? Well, I got some growing up to do, to do then. Yes, and that's why we have to continue with the investigation. I shall let me look inside here first. The castle doors are open. If someone opens the door, they really should remember to close it afterwards. Would he say that directly to Prosecutor von Karma, though? Huh? It looks like there's some stuff inside. Hmm, let's see. Wait, I'll examine it. Stay out of the way. Tch. This fresh cream melts too easily. Interesting. Seems like Detective Bad's shoes got covered in cream. Where are these objects kept inside the candy castle? If there is anything you want to investigate, you better speak up now. There are rolls of blue cloth here. Looks like there's four of them in all. They certainly don't look like desserts. Yeah, I don't know what the cloth is for. It almost seems like it was hidden here inside the castle. Also, the color of this cloth looks familiar somehow. Two big rocks are placed here. It's like... a storage room. Yeah, the inside of the candy castle isn't so dreamy. Hey! Maybe they're raw gemstones! Who knew that there were such treasures hidden within the castle? Seems like a rather careless way to handle treasures. Hmm. It looks like there's something underneath the rocks. Seems there's a pedestal attached to both of the rocks. Of course, it's a pedestal for displaying the gems! Well, in any case, this is no ordinary object. Hmm, and this pillar has a hexa hexagonal recess. Looks like a pedestal. But it has nothing in it. Hexagonal recess, huh? I wonder what would have been put in there. Giant strawberry. Could fit would fit it fit with fresh cream. Think of that. I don't think strawberries are hexagonal. I was just hoping. And I hope it's a banana. I think I prefer blueberries. <laughs> what? <laughs> What just happened there? Anyways, hexagonal re recess and pedestal of rock. Sweet. The rock's pedestal has a similar shape to the recesses of the castle pillars. 
castle's pillars. Perhaps the rock is meant to be placed on top of the pillars. Oh, that's right. They're both hexagonal. I wonder why they were hidden inside the castle, though. The blue cloth and the rocks inside the castle. I wonder if they belong to Delicia. Delicia, those things in the castle, what are they used for? Ah, uh, those? I'm afraid. I can't tell you. Looks like Von Karma is keeping her s silent. Eh, I've found out. He'll get mad at me if I talk. Prosecutor Von Karma doesn't intend on being upfront with his information. Aw, it's such a shame. We finally figured out where the rocks are supposed to go. Could it be that you're interested in my goods? Eh? Your goods? Those are my popular relaxation goods. You mean the rocks and the cloth? Yes, see. Oh my god, how? I don't know. <laughs> my British is awful, I'm sorry. That's right. You see, they're not actually rocks, but special lamps made from rock salt. Wow, so those are lamps. <laughs> it gets even more exciting, because this cloth also has an amazing secret. As soon as she showed interest in her goods, she became quite talkative. Since we got them out, come experience the therapy, boys. Baddie, could you put everything up? It's not baddie. It's bad. So you won't do it? Is Baddy being a bad boy? Labby, are you done photographing this room? Yes sir, I am. Go help Delicia. Yes sir, I'm on it. <laughs> Thanks. I knew you were a good boy underneath, Baddy. Miss Delicious, that was amazing. You even persuaded Detective Bad. Thanks a lot, buddy. And you too, foreign seas. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's a... Uh, that's one... Wow, okay. That's one hell of a compliment. I forgot the word compliment for a <laughs> second there. She even gave the forensics a nickname. I think that's her way of showing she cares. So therapeutic about these things anyway. We don't have time for that now. Buddy, the show's about to begin. Forensics, finishing touches, please. Yes, ma'am. It's... Wow, it's so beautiful. It really is. I wish my son could see this. <laughs> Gregory, please. Stop. Oi, I told you so, right? The four fairies and the curious candy castle was the theme of my work. It's so sparkly and cute, right? It seems like one of them is missing something. Oh, yeah. The truth is, I plan to unveil it during the contest. Well, I'm glad I got to show it to you, boys. Huh? But it doesn't look like the rock salt lamps are lighting up. Huh? huh? I wonder why. It is very wholesome. I think I'll need to examine the rocks and the fairies again. I'm gonna look at the rocks. Look at rocks. Looks like both the lamps and the pillars are broken. Both of their light bulbs are broken. Maybe they were dropped on the floor. There's some sort of red stain on this lamp's surface. The stain. Could it be? That smell. There's no mistaking it. It's a blood stain. 
Huh? That's a blood stain? Why is there a blood stain on this lamp? I wonder if this has something to do with the lamp bulb being broken. I should also take a look at the other lamp here. So this is where Delicia originally intended to put it, put the lamps. I don't get why she put them in the castle. Since they're broken and don't light up, maybe she decided to put them out of the way. If she wanted them out of the way, there are many other places to store them. It's like that old saying, hide the salt in the sugar bag. I think the saying goes, hide a tree in the forest. If Alicia intended to use these lamps as decorations during the contest, it creates a contradiction with that piece of evidence. I need to deduce the contradiction of the scene. Oh, yeah, 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 I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. It's a contest rules. Because, uh, rule number two. Any decorations not made from desserts are prohibited. These are not made from desserts. Detective Bad, please read the contest leaflet. Any decorations not made from desserts are prohibited. Huh. These rock salt lamps and the fluorescent cloths go against the rules. So maybe that's why they were hidden in the castle. I wonder about that. I think we should investigate further into Delicia's actions. Oh, wait, 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 I see, I see a stepladder, hold on. Huh. Huh? Miss Delicious, you don't seem as energetic as you were earlier. Delicia, can I just ask, did something happen with Von Karma? Yesy, uh, nothing of the sort. But you just said Yesy. <laughs> that Yesy just now was only a greeting. You're a cute boy, I like you. What's your first name? <laughs> it's Raymond, but... <laughs> Is his father on Team Ladder? Team Set Ladder? <laughs> the important question. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ray Ray, I think you'll make a good man of yourself someday. Ray Ray? How about that? I think you have a way with British ladies. She's a little different from my image of a lady. Why don't we listen to what she has to say? Not quite yet. No, back. I gotta go check out the, the stepladder. What is it, Mr. Attorney? Something about that ladder bothering you? Detective Bad. It's actually a stepladder. <laughs> His team stepladder. <laughs> They're both the same to me. <laughs> They're completely different. Look at their basic nature. Yeah, Mr. Edgeworth, you tell him! We don't judge people in the skill, color, sexuality, or gender. We judge them based on which team ladder they are on! <laughs> <laughs> I am for sure. Okay, now we can talk to <laughs> Talk to her. Could you tell me about your actions during the contest? Yes, see. We began making desserts for the contest around 10 o'clock. Basically, I was in here making my desserts the whole time. At half past one, I joined the afternoon tea for about an hour or so. Afternoon tea? It's a social occasion where conversation is had over black tea and cakes. Um, so it's pretty much a tea party. <laughs> no, but like... In Transitive Relations, when we play as Edgeworth... He calls it a stepladder, and he is team stepladder at that point, and then Investigations comes around, and he's like, it's a ladder, and I'm like, boy <laughs> Fucking bet he met up with, with with Phoenix and they had a fucking discussion about it, and he was just like, no, you're wrong <laughs> So just out of like Pure childishness, he is now team ladder He's just like, nah, no, they're the same. Shut up. <laughs> That's what happened, okay? That's a headcanon. <laughs> this is pretty much a tea party. Well, I suppose. <laughs> That's what I'm really <laughs> I 
Hey Mayas, I saw a ladder today. A ladder, huh? Oh, no, actually. Wait, it was a step ladder. They're the same thing, right? <laughs> and him just like, not actually the same thing, but I'm not about to be here. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Eevee Master. <laughs> We're talking about ladders. <laughs> oh, Greggy, you're a smart boy, aren't you? When did I become Greggy? Where was the afternoon tea held? It took place in the gardens outside of the fountain patio. It's our customary break time during the contest. It's always held at the same time. Today there were just three of us who took part, Jeffy, Katie and me. Since Jeffy had already finished his creations, he was there from beginning to end. Icy and Gusty didn't join in because they hadn't finished their desserts yet. Who the hell is Icy? Oh, Isaac, I get it. So everyone other than Mr. Dober and Mr. Gustavia participated. Yes, actually, I hadn't finished my dessert yet either. Either. I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted to try some of Jesse's handmade pastries and Katie's fresh brewed tree, tree tea. <laughs> I can read. <laughs> so after I had eaten my fill, I returned before everyone else. During the contest, did you enter any of the other contestants' rooms? What are you saying? You found your fingerprints on the desserts at the crime scene. You, you found them? For you, admitting that you went to the scene of the murder. I admit it, but, but I am not the murderer. It's, it's the honest truth. Please hear me out. Okay. What were you doing in Mr. Master's room? The truth is, I was studying his desserts. Studying? Because Jeffy's so talented at making sweets. Well, nobody was in his room at the time, so I just decided to study his work for a bit. His works. But if you were just looking, you wouldn't have left your fingerprints behind. Yes, see, it's natural that I left fingerprints on the desserts. For the sake of research, I ate some of his desserts. <laughs> Isn't that like stealing food? It couldn't be. The one who wrecked Mr. Master's room was... <laughs> I'm sorry, it wasn't my intention to vandalize the room, but... I did eat a few parts of the desserts in this room. I secretly ate little bits and pieces so Jeffy wouldn't find out. So, did you eat the ship stand as well? Yes, see, I did. The chocolate ship broke because of you. I'm sorry. So the reason she left the afternoon tea early was to preserve her appetite. But you got to believe me on this. I'm eating sweets for science. I'm not the murderer. Her actions are sufficiently suspicious, but... I won't press on it yet. Can I uh, go to logic or something? Hmm. Oh, hold on, wait. Beaten to death and blood stain the rocks all the time. <laughs> There is evidence that the victim was beaten to death with a blunt object. What's more, there's a blood stain on one of the broken rock salt lamps. Could this lamp have been the murder weapon? You're right! It could have been used as a weapon! Labby, is the blood analysis on this rock salt lamp finished? Yes, sir! It finished just a few moments ago. The blood stain on that lamp belonged to the victim. You heard what he said. The murder weapon was hidden in the leech's room. We need to consider her as one of the suspects. One of the suspects as well. Okay, now what? Playroom temperature. Do I have that? I don't have that. 
Okay, I need to go and examine the control panel. Eee! Let's jog over here. There's a cover on the wall, just like in Mr. Master's room. Let's open it up. Hmm. The room temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and the lights are set to green. Stavia said that 50 degrees Fahrenheit is the ideal temperature for fresh cream. This room's temperature is too high. And this is intriguing. Now I can go into logic again. And I can get the project desserts with high room temperature. Whee! Combine those bitches and... Boo! The reason the fresh cream is so fragile is due to the temperature in this room. So my shoes got creamed. Because the room temperature was set at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Speaking of which... When you open the castle door, the doorknob didn't break. Yeah, it was stronger than I thought. Strong. A dessert? Detective Bad, could you have a closer look at that doorknob? This is... It would seem this doorknob isn't a dessert. And it's not just one doorknob. The castle and the fairies are just plastic molds coated in fresh cream. Eh? Then this isn't a dessert piece at all. It would seem they're just fake desserts covered in fresh cream. Alicia, why? <laughs> Okay, using decorations that were against the rules and making fake desserts. A lot of Delicia's actions seem suspicious. Yeah, it doesn't seem like she's aiming to be the world's greatest pastry chef. Also, the temperature of this room is way too high. Is there a reason for that? I wonder. I think we should ask Delicia directly. Delicia, why is the room temperature set to 68 degrees Fahrenheit? The cold doesn't agree with me, plus it's bad for the body. This figure doesn't just ma maintain itself, you know. Naturally, as a lady, I want to look young forever. I wonder how old Miss Del Delicious really is. How old does it say she is? We don't know. Raymond, a true gentleman never asks a woman her age. <laughs> you missed the ladder. Uh, basically, Gregory is team stepladder. <laughs> Technically, the first time you examine a ladder as Edgeworth in Trials and Tribulations, he says it's a stepladder. He is team stepladder too. But for some reason, when you play the first investigations game and you find the stepladder in like the last case, he says it's the ladder. So like, obviously. <laughs> he just like, he didn't change his mind, but he is just stubborn. <laughs> this room is mainly filled with cream. 50 degrees Fahrenheit is the recommended temperature for preserving fresh cream. What? Really? Now it's all gone to waste! It looks like Miss Delicious didn't know. Hmm. I thought she was supposed to be a first class pastry chef. The fake desserts and the rule violations, and now, her lack of basic knowledge. Looks like she keeps many secrets. Oh, okay, back into logic. The search study and knowledge was lacking. Cool. Delicia's knowledge in the art of the search making is lacking in the fundamental in fundamental areas, and she claims she went into Mr. Master's room in order to study his search. 
These actions and ideas are not fitting of someone aiming to be the world's greatest pastry chef. Yeah, you don't sound like the words of a pro. It's like she doesn't even realize it. Or, or maybe she isn't the real pastry chef. Perhaps she had some other intention. It's possible that she didn't go into the room to study desserts. So then, are you saying that Miss Delicious is the criminal? We can't say that for sure yet. But I know she's hiding something from us. Okay, there is something more I need to do here. Um... Okay, here. Of course. I'm like the other fairies, and this one doesn't have a fluorescent cloth. It's delicious! It's not right to leave one out. I don't like it either. But one fluorescent cloth and a machine had gone has gone missing. You lost a cloth and a machine. What sort of machine is it? Oi! Let me tell you. <laughs> Each piece of fluorescent cloth is hooked up to one of these machines. The machine is called the rainbow light device. Lights is sent through the cable and into the cloth, which is made of optic fibers. Just fiddle around with the settings a bit, and it will turn into all sorts of colors. When it glows red, it's like a raging inferno. And when it glows blue, you can almost feel the glittering cool ice. It's powered by a long-lasting battery that's resistant to changes in the temperature. I'm not very familiar with these kinds of devices. Mr. Edgeworth, she's saying it's a machine that transmits light through the special cloth. I see. It's amazing what they come up with these days. It's one rainbow light device, and one fluorescent cloth are missing. Yes, yeah, see, that's right. Wherever could they be? This fluorescent cloth. Could it be related to the case? Yay. That's enough. Investigating. Hmm, you found much more than I expected. A few ice cubes left, I guess. And yet, something from before still bothers me. Prosecutor von Karma must have found the murder weapon in this room. So then, why did he let Delicia be? Firstly, I must ascertain von Karma's true motives. Detective Bad, I would like to ask for Prosecutor von Karma something. I've also got business with him. And Delicia there too. Uh, what's the idea, buddy? Don't glare at me like that. Seems Detective Bad also has his doubts about Delicia and Von Karma. Delicia, would you come with us for a moment? Yes, that's fine. What for? We have to find Von Karma. There are some things we need to talk about. By the way, has anyone in chat, like, played the second Investigations game before? Or is this, like, your first time <laughs> seeing anything from it, pretty much? Prosecutor from Karma, you need to talk about the case. From the look on your face, I assume you found the murder weapon. Yes. We discovered the murder weapon in Delicia's room. It would seem Mr. Master isn't the only suspect in this case. It's long. <laughs> oh, nice. It's a long game. I recently played it though, so I, I remember like a lot of it. Yeah, he's a pain. <laughs> That's not true. Where the murder weapon was found does not change the fact that that master is the culprit. As long as I am here, why is von Karma so sure of himself? Well then, aren't you going to explain why the murder weapon was in Delicia's room? Hmm. Naturally. If you wish to know, I'll tell you. 
Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, hmm. What? Who do we prefer, Fun Karma or Pain? <laughs> Damn. I mean, Pain is just forgettable, really. At least you remember Fun Karma. Like Pain is just forgettable. <laughs> Which Pain? Yes. Yes, Pain. Fun Karma has personality. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Any pain is pain. <laughs> uh. In order to pin the crime on the Licia, the master used a rock salt lamp to kill the victim. He then p deposited the murder weapon in the Licia's room. If he had left the murder weapon at the crime scene, the master would have been the one suspected. He couldn't move the body, but it was easy to move the murder weapon. Ergo, there will be no evidence pointing to a specific culprit at the crime scene. Mr. Master took the rock salt lamp. Precisely. I carried out the investigation myself. There can be no room for doubt. Do you have evidence that he moved it? Gaspin is from the tr 3DS games, right? Or is it only, like, Spirit of Justice? I don't remember. It's been so long since I played the 3DS games. <laughs> hmm. That would not be necessary. What? If you have an objection, say it. You think a mere defense attorney can break my logic? Yes. Just give it a few years, and you will see. In order to pin- okay, I already read this. Anyways, it's present crime scene notes on the fifth one. Ergo, there we go. Crime scene notes. Objection. It's true that the murder weapon and bloodstains disappeared from the vic vicinity. However, there was still one piece of incriminating evidence left behind. Have a look at this photograph, which was taken when the body was first discovered. This cloth was used to wrap the body. Oh! It's one of the fluorescent cloths! I was like, why the fuck did you recognize the cloth? <laughs> Doesn't it remind you of the fluorescent cloth from Delicia's room? Look at this photograph! <laughs> Fluorescent cloth! Was it the crime scene? Ha! <laughs> fluorescent cloth. You, just what part of this cloth is fluorescent? I guess Von Karma doesn't know about this cloth's secret. It looks like a normal cloth at first glance, but if you use this rainbow light device. It's okay, I've made that I've made that pun several times myself. And a pun. Joke, I guess. It can make it glow. Sakura von Karma seems a little surprised. I don't think it was the cloth's ability to glow that surprised him. One sheet of this fluorescent cloth is currently unaccounted for. Now I'd like to I'd like you to look at the color of the cloth in this photo. Don't you think it looks like the color of the fluorescent cloth before it's been lit up? Hmm. Well the rock salt lamps in the fluorescent cloth originally belonged to the Delicia. Wouldn't it be natural to assume that this cloth was used to wrap the body? Prosecutor von Karma, I believe the present co conditions give us much reason to suspect Delicia. <laughs> Hold it, Greggy. Do you really suspect me? I don't yet know if you are the culprit, but it is true that you're hiding something. Am I right? Uh. That's... So, you're saying that the murder weapon and the cloth were originally from Delicia's room? Yes. I believe it was her foot. <laughs> she caught it with her foot. <laughs> Amazing. It's so funny. Just as I expected from you. 
the murder weapon and the cloth are not from her room. How unfortunate for you. What does he mean? Before the contest began, the master noticed her violation of the rules. He confiscated the cloth and the rock salt lamp and kept them in his room for safekeeping. What? The victim was not seen as he stayed locked up in his room after the contest had begun. The only one who could have unlocked the locked rooms was Jeff Master. And the murder weapon, the rock salt lamp, was being kept in Master's room. This should be the decisive evidence in proving Master's guilt. Defense attorney. You've lost me before you even had a chance to stand in court. <laughs> What's this? What? Was all our... Was all our investigation investigating for nothing? God, I can't read. It's delicious! Why didn't you tell us about your confiscated items? Uh, well... Manny said I'd look suspicious if I did. Prosecutor from Karma. And it's true, you all suspect me, don't you? How clumsy of you, defense attorney. Karma. So that's why he let us investigate Delicia's room. In your clumsiness, there's one more thing I need to inform you of. Two sets of fingerprints were found on the murder weapon. Two? Yes. They belong to Jeff Master and Delicia Scones. No other fingerprints were found. After Master killed Dover with the confiscated rock salt lamp, he foolishly concealed the murder weapon bearing his own fingerprints in, his own in its owner's room. I don't even need to prove my case in court. I have more than enough perfect evidence to prove Master's guilt. Hold it. I still have some doubts about the fluorescent cloth found in Mr. Master's room. Huh. <laughs> Irrelevant. After disposing of the body, he intended to return it to Delicia's room. <laughs> I don't have enough information to refute from Karma's reasoning. Nothing left to say. If your job is done, leave this place. That's... I can't give up yet. Hm. You've wasted enough time as it is. Bad. Take them away. There are still some doubts left in our investigation. Detective Bad. What's the meaning of this? It's not my nature to leave any doubts behind. There is still one piece of evidence that has yet to be identified. That's right. There are still the traces someone left behind. Ha! Huh. Talk about your doubts as much as you want later. But this, my dear attorney, is none of your business. No, I also have some doubts about one piece of evidence. It's likely that I have the same doubts Detective Bad has. What? This is a piece of evidence left in Mr. Master's room that has yet to be identified. Fingerprints. Someone left gloved finger marks on one of Mr. Master's desserts. These were the killer's finger marks. Then it's possible that the killer also didn't leave any fingerprints on the murder weapon. How did you know the state of the crime scene? I gave them permission to investigate. Bad. Possessed you to let a defense attorney into a crime scene. I don't recall you telling me not to let them in. Huh, <laughs> such impudence. You'd best remember, Bad. Your salary review depends on me. Ah, I, I, I see where Edgeworth got it from, huh? Okay. <laughs> this isn't good for Bad. So glad I have a kind boss like Mr. Edgeworth. Your salary re review depends on how you perform here. Hmm. I'm surprised at what mere a mere attorney like you managed to uncover in such a short time. However, it's possible those finger marks were mas Master's own doing. Salary <laughs> reviews. Because he always wore gloves while cooking. Do you have evidence that those finger marks were left by Master? And moreover, there are still a few points of suspicion surrounding Delicia. Oh? You still haven't given up on that. Uh, 
Greggy, you still suspect me? I've already apologized for stealing a few bites. I don't want to suspect you. However, I can't easily trust those who tell lies. You must still be hiding something. Uh, Greggy is a bully. Don't you know the temperature of fresh cream must be kept at? You call yourself a dessert chef, but you lack even the most basic knowledge. Uh, I'm sorry for my lack of knowledge. In your case, it's not even about the lack of knowledge. In truth, you don't even know how to make desserts, do you? Defense attorney, stop trying to force your own reasoning. In a court of law, the evidence tells all. If you say the witness is lying, show it with evidence. We're not in court yet, but very well. This evidence shows that Belicia can't make desserts. Fake desserts, here we go. Take that! <laughs> the only thing Delicia made were those that broke the rules. The lamp and cloth that broke the rules were being held in Master's room. There's no way the witness could have returned them to her room. Those were not the only fake desserts she made. What? Her desserts may look like something out of a fairy tale at first glance. But in reality, they are nothing but mannequins decorated with cream. Apart from the cream, they're all fake. This is not something one aiming to become the world's greatest pastry chef would do. Is this true, Bad? Yes. My shoes. I can attest to that. Would that be enough to convince Prosecutor von Karma? Once he sees what Delicia has done, he'll have no choice but to be convinced. Deli Ugh, no. Delicia. The fact that your actions could lead to you being a suspect is no laughing matter. Sorry, that was just my, my, my neighbor. An old lady who requires my help for something. Probably turning on the TV. But uh, no. <laughs> it stresses me the fuck out. The fact that your actions could lead you to being a suspect is no laughing matter. But th that's... I didn't murder! It's the time you told us the whole truth. Who are you? And why were you indulging yourself in another contestant's work? Yesy, I understand. That's okay, Evie Master. Thank you for dropping by. I really appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. The truth is, I'm not really a dessert chef like I let you to believe. I'm actually a pharmacist. What? A pharmacist? That's a completely different occupation. It's no wonder he couldn't hide his surprise. Why is a pharmacist like you participating in this contest? I just love eating desserts. I joined because I thought I'd be able to eat some of Jeffy's desserts. I never thought I'd end up making making it to the finals. And Prosecutor von Karma is, is at a loss for words. So that's the real reason why you entered the contest. Uh, this is the the second investigations game where you play as Edgeworth, but right now we are like uh, we're, we're having a flashback like 18 years ago where we where we now play as Edgeworth's father. But I believe we will soon switch back to like present day. Jesse, as is as expected, Jeffy's dessert desserts were oh so good. So the gloved finger marks on the picture frame. Or you're doing? Uh, no way! I never wore gloves! Delicia's fingerprints were found on Mr. Master's chocolates. So it is true that she wasn't wearing gloves. Yes, see, exactly! Do you believe me, Greggy? Is your face stuffed with nothing but desserts? <laughs> Sorry, Manny! I think it's her belly that's stuffed. For Master's desserts, all that you ate. Actually, no. After the afternoon tea, I also ate Icy's dessert. You mean you entered the victim's room? Yes, see, exactly. The room was empty after all. Perhaps the victim was already dead by then. But my first bite tasted way too salty and I couldn't eat it. So I ate a delicious star-shaped dessert that was nearby. It was delicious. You really are a glutton. It is rare you see a woman with this kind of appetite. 
That's all I did. Peggy, Manny, everyone. I'm sorry I caused you trouble. Now that you've told us the truth, everything's fine. There's no need to apologize. This does not mean that your testimony is trustworthy. I'll be investigating the victim's room after this. Only then will I decide if your testimony is true. Prosecutor von Karma, I'd like to go as well. I also need to ascertain whether my reasoning up until now has been correct. Hmm. I'll let you follow, but I have no intention of letting you investigate. It's enough for me. I don't know exactly, like, when we will switch back to the present day, but, like, I know that will happen at some point. This. What is the meaning of this? The search adorning the victim's room had disappeared without a trace. Was this a true killer's doing? A body that was hidden inside a dessert and a murder weapon that was moved. Further investigation would be required to arrive at the truth of this case. Ah, no, we actually do switch back to the present day after this. <laughs> okay, cool. Perfect. Oh my god, hold on. Let me just deal with my neighbor real quick. It won't take long, I promise. Okay, I'm back. It was as I expected. She needed help to turn her TV on, but I can't... I can't go over there now, like, during corona times. I don't know who she has been in contact with. I mean, I guess I could, like, put on a fucking mask or whatever, but, like... Man, she always bothers me about that fucking TV. <laughs> Anyways, back to the game. And back to present day. Whoops, I guess I went on for a little too long there. So he talks about this, like, case that he went on with Gregory, like, 18 years ago. It was at this same place, which is now a museum, before it was, uh, Mr. Master's estate. I don't- no, I don't have him here, of course not. Something like that happened. I had no idea. None of the case files I read went into, went into such, such detail. I doubt there would be anything in, in there that would be inconvenient to the prosecution. Yeah, especially with that von Karma at the head. How did the investigation go from there? The dessert had disappeared from the victim's room, so the investigation hit a rough patch. Thanks to that, it took about a whole year before a verdict was handed down. The, the case is known as IS-7, by the way. One whole year. This was before the whole three-day pre-trial system was established. Trials didn't need to finish in the short amount of time that they do now. I see. Did they ever find out why the victim's assert disappeared? Well, kinda. <laughs> yeah. I have water. I don't have a shot, but I have water. <laughs> kinda. His dessert was like a candy ice sculpture made from sherbet. Since it was made from ice, the general consensus was that it had melted. However, that might not be quite the case. Oh shit. Me too. <laughs> what do you mean? This museum used to be Mr. Mas Mr. Master's mansion. The stage of the IS incident, IS-7 incident. And in this very place, they're exhibiting the Sherbet Salon. Salon from 18 years ago. The victim's assert. Yep. Though it could be just a replica of the original. That's why Uncle Ray had to come today to check it out. 
and for your old man too. Now then, let's get a move on and check out the room. I'm pretty sure it's over in the Winter Palace. Hmm. And the Winter Palace should be... Huh? It's locked up. That's odd. You already opened the museum. Mr. Shields. According to the pamphlet we received at the entrance, the Winter Palace is over here. Really? I could have sworn it was this one. Let me look at the pamphlet. Hmm. Oh, we even- we even have the Celsius there! Oh, oh wow, that's... That's nice. <laughs> hmm. So, the murder, uh, 18 years ago, originally happened in Spring Palace, I guess? And Winter Palace was the Lysias room. Alright, let's scoot. Huh, we gotta confirm the truth of what happened 18 years ago. <gasps> Fleur! 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 <laughs> Man, it's still as cold as ever. Uncle Ray's gonna freeze solid. Wrong! <laughs> It seems the Winter Palace lives up to its name. It's like a freezer in here. <laughs> it's Ronnie! <laughs> With the light dimmed like this, it's almost as if the room itself is made of ice. I think the control panel for the room temperature is on the back wall. Stop ignoring me! Yes! He came back to us. He heard your pleas. <laughs> Miles, why don't you check what temperature it's set at for me? Uncle Ray's gonna give the curator a piece of his mind later. It's way too cold in here. Hmm, very well. If you want to look around the room a bit, feel free to stay or freeze to your heart's content. I got the camera ready. I want to take some pictures of this place and show it to your old man. Understood. How about this? I'll yell out, Master Musk is here! Yes, it's me! I'm Master Musk! Good, good! Wait, Ronnie, if you say that, you'll get arrested! Come on, if we don't plan properly, we won't be able to sell it. What are these two talking about? And also, look over here, it's... Oh, you actually don't know yet. There was a boy with a school bag. Did he come to the art gallery by himself? Hmm... She even quit her job in order to run this museum. I don't really get it. Perhaps one of his parents knows the curator. Hmm. Mr. Shields, I can't find the temperature control panel. Ah, oh, right. I keep it where it's hard to find. Just one moment. Partners in crime, we love it. <laughs> they are a pretty good couple, but like they they also like seem so like unlikely. Like the most unlikely couple. It's locked. Makes sense. I wouldn't want the guests changing the temperature themselves. According to the pamphlet, the Winter Palace has a temperature of 27 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh, now that's cold. Uncle Ray's gonna freeze to death. Yeah, that's minus three, okay. <laughs> Guess I need to find someone to share body heat with. 
Preferably a beautiful lady. Ray, please. Oh, are you trying to freeze me to death as well with that, those cold eyes? Of course not. Let me look at this. Uh... These are true sculptures displayed here. These sculptures are replicas of the desserts that vanished 18 years ago. Impressive, huh? These sculptures made of ice. Yes. My father never got to see these ice sculptures. And now, 18 years later, I'm standing before them. Miles, sorry to bother you while you're deep in thought. Could you turn this way a little? Hmm? Like this. Yes, yes, like that. Mr. Shields, you're not. Say cheese. <laughs> Mr. Shields, please don't take pictures of me. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I just wanted to make sure the camera works okay. That camera looks quite old. Yeah, well, that's because it's an old-fashioned camera. You know, an instant camera. It automatically develops the photos after shooting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Well, I've never used one. <laughs> You're quite the know-it-all. You really are the old man's son. Uh, could you move a bit? I want to take some more pic photos of the room. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. His face has taken on an unusually serious expression. He's probably thinking about the IS-7 incident. Man, I snapped a bunch. And they're already developed, see? I shoved them in my face before I could reply. Well, I have one more question for you, Mr. Know-it-all. Do you know what these two sculptures rep represent? They're sculptures of Taurus and Gemini from the Winter Constellations. Ooh, bingo! Not bad, Miles. That's probably why they call this room the Winter Palace. Uncle Ray is feeling generous today, so I'll give you a copy of this photo too. <laughs> Thanks. Are these replicas of the Constellation Desserts that were made 18 years ago? Yeah, it, look, it looks like these two sculptures are also made of the sherbet. Uncle Ray's only seen the real sculptures in photos. But these sculptures look like the real deal. This was what you wanted to show me. Yeah, I think your old man would have wanted you to see it as well. <laughs> as in, because he wanted to show Edgeworth all the, all the nice things. I'm emo, I'm sorry. I'm sorry Uncle Ray didn't have the courage to come here alone. Don't apologize. This was a good opportunity to learn about my father's case. That means a lot to me. So you want me to take another commemorative commemorative photo? No thanks. <laughs> Someone's camera shy. And this rock salt lamp is lighting up the constellation chart. I see. Gemini and Taurus are constellations that can be seen in the winter. Since this is the Winter Palace, perhaps that explains the winter constellations made of sherbet. According to the pamphlet, the other palaces are made of crystal. But for the Summer Palace, I think it'd be more fitting if it were made out of shaved ice. Well, no, that would make it exactly the same as this room. Miles, since we came all the way here, why don't you take a look around? Well, since this room is so cold, I thought I'd go to a warmer room. If you're that cold, why don't you borrow my clothes? And in exchange, I'll borrow your jacket. No thanks. Let's try enduring this for just a little longer. Okay, I need to do... To do oh, I need to talk to him, maybe. Miles, can I ask you something? Of course. What is it? Is it okay to take photos in this room? What? Haven't you checked? But if you haven't gotten any warnings about it, then it should be fine. Ah, sorry. Well, to be honest, I, I would have taken some anyway. You've already taken, like, three. 
The royal man had always wanted to investigate this winter palace, after all. <laughs> I mean, that is that is what that is what Gregory did like 18 years ago too, because he said it was cold, and Gregory was like, "Hey, you can have my jacket." I think it's supposed to mirror that. My father had seen this room. Would he have found something? If he had, the result of the trial might have also. Oh, there's no point in thinking that now. Oh boy. Okay, I need to examine these two. For some reason, a giant block of ice is on display. There's a description written on the surface. Castor and Pollux. Every December, large meteor showers appear in the direction of these two stars. And so, mask the mask. And then, I... Those two are being rather noisy and distracting. Can't be helped. I should go look at another exhibit. By the way, we will learn about this kid later in the game. A giant block of ice is being displayed here. It appears to be quite heavy. No, the inside must be hollow. On the surface, there is an image of the stars in a written description. The Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, a star cluster that com comprises a part of Taurus. For all these stars to be grouped together as a cluster, the ways of the ancient people must have been very imprecise. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, now that I got some pictures of this room, let's check out the other palaces. Might as well see them all since we're already here. I suppose you're right. Ah! I yelled just now. Came from the fountain patio. Let's go, Miles. And there's someone passed out on the floor. That man there is. Larry, what are you doing here? No, I'm getting ahead of myself. What exactly happened here? Edgy! I, I saw something that no one should ever have to see again! Larry, calm down. Why is there someone passed out here? I, I didn't do anything. He just fell down all of a sudden. This man... He can't be. Excuse me, but what is the matter here? You can't raise such a ruckus in the museum, boys. I don't know who, which of them is talking. <clears throat> hmm? The scent is. Seems like he's still breathing. But this is a bad situation. Miles, it's not safe here. Get everyone out of here. Everyone, get away from that room now! There's poison gas coming out from it. Hmm. Mr. Shields, how is Victor? It looks like you breathed in a little too much of that poison gas. He's still unconscious. According to the doctor in the ambulance, there are no external injuries or any other wounds. <laughs> if something stinks, it's poisonous gas. <laughs> Thanks to our fortune, fortunate timing, we were able to save him before he was too far gone. But he's not out of the woods yet. He's currently being treated by a specialist in the infirmary. I see. Mr. Shields... Is he an acquaintance of yours? Yeah, you could say that. He's Dane Gustavia. He was involved in the IS-7 incident. Pastry chef. So he was involved in the case 18 years ago. At least the other guy is doing alright. Is he a friend of yours, Miles? Yes, you could say that. It is unfortunate you were not hurt, Larry. It is unfortunate? <laughs> it is fortunate you're fortunate you were not hurt, Larry. What? What's he but you could say that supposed to mean, Edgy. How could you treat a childhood friend like that? It's just cruel. 
And also, when I'm dressed like this, I'm called Larise de Nim, you know? I thought you gave up on that. Didn't it say that in a previous game? I said like, oh no, he gave up on that. He's back to Larry, and now he's back to Larise. Okay, love that for you. So don't call me Larry, it's Larise. And this man is Larry Butts. He's nothing but trouble, but he's been one of my friends since grade school. Some time ago, he awakened to the calling of art and assumed the alias Loris de Nim. But a butts by any other name would smell just as much. Really? You two are childhood friends? I better report that to your old man too. I'm sure it will bring him joy. He was always worried about you not being able to make friends. Good for you, Edgy. Aren't you glad to have a bosom, bosom buddy like me? My father was worried about something like that. But anyway, what are you doing in a place like this, Larry? How many times do I have to tell you, Edgy? I'm Larise! What are you doing in a place like this? Yikes! Don't clear at me when you talk! So what are you going to tell me? Isn't it obvious? I've come here to study art. I'm going to take Mandy on a date here, so I was just doing some scouting beforehand. Aren't you just using art as an excuse to go on a date? Mandy? Wasn't her name Mindy? Did they already break up? <laughs> Wait, I believe actually they did break up at the end of the last game. Okay. Confusing. He has too many girls. <laughs> Not bad, Loris. Maybe you can introduce some pretty girls to me next time. Oh, now you're talking my language, dude. I think I'm getting a headache. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, it's Larry, what do you expect, really? By the way, Larisse, did you notice anything strange when you found the victim? Nah, not really. Nothing that would make you say, I saw something that no one should, have, should ever have to see. Yeah, that. I was just surprised when I saw that old dude fall down out of nowhere like that. I didn't do anything this time for once. Is that anything to brag about? Visitors, we wish to deeply apologize for the disturbance. I am the curator of this museum. My name is Catherine Hall. She's also one of the people involved in the IS-7 incident. Hello there, Miss Kate. Monsieur Shields, thank you for your continued assistance. She was the woman we saw at the reception, so she's the curator here. We apologize for the inconvenience, especially since it's the opening day. Oh no, you don't have to apologize for a thing, Miss Kate. Ah, I almost forgot. Let me introduce you to someone. This is Miles Edgeworth. He's Gregory Edgeworth's son. Oh, Monsieur Edgeworth's... Oh, how wonderful! <laughs> I met the sun after 18 years. <laughs> it is an honor to meet you, defense attorney Miles Edgeworth. Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> oh yeah, you still got that golden voice. Oh, mm -mm. I'll be here all day. <laughs> Actually, I'm a prosecutor. Oh, so you're a prosecutor. My most sincere apologies, Monsieur Edgeworth. This woman is very polite, but slightly odd. Uh, Katie, could I get your autograph right here, pretty please? Yes, if you so desire. Why do you want her aut autograph? Hey, don't tell me! You don't know who she is! My, my! You really don't keep up with the entertainment news, do you, Miles? What? What is this unbearable atmosphere? She's a superstar actress who's been in tons of musicals and movies. She's a great singer, too. <laughs> Currently, I am the curator of this museum. I have already retired from the stage. I finished filming my role for my last movie a few days ago. How old are you? 34. Okay. My co-stars also said that they would come here once I opened the doors. And here you are, Monsieur Artiste. I return this to you. 
Thanks a bunch, Katie. I'll treasure it for the rest of my life. Oh well, looks like me and Larice share the same interests. So I gathered. Larry, you said you're here to study art. Why don't you practice drawing as well? Since you're here at Miss Hall's art Miss Hall's art museum. Oh, it would be an honor to have Monsieur Artiste sketch our exhibits. Oh, I guess even you have some good ideas every now and then, Edgy. I'll do a bit of sketching for Katie here. <laughs> oh, what an amusing person. Forgive the disturbance. Incidentally, who was the woman that was with you earlier? That was Madame Delicia Scones. She is currently assisting in the treatment of Monsieur Gustavia in the infirmary. Even though I said infirmary, since this is an art museum now, it is only provisional. <coughs> I mean, I... Maybe, but... Larry already has a girlfriend! <laughs> As I am the only staff member working here, I cannot take a leave of duties of my duties for too long. Alicia Scones. I believe we have heard that name before, Mr. Shields. Yep. Looks like the whole gang from the IS-7 incident is here. Well, I doubt that's a coincidence. Monsieur Shields, Monsieur Edgeworth, would you care for some hot tea? Oh, Miss Kate's tea. That takes me back. Yes, if you please. Now I must take my leave. I must explain the situation to the other visitors. Alright, thanks for everything. This smells like... Sulan tea. I should drink it before it cools. Oh, this Sulan tea is of very high quality. And this aroma of citrus. This wonders for your concentration, right? <laughs> your old man said this exact same thing 18 years ago. But the saucers back then were chilled. Today they're warm. Hmm. Uh, anyway. Don't you think this current situation is rather unusual? You mean how everyone involved in the case 18 years ago was gathered at this museum? Yes, I would like to be in charge of this case, if, if at all possible. Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Are you okay? Mr. Edgeworth! Shields! Mr. Shields! I, I came here as fast as I could when I heard that you were done in by the poison gas! Oh, my sweet on Honey K! How about a hug after being parted for so long? No. Jeez, you're perfectly fine? I can't believe you made us worry so much. Detective Gumshoe. What is the meaning of bringing Kay here? I I'm sorry, sir. I knew the gas was dangerous, so I tried to stop her. No matter how much I ran and ran and ran and ran and ran, I couldn't gain any ground. <laughs> when it comes to running away, no one is faster than the Yatagarasu. You weren't running away from here. Because you think he's creepy. <laughs> I mean, it, it's kind of strange how he does. He only wants to hug the girls. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm all set, sir. I'll start investigating the crime scene. Though there might still be traces of gas in the room, I'll have to ask everyone to wait here. Very well, I'm counting on you. you look in there, Flatfoot. Wow. Gummy's so cool! He's just like a detective! I guess that's like his his, his cover-up, but... Now you can tell he, he, uh, he is very interested in the ladies. <laughs> or maybe he's just like a touchy person, I don't know. Either way, they clearly think it's weird, so... <laughs> Gummy's so cool, he's just like a detective! But that's what he is. Yes, Edgeworth here. Mr. Edgeworth! It looks like the poison gas has dissipated, sir. Mr. 
detective calmly explained the state of the Autumn Palace. Yes, sir, I'll start with the exhibits. On the left, there's a statue with two people. And on the right, there's a statue of an animal with two horns. A statue of two people and a statue of an animal with two horns. Isn't that the exact same thing I saw in the Winter Palace just a while ago? Well, I guess it won't be- Oh, actually, I can, I can look. I must. Hmm. I mean, I guess. Also, the room is wet with water thanks to the sprinkler system. It also prevented the gas from harming anyone else. The sprinkler system. Is there a fire in the room? There are no signs of a fire, and the fire alarm hasn't gone off either, sir. The sprinklers in this museum are, are the kind that detects both smoke and fire. If it detects smoke, it will send an alert to the security room. I think the poison gas might have set off the alarm in the security room, sir. Was there anyone in the security room at the time? The only one working here is a curator, Miss Catherine Hall, sir. She has been in the reception booth, opposite the security room ever since the museum opened. Did Miss Hall turn on the sprinklers? The sprinkler system can only be operated man manually from the security room, sir. If it had been automatic, it would have sprayed water all over the exhibits. Since the system is manual, the situation can be examined and the exhibits moved if need be. I guess there would be more priority over the exhibits than the building. Only at a museum. Oh, it's way too cold in this room, sir. Isn't this supposed to be the Autumn Palace? It feels more like the dead of winter in here. Autumn Palace is cold. It's supposed to be 18 degrees. A <laughs> manually activated sprinkler system seems safe. Oh yeah, very. I checked the thermostat earlier, and it was set to 27 degrees Fahrenheit. I couldn't believe it. That was minus 3 degrees Celsius, right? Why will the Autumn Palace be set to the same temperature as the Winter Palace? That's about all I know for now, sir. If I figure out anything else, I'll give you another call. I see. I'm counting on you, Detective. Strange. What did Gummy say? He said it feels more like winter in the Autumn Palace. I don't get it. I haven't been able to enter the room personally. But it should be possible to look inside after the police have, have finished investigating. Hmm, I'd like to know what it's like in there myself. Isn't there anyone else who knows about the incident? Ah, there is someone. Maz's friend, right? Friend? Though he's such a nuisance, we have no choice but to listen to what he has to say for now. Wait, you mean... Oh, you're here too, Kay! You're looking as cute as ever! <laughs> Long time no see, it's Larry, isn't it? Kay, right now, my name is Lorise. I'm an artist, that's why. Ah, so that's your pen name, Maurice. The artist formerly known as Larry. Wow, you really are a good girl, Kay. Nothing like edgy here. Larry, I have many things I need to ask you. What's this? Don't tell me you suspect me again. You're gonna say because I was first in the scene, I must be the culprit, aren't you? I never said anything like that. I only want you to tell me what you saw. You said you saw something that no one should have ever seen, ever have to see, did you not? But, I, now I'm saying I didn't see nothing, and I didn't do nothing. Probably. My, you didn't seem so confident, confident at the end there. 
and there are somewhat troublesome circumstances surrounding this man. The saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts, still holds true, 26 years on. Who could say his tendency to attract trouble is legendary? Okay, so he's 26, but you can't- you couldn't have come up with that- that phrase 26 years ago. You didn't fucking know each other. You didn't know each other until you were like nine. It seems he's done something troublesome without even realizing it himself. I'll just have to try and extract the truth from him. My goal is to expose whatever Larry is hiding. However... I didn't see nothing! I didn't do nothing! Larry is an extremely restless and troublesome man. Until he cools down, I'll just wait and see. <laughs> Out of the wound. Wound? Womb. And he's already making trouble. <laughs> Love that for him. I mean, that's... Exactly what I would expect from Larry, but yeah. First, I'll ask him about his goal. This isn't something I can't handle. I'll finish this quickly. Will I now? Logic chess! Yes, let's go! What was your purpose for coming to the art gallery? What? Are you saying that I don't belong in an art gallery? You don't belong here. Hey, if you're not gonna talk, hold that pose so I can paint your portrait. And then, I'll scribble all over the portrait I drew of you! You're painting several scribbles. <laughs> what is the gender of the baby with trouble with? I, I was just joking. I would never scribble over my paintings. Of course. They're works of art, after all. I don't think any of your works would qualify as art. Well, look down on me! There are people who recognize my skills as an artist! Those people are blind. Andy is my girlfriend, but it's really my paintings she fell in love with. Designated trouble at birth. <laughs> That's why. I'll sketch anything my girlfriend likes. Then why are you here on your own today? So what? Can't a guy with a girlfriend spend some time alone? We'll spend time with her. Andy said she's a Gemini. I thought she'd be happy if I showed her a sketch of it in on our next date. Do you really have that much confidence in the sketch? Well, I'm not so confident about this one. I thought she would be happy if I did a sketch of her astrological sign. Hmm, I see. That's just like you. To impress Mandy, you came here to see the Gemini sculpture, didn't you? What? How'd you find that out? Because you just unknowingly told me everything. Well then, I'm not saying another word from now on. He's finally decided to remain silent. In that case, I'll be more relentless in my questioning. I'll try to find out what he was doing here at the art gallery. I'll expose his true motives. This shouldn't take long. What did you do at the gallery? You. Just what did you do in this art gallery? What's with that glare? I don't really remember anything didn't have a pamphlet, so I just loitered around the fountain patio. Won't they give you a pamphlet at the reception booth after you pay the admission fee? Huh? Oh, is that right? So, and the admission wasn't free, huh? You didn't pay? Don't tell me. You sneaked in here without paying. I'm sorry! I didn't mean to do anything bad! <laughs> oh, it's like... <clears throat> it's just, there was no one at the reception booth. That's why. I thought you could come in here for free. Miss Hall wasn't there. Miss Hall wasn't at the reception booth. Yeah, it didn't look like there was anyone at, on, on the other side of the desk. Come to think of it. Gumshoe did say something about that. Miss Hall was busy activating the sprinklers from the security room. Because of the incident, she had to leave the reception booth. 
Haiti. She went to all that trouble to open up the palace of the place. And now that the art gallery is star attraction, the Winter Palace is completely ruined. You're certainly well informed about the Winter Palace for someone without a pamphlet. The Winter Palace is where your goal, the Gemini sculpture, is located. You had your sights set on the Winter Palace from the beginning, didn't you? What? How'd you find me out again? That's right, my goal was to see the Gemini sculpture. From the very beginning, the Winter Palace was the very reason why I came here. I confess quite easily, you can never tell anything with this man. Next, I'll ask for further information regarding the Winter Palace. You may still have some fight left in it. I'll watch his reactions and extract the information I need. I have no more use. Uh, Did you enter? Larry, did you also enter the Winter Palace? What's with a look of distrust? Sure, I tried going in, but... You couldn't get in. You tried to go in. You weren't actually able to, right? Yeah, that's about right. I wanted to go in, but... Then that old geezer collapsed. I was a little freaked out. So you couldn't get in because the victim of the poison gas collapsed. Yeah, he fell right out of the Winter Palace. Hmm? I'm sure the victim emerged from the Autumn Palace. If it weren't for that poison gas incident... I'd be in there sketching the Gemini sculpture right now. Larry must have mistaken the Autumn Palace for the Winter Palace. That aside, it seems his goal was to sketch the sculpture. <laughs> this should be a useful clue. What did you see in the Winter Palace? Larry, did you see anything in the Winter Palace? You were still hung up on that. Didn't I say that I didn't see anything? I started to think that I was that it that it wasn't such a good idea to come to the art gallery. I need to leave as soon leave soon to meet my girlfriend. Perhaps I should try using that clue. You came here to sketch the sculpture for your girlfriend, did you not? I don't think you would give up that easily. Even after the victim collapsed, you could still see inside the room from the outside, right? Well, I, I may have gotten a tiny glimpse, but... There's no evidence that I saw something scary in there, right? My, my. I'm disappointed it turned out to be this simple. Larry, you saw something scary at the crime scene, didn't you? Uh, gee, you... can you read my mind? In that case, there's no point in keeping any more secrets from you. You just told me everything of your own accord. That was a complete waste of time, but finally, it's checkmate. I had my eyes fixed on the Gemini sculpture. Objection! You've mentioned the Gemini sculpture many times now, but I don't believe the sculpture you saw was the Gemini one. What? Was it a mirage then? Larry mistakenly thought he saw the Winter Palace. This piece of evidence shows what Larry really saw. Pamphlet. Take a look at this pamphlet. In the Autumn Palace, the Pisces, Capricorn, Aries, and Aquarius sculptures are displayed. Why in the Autumn? Hold on! What? <laughs> Why would they be in the Autumn... Wait. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what? Uh, 
Uh, what about Pisces and Aries? They're spring. <laughs> okay, I'm... Oh my god. This has to make sense in, like, some type of way. Right? In, like, the southern hemisphere? I guess it would make sense then, right? Japanifornia logic. But, like, Japan isn't in the southern hemisphere. <laughs> what? Why? Why? I'm losing it. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, huh? Okay, anyways. The Pisces, Capricorn, Aries, and Aquarius sculptures are displayed. Incidentally, I can confirm that the Gemini sculpture is located in the Winter Palace. Therefore, the sculpture you saw could not have been the Gemini one. I knew it. Hmm? I expected him to be a bit more shocked at the news. I thought it was kind of strange. I know I saw a single goddess. And that transformation was no mirage. Transformation, you say? Oh! You're curious too, Edgy? Well, n nothing for it, I guess. For- n nothing for it. I guess I'll have to show you. Show me. What exactly? I drew a picture of the very scene I saw back then. But I really can't believe what I drew. Picture? What picture? This one, right here. What? What is this disturbing picture? He really has, like, polished up on his art skills. Like, you remember that bridge? That bridge drawing? Not that it was a bad drawing, but it was pretty, like, basic and really stiff. But, like, this? Not bad. Not bad, Larry. Like, honestly. Is that sculpture weeping tears of blood? Maurice, this picture is scary. He has improved a lot. Okay, it scared me too. This Gemini sculpture suddenly transformed into a goddess right before my eyes. I couldn't help but scream. So the victim collapsing wasn't what surprised him. What do you mean when you say transformed? I don't really understand it myself. The lower half of its body just turned into a fish. A fish goddess. That will be the Pisces sculpture, isn't it? In mythology, Pisces represents the fish that a goddess and her son transforms into. Really? So Pisces isn't just a couple of ordinary fish? Hey, gee, you don't think that sculpture is cursed, do you? Those tears of blood turned a Gemini sculpture into a fish. I'm still stuck on the out, like... Hold on, are more of them wrong? I mean, yes, more of them are wrong, because... Summer... Has... Sagittarius, Scorpio, and Libra? Sagittarius is, uh... Winter, right? And Libra is... Is... Autumn. And Scorpio is, uh... Summer? Why? Why are they so mixed up? What's happening? It's not- <laughs> I can't get over this! What is this bullshit? Virgo is also autumn. Leo is... Summer. Cancer is, uh... No, it's Scorpio is autumn too, right? I, 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 I mix up Scorpio and Cancer for some reason. I don't know. Either way, one of them is Summer. And the other one is Autumn, I believe. This is just all wrong. <laughs> what is happening? Oh my god, this is giving me a headache. Those tears of blood turned the Gemini step sculpture into a fish. Cancer person Summer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know it was like one of the 
crustaceans. <laughs> Preposterous. You simply mistook the Pisces sculpture for the Gemini one. Oh, you put the sketch in your organizer. Hmm, even a sketch like this can be used as scrap paper after all. How could you? It is strange. Why did only the lower half of the sculpture transform? Uncle Ray is a bit curious about what went on in that autumn palace. Indeed, I wonder if someone tampered with the Pisces sculpture. Yes, I can show the chart again. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Why do, like, none of them make sense? Like, a few of them, but, like... I'm <laughs> going detective on this bitch. <laughs> so strange. <laughs> what the fuck? like be no it's not southern hemisphere i thought that at first but like just things don't line up they have like mixed stuff together mm -hmm. exactly like it doesn't it doesn't add up nothing adds up but there must be something to it right right <laughs> Okay, can, can I get back to the game now? <laughs> okay, then... Okay, well... Yes, Edgeworth here. Miss Edgeworth, you finished searching the room. The poison gas isn't a threat anymore, so you can enter the crime scene. Right. Good work, detective. It seems we can enter the Autumn Palace now. Nice timing, Mr. Detective. Let's go right now. I want to see the Pisces sculpture. If Kay's going, I'm going too. I was planning on bringing him along anyway. Right then, let's proceed to the Autumn Palace. So this is the Autumn Palace. It certainly does resemble the Winter Palace. I'm waiting, sir. Huh? Aren't you... That Harry Butts guy? Wrong! I'm Larice the Nim! Never mind that, detective. Get a portrait, please. Roger that, sir. Uh, we discovered a used gas burner during our investigation. The nozzle was still warm when we found it, so it may be related to the incident. Hmm, was it used to heat something? Was that ladder always there on the ground? It's a step ladder! It was probably used by the person who set off the poison gas. The poison gas was released when someone lifted the lid of the glass case, sir. Hmm. The Pisces sculpture. Huh? Seems like you know about it, sir. Well then, do you know what the sculpture next to it is? Since we're in the Autumn Palace, it would probably have to be the Capricorn statue. As expected of Mr. Edgeworth, I thought it was Taurus myself. It was thrown off as it was covered by this weird cloth. A fluorescent cloth? I wonder what it's doing here. Evidence from the IS-7 incident. No matter what it is or how it got here. The sculptures in this room are all covered with this fluorescent cloth. And because they're hidden, it makes me want to see them even more. Let's take a look. I'll just get this cloth off. Wow! They're beautiful!
Oh no, I have to sneeze again. <coughs> oh my god. You don't think the transformation Larry saw was in fact the moment the cloth wrapped around the lower half of, the, of Pisces fell. See, Edgy? It wasn't a mirage or a mistake after all. Mm -hmm. Hey, Miles. There sure is something strange about this room. It looks exactly the same as the Winter Palace we were in just a moment ago. Yes, I agree. Perhaps the sculptures were hidden to make it look like the Winter Palace. If you wrap the cloth around the lower half of the Pisces sculpture, it looks like Gemini. Capricorn is a half fish too. Hide the lower half of it. Half, and it becomes Taurus. The remaining two, which couldn't be altered with trickery, were covered up. The Autumn Palace was made to look like the Winter Palace. So it seems, Mr. Shields. It looks like we'll need to conduct an investigation of the Autumn Palace too. Mr. DeBess and Judge Courtney. Hey, hey, hey! You guys again? This is a problem. You see, this is my crime scene. Mr. Edgeworth, it seems my power is insufficient. If you're here, then it would appear that you still haven't understood my warnings. <laughs> Furthermore, you know full well your reckless actions will cause trouble for that detective. <laughs> oh my god, she's so annoying. In the name of the goddess of law, I must pass judgment. You got it all wrong, pal. I was the one who asked Mr. Edgeworth to investigate. Really? Well then, Flatfoot, I'll have to do that. That? Yeah, that. Um, right. Cut your salary. Looking forward to your next payday? I've always wanted to say that. Ugh, you're the last person I want cutting my salaries, pal. Hold it the best. I'm only cooperating with the police as a witness to this incident. Detective Gumshoe is not to blame. Hmm, so that's how it is. Well then, should I be raising his salary? No, that's not what I meant. But I would be real it would be really nice to get my salary raised. Your mercy is deeply moving, Sebastian. But past transgressions must lead to future judgment. <laughs> Prosecutor Edgeworth and all in his company depart at once from this holy site. But, but that's... We only just got here. The one given the goddess of laws a blessing for this incident was Sebastian. Then why the fuck are you here? In other words, Mr. DeBest is the prosecutor in charge of this case. Why is he, like, being handheld by a judge in the first place? That's right, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening performance is over. Besides, I've already got my eyes set on the culprit. What? Who, pal? Well, naturally, that artist. M me? Hey, what's going on, Edgy? Don't ask me. I can't understand his reasoning. If you can't understand how the best prosecutor thinks, it simply shows how culp how inculpable you are. It seems he doesn't know what inculpable even means. That's right, Sebastian. Prosecutor Edgeworth is quite incapable. Um, yes, he's incapable. Listen, he's trying his best. It's okay. She just nonchalantly corrected him. Don't underestimate my intelligence gathering skills. I just came from the infirmary and asked the doctor there. About the cause of the poison gas. And what was the cause? Uh, some normal substance. What was his name again? Uh, hold on a second, I'll call the doctor to make sure. Since Sebastian is on the phone, I'll answer for him. No, it's because it's because Sebastian's name is the best, and he has it in him that he is the best, literally. Uh, but, but, but I always say that no, it's it's his name is being misconstrued. It's not the fact that he is the best; it's the fact that he's doing the best he can. You know, like. <laughs> Why didn't you tell us before he called? 
and the poison gas was caused by the mixing of two different types of chemicals. Their names are normalium and fatalium. Okay. So, what are those chemicals exactly? Normalium is a red liquid that's commonly used in everyday products. It can be found in paint and detergent, among other things, but it is not toxic by itself. What's, his what's he doing his best? The best he can. So you're saying that it's a, it's a substance readily available to anyone. Yes, but Pytalium, on the other hand, is not so easy to obtain. Its name sure sounds dangerous. What's it used for? It is the active ingredient of a white pesticide known as Megatoxin X. Pytalium itself also has a deep white color, but it's not readily sold in stores. It's nearly impossible to obtain domestically. Right now, we are looking into how this chemical was obtained. Okay, I finally found the names of those chemicals. Judge Courtney has already told us. We don't need to hear it again. <laughs> Fine then. I'll cut to the chase. You know that normalium from the poison gas is also used in paint, right? Today, out of everyone who visited the art gallery, the only one carrying paint was that artist. You're treating me as a culprit just because of that. Well, I mean, Painkiller X is apparently really like it. 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 it, it, it. Painkiller was that, was that its name? Cold Killer, something like that. Anyways, the thing that uh, Phoenix has in like the past in the third game <laughs> that Dahlia gets hold of and poisons. You're treating me as a culprit just because of that. I object to the red paint on the palette palette you're carrying. Hey, Edgy, don't you think this prosecutor is kind of an idiot? Cold killer, that was it, thank you. Indeed, although I've only known him for a short time, his logic is always absurd. It's it's okay, he's doing the best he can, okay? Hey, don't ignore me! It's alright, Sebastian. They're only doing it because they're afraid of you. Let the first star to appear at night shows reasoning that shines the best. First time sh the first star shines best. Not bad. Hey, you guys, better listen up, too. Shining logic. The artist was the first to vic uh, discover the victim, so naturally, he is the best suspect. The poison gas was caused by normalium, a chemical found in paint, right? As he was carrying paint near the victim, he would have had the best chance. The paint, along with being the first witness, pretty much proves he's the culprit, but what about the fatalium? How do you explain how we got the fatalium? <laughs> so, what do you think, Justine? We cannot ignore the possibility. Well then, Mr. Artist, please tell us the truth. Did you leave red paint at the crime scene? Or else, did you cause the poison gas to go off? The only thing I leave behind is my bond of love with you. Please watch what you say. My gavel is already prepared to declare you guilty. Objection. Please pay no heed to this man's statements. Objection. Hey, hey, you guys! Ignoring my reasoning just because it's flawless won't do you any good. <laughs> Sir, there are so many flaws. It's okay, I still love you, but there's so many flaws. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, if you already admitted defeat, you should take your leave. Hmm, even though I don't really have the time to deal with your ridiculous reasoning. Okay. Second statement. Objection. Mr. DeBest, your logic is more akin to a shooting star than a shining star. <laughs> Shines the best, best like a shooting star, right? It may, may shine brightly for a brief moment, but then it burns itself out. The poison gas originated from inside the glass case of the Pisces sculpture. Exactly! So that's where the artist set off the gas, right? He used a normalium in his red paint. As your senior, let me give you one piece of advice. Listen to the explanations of others. 
The poison gas was caused by mixing both normalium and fatalium together. The normalium contained in the red page is not enough by itself. Really? I thought I heard that normalium caused a fatality. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Tell me you just misheard the forensic report. Darn it! By the time Larry discovered the victim, the room was already filled with poison gas. It is time for you to realize how incapable you really are. <laughs> what do you mean by incapable? You tried to use that word earlier, and you still don't know what it means. It means to say you are lacking in ability. Incidentally, inculpable has a completely different meaning. I get it. You're making fun of me again, aren't you? I am merely saying you were incapable in your investigation. Before you insult Sebastian, I still have some doubts about your own statements. What kind of doubts? For all we know, Mr. Artis could have simply entered the Autumn Palace at an earlier time. Th that's... Moreover, do you have evidence that the red paint is unrelated to the case? Do you have evidence on how he got the fatalium, ma'am? <laughs> Please, court me! Fucking stick to the courtroom! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> The most important thing now is not the red paint, the red normalium and the white fatalium. Exactly how were these two substances mixed? How did someone get the fatalium in the first place is what I'm saying, but okay, sure. I believe that our that's our I believe that is our main concern. Naturally, it was Sebastian's job to investigate that. Were it not for your interference, we would have found that out by now. We got here first! <laughs> How? <laughs> Ma'am, your logic is all over the fucking place! Can you fucking not? I never intended to interfere. On the contrary, I'd like to cooperate. And tell me you're going to say you know the cause of the poison gas. How the poison gas started, I have something that may shed some light on this matter. Sebastian, do not fall for his bluff. Come now, it's fine really. Let's hear what he's come up with. If you say so, Sebastian. Come on, show us! How did the poison gas start? Sketch. Surely you're not saying that this was the cause of poison gas. Hmm, it seems even you've noticed it. Duh, it really stands out. Those red tears that Larry saw were undoubtedly normalium. Huh? Wait a second. If those were chemicals, does that mean a ghost set off the poison gas? You don't have time to play along with it. The red tears of normalium could not have triggered the could not have triggered the poison gas by itself. That red liquid was mixed inside the case to create the poison gas. What? Just where do you see the evidence that the chemicals were mixed? The gas. <laughs> My the gas. <laughs> that can also be seen in this sketch. Here's the evidence. Okay. Yes, the two two chemicals were mixed, but obviously the pink stuff. I know my color theory. The proof is right here. Oh, that's not it. But it is that. Oh, it's because I... I uh, oh my god, are you kidding me? It's because I hit the... Like, the... It's because I, I, I hit this one. This one was in there. Ugh, God, that's dumb. It's literally right there. The pink liquid can be seen flowing out from under the case of the Pisces sculpture. This is proof that the two chemicals were mixed. Hold on a second. I still don't get it. How does this show that normalium and fatalium were mixed? Since we have a self-proclaimed artist here, I'll let him explain. Larry, you fancy yourself an artist. So you should know about mixing paint, right? What do you add to red to make pink? Don't take me for a fool, Edgy! I'll have you know I graduated from middle school! I thought it was junior high! You add white to red, 
to make pink is common knowledge. Well, technically there's rose pink, baby pink, and several others. That's enough. Now do you understand, Mr. De Best? Huh, that's how it is. I'm mixing red normalium with white pitalium. You get a pink liquid, yes! Yes! Yes, you're doing so great, you're doing... You're doing amazing, sweetie. <laughs> hey, wrong button. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> yes, exactly. Took him long. Took him. Took him long enough. Listen, just because he's like a, a bit like mentally challenged, it's okay. Hmm. I see. Looks like Mr. De Best finally gets it. How is that overruled? Prosecutor Edgeworth, you have merely presented one possibility. Uh, can, can you can you explain can 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 you explain this, ma'am? Can you explain the white no the white the pink splotch or whatever? Huh? Can can you explain the pink stain? Huh? Do you do you have a better explanation? Do you? Do you? Do you have evidence for that explanation? Do you? Do you? My god. Do we really know if the color was the result of the two chemicals mixed together? Furthermore, this sketch was drawn by the suspect. I cannot put, a much, put much faith into it. I just painted what I saw. How could that be a lie? Mr. Artis, I did not permit you to speak. Ah, uh, so cold. That's part of her charm. Of course, I intend to bring the truth to light immediately. It would not be wise to jeopardize your position even further. Aren't you going to answer my question from before? How do you know that Mr. Artis did not enter the Autumn Palace? If you cannot prove this, there is no room for you to argue any further. Hey, couldn't we find that out if we talk to the victim, pal? The victim, Dane Gustavia, remains unconscious and in critical condition. Also, one thing, ma'am. What is his motive? Does he have a motive? Like, that's so important, like, literally all the other times. But when it's, when it's her, screw that. <laughs> God, the double standards, he pisses me off. Oh, that's right. Well then, Sebastian will be investigating the crime scene now. All of you, please vacate the premises. Who that? If you were to take a stand in court, you'd cause a lot of trouble for the presiding judge. We know. <laughs> we know. Is there something you would like to say, Mr. Artist? Hold your horses, Miss Cool Beauty. My name is Justine Courtney. Please don't address me by such a strange title. Oh, you finally told me your name. Please to meet you, D Justy. I'm Larise Dunim. You can call me Larise. Mr. Artist, please get to the point. I just remembered something I haven't had a chance to say yet. When I first got to this room, it was locked, so I couldn't go in. But then, that old dude just suddenly fell through the door. It would appear that the palace rooms can be locked from the inside, but just because you say it was so doesn't mean the door was locked. Without proof, your statement holds no value. The same goes for you. Oh my god. You fucking tell her, Ray. Uh, why not let Uncle Ray prove it for you? Whoa. After all, we can confirm the room was locked too. Right, Miles? Yes, I remember as well. Hmm, Winter Palace should be... Huh? It's locked up. That's odd. They've already opened the, opened the museum. Until the gas outbreak, no one could have entered this room. How is that overruled? Perhaps the suspect entered the room with the victim during the gas outbreak. As you can see, this man did not inhale any of the gas. If you examine his belongings, you'll find he wasn't carrying a gas mask either. Is that so? Well then, I have no choice but to agree. 
What was it that you were trying to prove? Ma'am, you're just here to, to make it painful for me. Like, really, that's all you're here for. You're just here. Her mission, to make Miles Edgeworth's life as miserable as fucking possible. That was easier than I expected. Anyway, I presume this clears up any suspicions surrounding Larry. It seems Mr. DeBest's logic was off once again. Wahaha! Well, ha. Not exactly. I just didn't have enough information, that's all. Therefore, my reasoning was just before his time. He sure has a grand way of saying that things didn't work out for him. In that case, there is one more suspect who has yet to take the stand. Mr. Artist, you are free to go. Huh? But I wanted to talk to you a little more, Justy. Overruled. Your cold demeanor leaves me mesmerized all the more. Ma'am, sir, you have a girlfriend. <laughs> this other suspect is a pharmacist by the name of Delia Scones. Delicia Scones. It would have been difficult for this artist to obtain the Vitalium from Megatoxin X. Finally, she acknowledges that too. Took you fucking long enough. She's literally there just to like make life difficult. That's all she is there for. Oh, wait, I just saw that. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw Fleur's message to me on Discord. It's true. But a pharmacist may have knowledge of how to do that. Well then, shouldn't she like be the the main suspect if she's a pharmacist? <laughs> oh my god. The court will now take a 10 minute recess. Sebastian, it would be best if we brought her in quickly. Best if we brought her quickly? <laughs> Sounds good. Leave it to me. Hey, Flatfoot, keep up the keep up the investigation. Oh, got it. You really fucking said that, huh? Well, tell me, Judge Courtney suspected her from the very beginning. So Mr. DeBest's logic wasn't any help at all. She is literally just there to make things difficult. Judge Courtney, just what is she thinking? Oh my god. How long is this? Oh, this one's not long. This is a short chapter. How far have I gotten anyways? Hold on, let me just check. We're like almost halfway there. What? <laughs> how, how is this? <laughs> how is this? Shorter than the last one. What is happening? This is fucking nine parts. Well, I guess the longer parts are probably coming up, I guess. She said it would only be a ten minute recess. You sure are taking an awfully long time. Sorry to keep you waiting. Prosecutor the best presents Miss Delicia Scones. Yes, the you called, so here I am. It is I, Delicia Scones, the pharmacist who makes delicious drugs. <laughs> Justine, I woke up and chose violence. Who makes delicious drugs? <laughs> oh my god, honestly, the translators did such a fucking great job on this. And the fact that they even got, like, voiced lines. I would just assume that they got, like, someone to do them them but like they're great honestly they made 
Like everything here too, they... They translated this, they translated everything. It's fascinating. But you can call me Miss Delicious. You can call me Mr. The Bestest. Uh, no, I, I had something. Uh, oh. <laughs> Mr. Asbestos. <laughs> Oi, nice to meet you, bestie. I've gone straight to nicknames. Huh? That boy reminds me of someone. <laughs> this is Miles Edgeworth. He's Gregory's son. Yesy, nice to meet you, Miley. Hmm, could you please not call me Miley? <laughs> Someone, please put Miley Cyrus's fucking face on Edgeworth. Please, I beg of you. <laughs> Meeting Greggy's boy, I guess it's a sign that I'm getting old. How old is this woman? So we will never know. Sebastian, isn't there something you'd like to ask Miss Pharmacist? Oh, right, yeah. Miss Delicious, could you please tell us the reason why you come why you came to the gallery? Yes, see, I came to see the curator, Katie. I've been friends with her for 18 years, so I visit her quite often. Is it true, Mr. Pharmacist, that you also assisted in the treatment of Mr. Gustavia? Just fucking use use Miley Cyrus's face from that and put it on Edgeworth. I want to see it. I guess you could say that, although I only made the antidote for the doctor. Wow, you made the antidote on the spot? Yes, see, as long as I have the right ingredients, I can make any drug easily. Here, here you go, little girl. Here you have a weed. <laughs> What about some ecstasy? <laughs> PCP, maybe? <laughs> Would you like some cocaine? <laughs> the infirmary here is well equipped, you see. I don't know why I made her like so like <laughs> enunciated. Instead of sending him to the hospital in critical condition, we treated him right away. I did all I could do. The rest depends upon his body's ability to, re to recover. Do you know the victim, Miss Delicious? Miss Delicious? Oh my god, I don't know. I have like the perfect voice for him in my head, but I can't rec recreate it. No, Miss Gaunt wouldn't be Dutch, would she? And yeah, the fact that she's British. British. That's why she has such a, like, a forced accent. That is why. It's because she's actually Dutch. <laughs> but her... But, 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 but she lies and tells them she's from England. B, although it's been 18 years since I last saw him, I only knew that he had become a world-famous pastry chef. Eh? Is the victim that famous? I heard on the news that he had won a competition for designing desserts. It reminds me, I do remember him mentioning something about studying designing Zheng Fa. Now, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns, Miss Pharmacist. Are you familiar with the drug Megatoxin X? Yes, see, it's a drug that's used to kill those things. It's mega effective. Because the effects are so potent, it's not available to the general public. What are those things you're referring to? It's a drug for vanquishing the creatures that strike fear into the heart of a lady. The ones that often infest kitchens and the like. So it rat poison. Ah, I think I know what she's talking about. Or, or roaches. So, Miss Pharmacist, may I ask you one more thing? Do you know what happens when you mix normalium with vitalium? Yes, B, I know. It's even written on, on the warning label for Megatoxin X, hazardous when mixed. When the two drugs are mixed together, a chemical reaction occurs and the gas is released. Inhaling a large amount of this gas can cause breathing difficulties and even death. From the amount of poison gas Gusty breathed in, I think... There was probably at least 500 
milliliters of each chemical in the gas. As expected of a pharmacist. She is very well informed. Normalium is an adhesive liquid that becomes hot as soon as heat is applied. It also has a red color and a minty fragrance. Due to its low cost, it's used everywhere. You could say it's rather normal to see it normal day products. Vitalium is a white, watery liquid. That's enough for now. As expected of a pharmacist, you, you're very knowledgeable. Yes, see, of course I am. Megatoxin X is one of the chemicals that the company I work for produces. Ha, but not just anyone has access to it. It's so potent as a poison that it could be sold to the public after all. Thank you. I think that's all I need to hear. Is Judge Courtney a suspector? And what is she hiding behind that smile? I woke up and chose violence. <laughs> that's what she's hiding. Oh, Flatfoot. Have you made progress in the investigation or something? Yeah, let me tell you. The glass cases that contain the sculptures can be opened by a mechanism in the lid. Hmm, what strange cases. The temperature in the cases can be lowered down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. The inside of the Pisces case was set to 27 degrees Fahrenheit, so my hand nearly got stuck to the ice. That was minus three, yeah. Good thing it didn't, so then... In the lid of the Pisces case, we detected slight traces of normalium. Eh? <laughs> Not bad. Huh? If the normalium was in a glass case at a temperature of 27 degrees Fahrenheit, then it would have been frozen to the lid. Eh? Huh? Really? So, what happened? Sir the best, why don't we try borrowing the power of K's little thief? I think the circumstances will be easier to understand if we use our Mr. Thief. Hmm, so you really want to help me out that much? Fine, I'm not really sure how this all works, but you get on with it. I hate being bossed around by this guy, but to arrive at the truth, I'll do it. Stop acting as you please. The goddess of law has no need of your power. Ma'am, this could be so much easier. Do you remember how we solved the previous case? Yeah, it was by the help of Little Thief. Without that fucking son of a bitch, we would not fucking get to know anything about how anything looked like. Don't be such a stick in the mud, Courtney Pie. We have the approval of the prosecutor in charge, so what's the problem? Could it be there's something the PIC doesn't want us to find out? That's none of your concern. If you insist on participating in the investigation, then let me check if you're qualified by asking you a question. I don't know why I made her British too. What is she planning? Who set off the poison gas? If you can answer me that, I'll allow you to work with us. Well then, Miles. The person who opened the Pisces case and set off the gas. When you think about the circumstances, there is only one person it could have been. Yes, considering the circumstances, it's clear who it was. So, please give me your answer. Who set off the poison gas? Gustavia? No, that's not... There was no one in the Autumn Palace, other than the victim. Okay, that was right. It's hard to believe it could, could have been anyone but him. It seems that way. Very well, I'll allow you to participate this time. However, if I feel you are a hindrance, I will have to ask you to leave. Understood. But what I don't understand is why the victim opened that case. So, Mr. Edgeworth, what shall I recreate? Based on the information we've gathered so far, let's recreate the scene before the gas. Got it! Ah! 
Don't scare me like that. So this is the true power of Sir Thief. Let's investigate the Pisces sculpture post haste. There's frozen normalium on the lid of the Pisces sculpture in sculpture's glass case. It's frozen so thick you can't even open the lid. In the actual glass case, the lid was heavily cracked. It was like someone had put had it out for the Pisces sculpture, sir. Do you have any idea how how it came to be cracked like this? Hmm. Well, the damage didn't seem to have come from outside of the glass case, sir. I see. So the inside of the case was below freezing point. And the case had developed cracks. There are no signs of external damage. And from this we can deduce. Below freezing. Like Mr. Edgeworth's cold stare. And cracked. Like Mr. Edgeworth's furrowed brow. Thermal fracturing. The cold glass case was heated from the outside, causing it to crack. Hmm, but why did thermal fracturing occur here? And what caused it? Hmm. Inside the thermally fractured glass case, there was frozen normalium. Oh, that face means you've probably thought of something, Miles. Indeed I have. I know how Mr. Gustavia was able to open the glass case. What? How can you possibly know something I don't? I'd say the thing he does know... Things he does know are in the minority. Hey, aren't you going to let me know? How did Ding Gustavia open the glass case? With the gas burner, right? This gas burner that was found in the Autumn Palace shows signs of recent use. I believe this was the cause of the thermal fracturing in the Pisces sculpture's glass case. A gas burner? Why would he use something like that? Ha! Huh, he got it! The lid was frozen shut, so we had to use the burner to melt the ice. Indeed, that is correct. <laughs> I just had a late start. I I'm still the best, you know. Yes, you are. It's okay, honey. You're doing you're doing amazing, sweetie. Late start. You didn't even understand a single thing, did you? Oh, that's just because Mr. Edgeworth's explanation was too hard to follow. Listen, he's just mentally challenged. It's fine. Okay, why don't you update the little thief so that he can understand it? If you say so. Right, let's restart the recreation. The victim, Dane Gustavia, was the only one to enter the Autumn Palace. If he used a gas burner, then the normalium in the glass in the glass case would have melted. Uh huh, uh huh, and then. The melted normalium would have come in into contact with the fatalium inside the su in in inside the case and produced the poison gas. The moment Mr. Gustavia opened the lid, it would have begun to inhale the gas. He managed to drag himself out of the fountain out of the fan fountain patio just before his strength ran out. So we inhaled the gas when he opened the lid. It seems he finally understands. Why did Mr. Gustavia open the glass case of the Capisa sculpture? The victim's goal, and I do not know that I do not yet know. Perhaps he had the same reason as Uncle Ray. Maybe he actually came to see the Winter Palace, not the autumn one. Uncle Ray also thought that this was the Winter Palace at first. Oi, you two, Ray Ray. Actually, I thought so too. It looks just like Icy's room from 18 years ago. It's even got the exact same plants in front of the door. It seems everyone involved with the IS-7 incident made the same mistake. It is imperative that, the in that we investigate the real Winter Palace immediately. I should suggest that, that to Mr. DeBest. I get it now. Yeah, that's how it works. How, that's how it was. Huh? Did you think of something? The victim committed suicide. He thought it could look refined if he died in an art gallery. Have 
have you even been listening? Well, if you're as smart as me, just hearing half of the story will be enough. Sebastian, I'll explain it from the top later. Top? That means best, right? Alright, I'll leave it to you. Yes, it would indeed be best to let Judge Courtney handle him. That aside, don't you have some information to inform everyone of? Ha, ah, I totally forgot! What are you talking about? <laughs> we did a little checking on the on that pharmacist. We, meaning me, the best prosecutor's subordinates. That's not something to brag about. Just shut up, you! Quiet down and listen! Suicide is, um, off the table for now, yeah? That's because, um, in short, that pharmacist is the culprit. She set up the gas as a trap. No. It is a terrible shame, Miss Pharmacist. How could one in the profession of saving lives stoop to ex ex extinguishing them? Huh? What are you saying? I I would never do such a thing. Mr. DeBest, do you have a basis for these accusations? Hmm. Of course. This is my basis. Her pharmacist's license. It would permit her permit her to handle Negatoxin X, right? And its active ingredient, Fatalium, was one of the components of the poison gas. Exactly! That chemical is almost impossible for ordinary people to obtain. But that pharmacist is another story altogether. It, it, it wasn't me! You got it all wrong! Objection. And that's not all. A bottle of Megatoxin X was found in the victim's pocket. And on the bottle, we found clear fingerprints. Yours. <laughs> you and the curator took the victim to the infirmary, right? That would have given you the perfect opportunity to plant the bottle on him. Th th that's You are the only pharmacist on the premises who could have handled Megatoxin X. Furthermore, as for the curator of this art gallery, you are an acquaintance of hers. You would have had access to the gallery at any time in order to prepare the poison gas trap. Please wait! That megatoxin X! It was stolen! Trying to lie your way out of this won't go well with me. It's true! Look, I've got the proof right there in my bag. What is she searching for? Not this. Not this either. Hmm. I remember seeing a cloth like that recently. Ah, oh, here. Please take a look at this. Hmm. It's some sort of paper. What's it say? April 1st. Theft report accepted. Stolen item. Megatoxin X. This. is a theft report. Acceptance. It's a theft report acceptance certificate. What? Yes, see, truth is, one week ago, my Megatoxin X was stolen. One week ago? But it's the second. What did you just now fill out a form? One week ago? That means you didn't have it with you today. Yes, see, that bottle you just found is probably the one that was stolen from me. I normally carry that bottle of Megatoxin X in my bag at all times, even though I often forget to keep it locked up. I would never even think about mixing it with normalium. But why in the world would you carry such a dangerous substance in your person? Well, you never know when those things will appear. Those... those... Those creatures that infest the kitchen, striking fear into the heart of a lady, right? Although if you had rolled up, had a rolled up newspaper, you could just squash them with one blow. Justine, what do we do now? Well then, we can really can we really accept this theft report? Um, let's ask for confirmation. That should clearly tell us whether or not she's lying. Right. Well then, I'll just call and confirm it. it looks like Mr. De Miss Delicious isn't the culprit. Indeed, if she really did set up the poison gas as a trap, I don't believe she would do it in the way that incriminates her the most. So, Miles, who do you think is the culprit? Predicting the actions of the victim would require a fair amount of advanced planning. 
There's only one person here capable of that. Huh? Uncle Ray would like to know too. Who do you suspect? The one who stole the Megatoxin X and prepared the room in advance was... Catherine Hall! It had to be the curator of the, curator of the Zodiac Art Gallery, Miss Catherine Hall. However, I still don't have any evidence that she is the criminal yet. I see, she is. The way he said that just now sounded like he had been expecting it. Hmm. Good job, Miles. As expected from Uncle Ray's future apprentice. I have no intention of becoming your apprentice. Apprentice. I can read. And now, I will announce the results of my verification. I can confirm that her theft report was indeed accepted. Therefore, it's a little too early to come to a decision. Hmm. That means your logic was a completely faulty. <laughs> You're wrong! My real performance is still to come. Really? And how do you plan to proceed with your investigation? Th th that's... First, we need to speak with the curator. And after that... Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Sebastian, Mr. Gustavia may have had business in the Winter Palace. I believe we should send an investigator there as well. Oh, that's good too. Take the gumshoe and investigate the Winter Palace at once. Oh, got it, sir. Justine, let's go talk to the curator. Yes, let us proceed. We should go listen. We should go and listen to what Miss Hall has to say as well. Alright, I want you guys to listen to what the curator has to say. Mr. DeBest, weren't you going to go and talk to her yourself? Nah, that's a job for my subordinates. All I have to do is wait for their report. I'm the best prosecutor after all. Such arrogance. Well, this is not climactic. I'm gonna chill for a bit. Huh? What's that in the fountain? There's a dead body in the fountain! What is the meaning of this? Silence! Everyone! Forensics! Identify this body at once! Good night, Bengi! Cerebral pal! Please be quiet, detective! The ice sculptures in the Winter pa Palace! They've all melted, pal! What? 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 What's going on here? There are two victims now. It's a soul. Just like 18 years ago. Once again. The ice sculptures have melted. Again. And everyone related to the incident 18 years ago is gathered here now. This is no mere coincidence. You think so, Miles? Yes. The key to finding the truth of this case lies in the IS-7 incident. This is what I believe. <laughs> That's right. Uncle Ray thinks so too. Looks like it's time once again for Uncle Ray to tell you about the IS-7 incident. Sweet. That was that chapter. IS-7 to Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> it's only nine. I can at least, like, do one more. Like, depending on how long this is. How long is it? Not very long. What the fuck? Why was the last one so fucking long? <laughs> I swear. The IS-7 incident. 18 years ago. Gregory Edwards' last case. Isaac Dover was murdered at the venue of the dessert contest. His body was discovered in the chocolate treasure chest made by Jeff Master. The victim died of blood loss after being struck in the head with a rock salt lamp. The murder weapon was found hidden inside Delicia's candy castle. 
Then, in the victim's room, where, where no one had searched yet. All of Dober's sherbet sculptures had melted. <laughs> sculptures in Mr. Dober's room have melted. Due to that, Prosecutor von Karma immediately drove us away from the scene. How are we gonna investigate now? And what's with that defense attorney's out? Von Karma's methods are deplorable. Well, investigating the crime scene is supposed to be the police's job after all. You gotta admit, Von Karma's methods are way out of line. Defense attorneys and the police should work together to discover the truth. Raymond, you must realize that not everyone shares the same views as us. Should one expose the truth for the sake of justice, or simply accept things as they, are, as they appear? Everyone has their own view of what is right and what is wrong. Even if that means convi convicting an innocent man? Both ourselves and the police are only human. And as humans, we all make mistakes. It is for this reason that we defense attorneys exist. So that those who are alone and helpless can have an ally on their side. An ally on their side? If we cannot investigate, shouldn't we just find some other way to help? Sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. I still have much to learn. Hmm. You're still young, so you'll have many opportunities to learn. Right. I'll do my best. Monsieur Edgeworth and Monsieur Shields, would you like to take a brief respite? I know it's not much, but please eat these. <laughs> wow, thank you. Let's eat. I appreciate getting some sugar into my system. These are a little too sweet. And it's a little misshapen, too. I'm terribly sorry. Does it not suit your tastes? Not at all. It's deliciously sweet. <laughs> Thank you very much. But making sweets isn't really my forte. Huh? You made this chocolate cake? Yes. Chocolate is Monsieur Master's favorite food. Preparing his favorite food is also part of my job, but I'm still not that good at it, so I need him to instruct me. I envy Master Jeff. He has to eat Kate's handmade sweets whenever he wants. Did you say something? Huh? N no, it's nothing. This is so sweet. In more ways than one. Are you gonna save one for Edgeworth? For, for Miles? Saul, so, you seem very dedicated to your work. You're not gonna save one for your son? What father are you? Without my work, I wouldn't even have the right to be here. What do you mean? When I was a child, I was abandoned, Monsieur Master. I was abandoned. Monsieur Master took me in. On snowy Christmas Eve, I was left on the doorstep of his mansion. I owe Monsieur Master my life. He became like a father to me. And so, to repay his kindness, I want to continue working for him. How old is she? Did I check? She's 16? She's younger than the Shields! Shields looks like he's 15. Kate, you're incredible. I've lived a long life. Yet, yet that brought tears even to my eyes. I thought she was older. Yeah, me too. Today, Christmas Eve has finally arrived once more. But it looks like I, I won't be able to give him the present I prepared. I would do anything if it meant saving Monsieur Master. If there's any way I could be of service to you, please ask. Yes, I appreciate that. Well then, do you happen to know anything about the victim, Isaac Dover? I don't really know much about Monsieur Dover, but 
I have a photo of the desserts he made for the contest finals. Hmm. This is certainly a splendid piece of work. Yes! With this exquisite beauty, it's truly a work of art. It's crafted so intricately... Intric intricately that you almost forget it's made out of sherbet. I don't even know how to say that word. It also seems Monsieur Master was also fond of... It seems Monsieur Master was also fond of Monsieur Dover's work as well. Hold on, let me, let me check. No, not Shrek. <laughs> uh, pronunciation, is it Sherbet? Yeah. Sherbet, okay, cool. It's so like such a confusing word because it looks like sorbet. But it's not pronounced the same. It's not sherbet. It's sherbet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, these are the Taurus and Gemini constellations. You know a lot about constellations, Raymond. Of course. There's so much romance in the constellations. For example, take the club, lyre, and arrow held by the Gem by Gemini here. These come from... Huh? There are no strings on this lyre. Hmm. Did Mr. Dover make a mistake in his sculpting? It's hard to think he would make a mistake like that. Huh. I thought you said you didn't know that much about him. Well, uh, I just sort of felt that way somehow. It appears she is hiding something from us. Miss Hall, did you take this photograph yourself? Yes, I took it with this instant camera. It develops pictures instantly. It's one of my greatest treasures. Wow, I would love to see it in action. <laughs> well then, why don't we take a picture right now? Yay, let's have our picture taken, Miss Regworth. Sure, I don't mind. I'm confident in my hairstyle today. Sorry, we 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 stand Miles's father, honestly. Like, all right, I'm taking the picture. Say cheese. Can we see the picture? Here, it's developed. A present for me to you, Monsieur Shields. Wow, thank you so much. That's such a great camera. It's the only camera in this mansion. Unfortunately, its convenience comes at a cost. There are no negatives. No negatives, huh? This is the same camera Mr. Master used during the contest. Yes, you are well informed. While he made this his dessert, Mr. Master photographed his work. After that, he took photos of all the other competitors' works. Was he taking photos at the time the body was found? The body was discovered during the judging, was it not? Monsieur Master intended to take photos of everyone's rooms, but after he photographed Gustavia's room, he ran out of film. Monsieur Master asked me to change the film in, in the camera. It seems the film... It seemed the film he prepared in advance wasn't enough. It wasn't enough film. It seems the number of photos he took didn't match up with the amount of film remaining. Well, he told me himself it might have been just a mistake, though. Is it really just a mistake? I retrieved more film from the main building and went back to the fountain patio. And it was then that I heard the sound of something breaking in Monsieur Master's room. Monsieur Master? Are you in here? And then she screams. Yeah. And that's when I found Monsieur Dover's body in Monsieur Master's room. It was so terrible. I was really shaken up. Before I spoke to anyone else, I called the police. Miss Camera, I've kept it with me ever since. I see. If it's alright with you, would you mind lending me your camera and that photo? Sure, I don't mind at all. 
Here you go. Thank you very much. Hmm. <sighs> okay, well, what about the picture that you just took? I'm upset. Detective Bad. It's delicious. Is the investigation over, over already? He said he had no more use for me and kicked me out. Hmm. <laughs> Money, that meanie, what a rude thing to say. It was probably to ensure that you wouldn't eat any more of the crime scene. So, Detective Bad, did you get kicked out too? Seems from karma. Thought I was getting in the way. He won't let me investigate. Why would he prohibit his own detective from investi investigating? Look. Oh. We know just about all there is to know about the crime scene. Right now, he's talking to Gustavia in Dover's room. Why does he need to speak to Mr. Gustavia? We heard from Hall that Gustavia was seen entering the victim's room. Mr. Gustavia? Yes, I saw him entering Dover's room, and it seemed like he was trying to avoid being seen. Although I have no idea what he did in there. He is currently under suspicion for melting Dover's sherbet. Just why did Mr. Gustavio enter that room? I also have a photo of Dover's room here. If you need it, I'll let you take a look at it. Huh? <laughs> what? Why would you do that for us? Hmm. You still don't get it, kid. I'm saying I want to help you guys in order to discover the truth of this case. Detective Bad. Is, is that alright, Detective Bad? Won't Von Karma chew you out again? I have no intention of becoming Von Karma's slapdog. If he won't let me investigate, I'll just do as I like. Getting tied up in stupid rules will only blind you to the truth. Isn't that right, Tony Edgeworth? Of course, Detective Bad. I thank you. This is amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Now we got Detective Bad on our side. I don't really get what's going on, but I'm glad you boys are friends now. I'm grateful that he'll lend us his strength. Well then, can we see the photo now? Right. This is the current state of Dover's room. Wow. The sherbet has completely melted. The room is drenched in a light blue liquid. We should compare this with the photo Miss Hall took. The sherbet melt because the power cord was pulled out. Yeah. Because it was pulled. All of the refrigerated glass cases lost power completely. Looks like all the power cords were connected to one socket. Do you have any idea when this cord was pulled out? No. Still under investigation at the moment. What a waste of beautiful sherbet. Honestly, had I known it would end up like this, I would have eaten even more of the stuff. Mr. Rover's sherbet tastes that good? Oh, yes, Lee. His sherbet was most delicious. Really, I wish I could have eaten some too. But there was one piece that was so salty, I couldn't eat it. Salty. It's right here in this photo. It was part of that liar. It's a liar from the Gemini constellation. Gemini? I mean. Ah, oh, you snuck a bite from the liar. That's why the strings are missing. B, I could never have eaten that much. It was way too salty. Part of the sherbet tasted different. That's rather curious. Did someone other than her also take a bite out of it? Did you notice anything else? Now that you mention it, I see sherbet sculptures had these strange markings on them. They had two letters carved into them. Wait a minute. There! It looked something like this. An alphabet signature. It can't be. Where have we seen this before? I knew 
it. I just knew that Monsieur Dover made this liar. He isn't one to make mistakes in his sculptures after all. Miss Hall, it's been troubling me for a while, but... Do you know something about Monsieur Dover? Huh? Why would I know something about Monsieur Dover? You seem quite attached to Mr. Dover's handiwork. Th th that's just because his sculptures are such great works of art. No, I believe his, that his works are very special to you in particular. Uh, how do you know that? There is a piece of evidence that we believe belongs to Mr. Dover. And it happens to share a common feature with another piece of evidence. Uh, please, show me. I have no idea what you're talking about. Which two pieces of evidence share something in common? pieces of evidence that point to Mr. Dover. Let's start by presenting the first one. No. This one. <laughs> Take that. And now the second piece of evidence, which shares a common feature, is... Well, wait. There's an engraving on the bottom. It says PH. It's the initials of the creator. Pierre Roquet. Miss Hall and Mr. Master seem to be big fans of his sculpture of this sculptor's works. Initials, huh? Through mine. It'd be RS. Why don't you try carving your initials on your own belongings? Alicia saw two letters of the, al of the alphabet. They were probably used as Mr. Dover's signature. Just as an artist would sign their name on their works. But, right! Oi, I remember now. I see Sherbet sculptures had P.H. carved into them. I'm sure of it. P.H.? Those aren't Isaac Dover's initials, though. No. When we found this seal at the scene of the crime. It had probably fallen out of the late Mr. Dover's pocket. pocket. If you had pressed the seal into something, it would mark the letters PH. Also, the very same PH symbol, symbol is engraved into this teapot. The same symbol? This teapot was made by the sculptor Pierre Hoquet. In other words, this PH is the signature of Pierre Hoquet. Actually, let me try... Let me just... Fucking French man. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? Pierre Hoquet. Okay, well, I'm on the right track anyway, so. <laughs> Miss Hall, you know about this signature all too well, don't you? Yes. Monsieur Hoquet's works always bear that signature. Since he never shows himself in public, his signature is used to identify his works. No way. You're saying Pierre Hoquet is... Bird? What is it in French? It seems Detective Vat has also I realized Isaac Dover's true identity. To Miss Hall, Mr. Dover was no ordinary pastry chef. That's because his true identity was a sculptor. A fan of sculptures. That's right. Mr. Dover's true identity was the sculptor Pierre Hoquet. What? Mr. Dover was a sculptor? Things like signatures can be faked if you have the original designs. Wazoo? Wazoo. Only thing I can think of is tell me why so. <laughs> I mean, I saw it and I was like, "What? Like why so?" That was like the first thing I, uh, I thought. <laughs> I 
Listen, I found a fucking uh, a video on YouTube a while back about fucking how ridiculous French is. I can show it to you later or something because it was it was awful. And I sent it to my best friend because they uh, they speak some French. And it was just randomly in my uh, in my YouTube recommendations after after that fucking episode uh, with the 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 gay chef. It's like a signature can be faked if you have the original designs. Can you really use that as proof that he was a sculptor? No. But what's important here is that Miss Hall thought he was. As for proving his real identity, I'll leave that to the police. Hmm. <laughs> Get it. I'll have the boys check up on it. As I expected from you, Gregory Edgeworth. You, you knew Mr. Dover's real identity all along, didn't you? Yes. When I discovered the body, I noticed the seal. I knew from that moment he was Pierre Roquet, the man I greatly admired. Thinking that this would be his final post humus work, I couldn't just sit still. So that's why you entered Dover's room. Huh? What did you say? When exactly did you take this photo of Dover's room? Th that was... Perhaps this was taken during the judging. Objection. That's strange. I thought you said the camera ran out of film during the judging. Before Mr. Master entered Dover's room, you were the one in possession of the camera. Wasn't that why you were able to take the photo when you discovered the body? Yes, that's right. The only photos you took with the new film were of Dover's room and the body. If that's the case, a new contradiction comes to light. Uh, another one! The piece of evidence that contradicts the two photos Miss Hall took is... Camera. That is my instant camera! You've already handed the photos of Dover's room and the body to myself and the police. It reminds me, didn't you also take a photo of me and Mr. Edgeworth just now? The film used in this camera can take up to 20 photos. However, this camera only has 3 photos left. Which leaves 14 photos unaccounted for. Exactly what were they used to photograph? Uh -huh. Please show us all the photos you took. We will be able to discern your actions from these photos. Ah, oh, the next chapter is a long one. It's not too long. I say. I'm so sorry. I have told a terrible lie. And tell me, all the remaining sh shots are of Isaac Dover's room. My deepest apologies. These are all shots of the ice sculptures from various angles. So when these were taken... The sculptures had not melted yet. If that means the one who caused them to melt was you. Yes, I am positive that I melted them. You are positive. I am an aficionado of the sculptor Pierre Roquet, who is actually Monsieur Dover. Before the authorities could defy defile his final masterpieces during their investigation, I thought I should preserve them through photographs. Hence I entered his room. In that case, why did all the ice melt? It's probably because as I was taking the pictures, I became entranced with his works. And it seems that my foot accidentally got caught in the power cord, unplugging it. And I was way too entranced. I couldn't just plug it back in. It's true, though, but... <laughs> Accidentally, you say? I did not notice the power cord at the time. I would never have imagined that I would be the cause of those sculptures melting. Could the truth really be that simple? However, I cannot say with certainty that she is lying. 
I am so sorry to have caused you all so much trouble. As long as you are telling the truth, there's no need to apologize. That's right. Don't sweat it, Kate. Thank you very much. Edgeworth. Here. Take this picture. Do what you want with it. Just instant puddle. Mm -hmm. You meddling fools still haven't given up yet, have you? No matter how long you wait, I have no intention of allowing a defense attorney to investigate. No matter. If we can't investigate, we'll find the truth through, truth through some other method. Always ready with a comeback. Well, do try your best. Um, excuse me, Monsieur von Kama. The truth is... It was I who melted the ice sculptures in Monsieur Dover's room. What? What's the meaning of this, you clod? I'm truly sorry, but to you and Monsieur Gustavia. Mm, do not be concerned about me. Sir von Karma has already recognized that I had no hand in this act. It reminds me. Why did you enter Mr. Dover's room, Mr. Gustavia? I just noticed that, like, the, the scar he has over his eye. It goes through his hat, too. It's like he needed to show off the, the scar, so he just like made like a, a, a like a hole in his hat, so that the scar could just like follow it. Oh well, that was because. Silence, ignoramus. You're not to give that attorney the tiniest hint of information. Catherine Hall, you are coming with me. You are under suspicion of being complicit in the murder. That is dedication to this aesthetic. No! I shall be interrogating you personally. You best prepare yourself. Very well. Please wait. I still have some questions I want to ask her. I do not care for your sorry plight in the least. <laughs> Bad, Gustavia. And while I'm at it, you as well, scones. I have plenty of questions for you all. Hmm. Understood. Be while I'm at it, he says. The nerve. <laughs> he just took everyone away with him. Yes, even if we stay here, I don't think we'll be able to un investigate any further today. Let's take our leave for now. It has already grown rather late. I hope the snow has stopped by now. Sounds good. I'm starving anyway. Hmm, let's stop somewhere for hamburgers then. Before my stomach joins the chorus. <laughs> you can't fight on an empty stomach after all. We'll need to report back to Mr. Master with our findings first thing tomorrow. Hmm. Hold on, what, what did I say? We're part four. No, we're not. We're middle part four. We're on chapter six. <laughs> oh, what? Hold on. <laughs> Wait. Already? Yes, already. Hold on, let me... Where the, yeah, there, there's nine chapters. Fuck, am I gonna have to sit through this all again tonight? Mm, maybe it depends on how long this is, because this seems to be a long one. If this, like, is actually a long one, then I'm gonna do the rest. It doesn't seem too long. Oh, am I gonna do this again? I mean, it's only four hours. I know, it took, like, three hours, one chapter. Maybe it was just because I was kind of out of it, too. I don't know. Hmm. Well, I'll 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 try anyways, and I'll, I'll I'll see how it goes. I guess. We literally only have freaking four chapters left. 
right? With this one, middle part four. We have middle part four, and part one, two, and three. We have four chapters left. How is how were we six chapters in already? I think it's because we like do some like simultaneous, well not simultaneous, but like we switch like between like two cases, but they're the same, you know? The first chapter was like almost one hour. I, I, I it looked at the clock, but like now we just fucking run through it. Huh? What are you doing here, Kate? Ah, oh, Monsieur Shields and Monsieur Edgeworth. Allow me to apologize once again for all the trouble I caused you yesterday. Miss Hall looks a bit tired. Is Von Karma finished interrogating you? Yes. Aside from what happened to the ice sculptures, I was not at fault for anything else. Are you also here to meet with Master Jeff, Kate? Yes. I am worried about how he is holding up. Take the bad. He's been bad all along. He is a depressed man. <laughs> he is a depressed prison guard. Or the detention center guard. Why are you here? I just happened to be here. I'll be heading to the crime scene soon. I don't think this is a place that people happen to be, though. Though. Hello. Master Jeff, what happened to you? Oh no, Monsieur Master, why do you look so poor? I didn't get much sleep last night. The tribulation known as questioning was rather harsh. I'm just a little exhausted. They didn't let you sleep. Even for an interrogation, that's going too far, Detective Bad. The detective in charge of the of the initial investigation was also in charge of the in interrogation. I don't like von Karma's methods, but this was all I could do. He was the one who brought me here. It seems I was supposed to be interrogated for a little bit longer, though. Hmm. It seems that Detective Bad is looking out for Mr. Master in his own way. So, shall we inform Mr. Master about what happened yesterday, Raymond? Yes, sir. I got all my memos right, memos right here. Mr. Master, we would like to inform you about yesterday's investigation. Yes. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. This is so sad. Sir Jeff! It's almost like your spirit's gone. Ah, my sugar levels are low. So I might not seem like my usual energetic self. Monsieur Master! Do we have anything that can give his spirit and his glucose a boost? Oh, those chocolates. You're giving them to me? Oh, those chocolates are... Possible. I would like to give them to you immediately. Yes, he did have. But it's against the rules to give anything to the suspects in the de in the, deten in the detention center. I see. Regrettably, if those are the rules, then there's nothing we can do about it. Are you sure there's no way we can give them to him? Detective Bad. Looks like he noticed what we're trying to ask of him. I'll inspect the chocolates, and if there are no problems, I'll think about it. Detective Bad, thank you very much. All right, I knew we could count on you, Detective Bad. I am truly in your debt. Wait right here. Take it. Thank you very much. Not a word to anyone else. It would cause problems for me later. Yeah, he had, like, dark hair. Yes, of course. I apologize for making you go through so much trouble. Now I shall partake in eating these delicious delights at once. 
sorry for asking you to do something so dangerous, Detective Bad. Hmm. I only did. When I wanted to do. <laughs> Why can't you just be honest here, Detective? Oh, how sweet. It's like a comeback to life. Oh, oh, did Kate make these chocolates? Yes, sir. I did. How does it taste? Oh, no. Here, if we can go. Melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Sweet chocolates melting in my, my mouth. So sweet, so divine. Okay, I fucking nailed it. Thank you for the tasty treat. Oh, they're a bit misshapen, but so sweet and delicious. Thank you. I am so glad that you enjoyed it! And above all, it helped you regain your spirit. Thank you for your concern. The food they serve here has been absolutely tasteless. And combined with the lack of sleep, I was thoroughly exhausted. Is the food here that bad? Just salt beef and stew. Your average prison fare. That is odd. I really could not taste anything. Whatever. I'm about to head out to the crime scene. Please wait, Detective Bad. Can you give us any, any new information? Yeah, I think I can. You've identified the victim. Just as you said, Isaac Dover was a sculptor who worked in France. It seems he went by the name Pierre Hoquet. Isaac Dover was Pierre Hoquet? How could that be? Monsieur Pierre Hoquet! So Pierre Hoquet wasn't actually French, huh? Which is likely why he never showed himself in public while he worked under that name. His zodiac sculptures, they were his masterpieces, it seems. Although, they will remain forever unfinished. Unfinished? Even though they were his masterpieces? It seems he worked on them. By season. Once he finished, the remaining winter constellations, his work would be done. Ah, so he never finished the winter constellations. But they're not winter constellations! Wait, are... Or are they? No, that doesn't make any sense. Why would they... God, this is still driving me insane! Maybe he worked on them in the winter. <laughs> Hold on, wait, um... Hmm... I'm trying to make sense of this. Hmm. Yes, I'm still fucking stuff on it. <laughs> stuck on it. Huh. Why don't the constellations line up with the astrological dates? 
maybe. Maybe there is something to this after all. <laughs> I'm still like... <laughs> hmm. What image? There we go. Oh, wonderful. I may have found it. I may have actually found it. Let me actually just uh, send you. No, I found this. So, um, let me actually just open it on stream too, because why not? So, we have here, right? We have the Earth, Earth's actual position in orbit. But you see here in, like, May, like January, February, March, April, May, you see we have Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra. It does add up. So it does. Oh my god. God. So. Yeah, winter would be like Gemini and Taurus. We solved it. Zodiac signs are weird. It's because. Then it is what I read. It's the fact that like. This is what they looked like, like, thousands and thousands of years ago, and they have shifted. So this is, like, what it looks like, more or less, like, at the moment. But, like, in, in some thousand years, this will shift again. Yeah, at least, I, I, I believe that's it. Yeah, it does make sense. Okay, anyways, we got that solved. We saw the biggest mystery of them all. <laughs> so, yeah, that makes sense. They're not there because they're the part of like the zodiac, and like they don't line up with the months. They line up with the constellations, of course. They're they're the same, but they're not the same. <laughs> so finished. The remaining winter constellations his work would be done huh the winter constellations are taurus and gemini right so those ice sculptures were his final pieces it is heartbreaking that they melted i cannot apologize enough ah no i wasn't blaming you or anything well so dover was infamous for being greedy he would charge hundreds of thousands just to make a single sculpture it seemed like he always had money troubles. Interesting. Murder might be related to that, but it's still under investigation. So he had money problems, even though he was a famous artist. 
You know why he entered the dessert contest. Not yet, he kept it a secret. Even from his family. You see. It's time. I'm bringing in the replacement guard. I can't hang around here any longer than I have. Yes, I understand. Let's meet again later. A detective is a, is a kind soul. Indeed. He never strays from his own beliefs. He truly has a strong will. But he's pretty scary when you first meet him. I see. Could you tell me everything that happened yesterday? Of course. Allow me to give you a report of our investigation. This is what happened. I am sorry for the trouble Kate has cost you. I am truly very sorry. You have no need to worry, so long as you have told the, told the truth, Miss Hall. Mr. Master, would you mind if I ask you a few questions as well? Yes, I shall divulge all that I know. Please tell us about the other three contestants in the final round of your contest. Let's see, Miss Alicious. Miss Alicious' desserts had a fantastic design. However, she broke the rules, so I could not recognize her as the winner. Up until the semifinals, Mr. Gustavia's flavors and design were to my liking. Unfortunately, f both the taste and appearance of his finals entry left much to be desired, and there was something strange about his desserts in the semifinals. Something strange? Both Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover's desserts had the exact same taste. They had different designs, but in terms of taste, almost like eating the same thing. What do they look like? Well, there, there should be a picture of them at my mansion. Please allow me to show you later. Certainly, thank you very much. And then, there was Mr. Dover's sherbet sculptures. They were absolutely heavenly. Hmm, did you have a chance to taste his creations? If I recall correctly, his body was discovered in the middle of judging. Yes, but I was not informed of this until after the judging had finished. Since he was not present in the room, I helped myself to a piece of his edible lyre. It was fantastically delicious! I was so moved, I broke into song. Wait a moment, please. Did you say the lyre was delicious? Could you please give us a little more detail about that? You ate the lyre from the sculpture in Mr. Dover's room, correct? Yes, the one that was in the same glass case as the Gemini sculpture. Please have a look at this picture, Mr. Master. Did you eat from this lyre that's missing the strings? Yes, that lyre originally had strings. However, I ate them all, resulting in what you see here in this picture. So the strings on the lyre were missing because he ate them. Actually, Delicia ate a, ate a part of that same lyre that you did. However, she said it was so salty that she could not eat it. You don't say. That means there might be a problem with my sense of taste after all. A problem with your sense of taste? How so? There is a taste disorder called hypogusia, in which you lose the ability to taste salt. Okay, listen. Hypo -gu Pronunciation, here we go. Jisha? G no. What? I found a YouTube video. Hypo Ah, okay. Gusia or Jusha. Gusia. Gusia. Yeah, that's what he says. So he has it for salt, I guess. Perhaps I have contracted this illness. I just never realized it since I eat nothing but sweets. Sir, your teeth? However, I know now. 
I now know with certainty. So that's why I couldn't tell that the food they served here tastes what they what the food they served here tastes like. No, for a pastry chef to lose their sense of taste is fatal. Even if there is treatment for taste impairment, there isn't a cure for it yet. But it's probably best that you let the police know so that so you can receive a medical examination. No, that won't be necessary. There was a recipe in my mansion spe specifically for making the cure. A recipe for a drug that will cure your taste impairment. Yes, please look for it later when you return to the mansion. Monsieur Master, but that means revealing the- Kate, you should no longer conceal it from Mr. Gregory. Yes, sir, I understand. If that's what you wish. A recipe for a special drug. Just what are they hiding? Well then, I must be returning to the mansion now, so I will take my leave. Yes, we will be heading here, heading there later as well. Kate. What is it, Monsieur Master? You should not live for my sake. You should reconsider your lifestyle. So that you can live by yourself, even if I were no longer around. Please do not say things like that. I simply cannot live without you, Monsieur Master. I promise to wait for you until you return. Excuse me. Ha, huh, Kate! Catherine. Master Jeff, Kate was crying. Why did you say something so cruel? I am worried about her. Catherine always puts me before herself. What do you mean? She collects Pierre Rouquet's works and makes sweets. All to make me happy. Nothing more. That is the only reason she does anything. She always puts aside her own preferences and things that she wants to do herself. I want Catherine to choose to live her own life. I do not want her to waste her valuable life because of me. Is that so? He thinks of Miss Hall as his own daughter. And he would want his children to choose their own path in life. And a parent would do anything to protect their own children. That feeling, I also know it well. Well, that should do it for the questions. We must return to the scene of the crime. Huh, it is already time to leave, I see. So will my tribulations of questioning resume. We should take measures against their interrogations from our side as well. Can you ask the police about that? I can, but I have other ways in mind as well. When the time comes. Ho oh, ho, you are a dependable man. I shall be counting on you. Sir Jeff, we'll come here every day with reports of our progress. And we'll bring Kate too. Yes, thank you very much. I shall be looking forward to it. Mr. Master. I know that the police will be attempting to get you to confess. I am sorry to ask an innocent soul like yourself to bear with these painful experiences. But please hold on for now. If you, can co if you confess, I am positive that Von Karma will use that to his, to his advantage. And that will make helping you all the that much more difficult. I understand. I shall do my best. If you believe in me until the bitter end, I will definitely get you out of here. Detective Bad, thank you for helping us earlier. Yes, thank you. Hmm. Thanks for what? <laughs> There's no need to be shy about it. Enough about that. I suppose you intended to investigate today. T you intend to investigate today too. Of course, we still need more information to prove Mr. Master's innocence. I'm sorry, but apart from this pa patio. 
You're not allowed to investigate anywhere else. What? So you're saying we can't investigate? I'm guessing this is Von Karma's doing. Yeah. Von Karma's a bit on edge at the moment. He still hasn't received the autopsy report. Moreover, the only ones in this mansion are Miss Hall and the police. So don't get your hopes up on speaking with the people connected to this case. And Karma's being completely unreasonable. He's gone too far. Detective Bad, what do you intend to do? I promised I'll do anything I can to assist you. You have my thanks. You won't let any of Von Karma's dirty tricks get the best of us. Detective Bad, is it alright if we investigate the fountain patio? Yes. We've already finished checking everything. Except for the fountain. That's fine. As long as there is still something, I shall continue investigating. These angel statues look like they're eating chocolate fondue. It would seem, these angel statues are also Pierre Rouquet's works. As expected, they're very well made. Looks just like the real thing. So you've seen a real angel before, Detective Bad. Tch. <laughs> Defense attorneys. Always the first to find fault with everything. Hmm. Perhaps that was wrong of me. What are you investigating exactly? Sir, I am testing the water in the fountain for foreign matter, sir. Have you found anything? It seems there's both chocolate and sherbet mixed in with the fountain water. It matches the chocolate from Jeff Masters' room. And the sherbet that melted in Isaac Dover's room. They all share the same composition. The fountain water circulates through the streams that flow from each of the four rooms. Perhaps the melted sherbet flowed into the fountain. Also, someone's blood was detected as well. What are you saying? How could there have been blood in the fountain? Detective Bad, please think back to our investigation of the crime scene. Detective, Detective Bad, please look at the crime scene carefully once more. Bloodstain that could have, that should have remained at the crime scene has has disappeared. I definitely didn't get any reports about the bloodstain being cleaned up. Blood disappeared from the crime scene. Also, part of the treasure chest was missing too. Perhaps the blood in the fountain belongs to this person. <laughs> Hmm, the victim. Let's run a comparison with the blood on the murder weapon. It's a match. The blood in the fountain is Dover's. I wonder why the criminal spilled the victim's blood into the fountain. Oh, there is Kate. I need to talk to her. Miss Hall, I have come to investigate today. Ah, oh, Monsieur Edgeworth, I apologize for my disgraceful behavior earlier. Kate, she still looks a bit down. What Master said earlier must have been a real shock to her. I have prepared the photo I took of the desserts during the semifinals. Please take a look. Wow, Delicia's cake is so cute! Monsieur Master will also praise the design of Delicia's work very highly. Monsieur Gustavia and Dover's works gained high praise for both taste and design, but... Monsieur Master said it felt like he was eating the exact same thing, twice. It seems that their desserts had completely different tastes for the finals. Was there anything else that was different between the finals and the semifinals? It's nothing major, but there was something. During the contest, Monsieur Gustavia's son always came to see him, but there was no sign of him at the finals. His son came to visit. 
I wonder if there is any significance behind that. Would you mind leaving this photo with me? Certainly. Anything to aid in the investigation. And here is the recipe book that contains the special drug for curing taste disorders. That cover looks familiar. Wasn't this framed? In Master's room. Since it's also the prize for the contest, we put it on out on display. Eh? So the contest prize... Angel's recipe. It wasn't just a recipe for desserts. That's right. We've informed the participants, but... It seems you all don't know yet. So the participants knew about the true contents of the Angel's recipe. Miss Hall. Please tell me all you know about the Angel's Recipe. So the Angel's Recipe contains the formula for the drug. Yes, it's a recipe book for new drugs that haven't been released to the public yet. If sold to a pharmaceutical company, I'm sure it would fetch a substantial price. Why is something like that a price in the contest? Monsieur Master is the only heir to the chairman of the Master Group. Master Group? The name sounds familiar. There, a pharmaceutical company for dealing a wide range of products. Ah, they become big news recently with the release of Cold Killer X. They just fucking tied everything together, didn't they? They often use the Cold Killer product products, but I've never once seen you with a cold. I would like to hear more about the Master Group. Did Mr. Master not want to follow in his parents' footsteps? Monsieur Master wanted to bring joy to people with his desserts. His parents also wanted him to become a great pa pastry chef and supported him. When his parents died, the recipe book was left to him as his inheritance. Why would he give away a memento of, of his parents as a prize in the contest? There were always people who were after it, something which troubled Monsieur Master. But just giving away the memento would have been dis disrespectful to his parents. So he decided to pass it over to someone he acknowledged. And the members of the master group approved that. Information about new drugs being passed on to outsiders. Of course they objected. That's why Felicia participated in the contest. On the order of the master group, she was requested to win the comp championship. You knew Delicia's true identity from the start. Yes. In order for her to win, I told her Monsieur Master's tastes and preferences. Why did you help her? I helped her. In order to protect Monsieur Master and the Master Group. If the drug recipes were given to another company, he would, re he would be reprimanded by the board. I wanted to return the recipes to the company in a way that Monsieur Master would accept. So it was due to Miss Hall's help that Delicia was able to reach the finals. Speaking of which, Mr. Dover wasn't a pastry chef either. I'm sh he sure did well to make it to the finals considering he's just a sculptor. Yes, for him to be able to make such fine desserts despite being a sculptor. From the sherbet sculptures he made for the finals, it's clear to see he has great talent, but... Could he really have made that by himself? That is all I know. Is there anything else I can do to help? You saved Mr. Master. She's trying to help as much as he can. Maybe perhaps have some more of that tea from yesterday, please, Mr. Hall Miss Hall. I'm sure that would help us get on with the investigation. Yeah, I'd like some of Kate's tea too. Right, understood. I'll be big I'll be back in a minute. Kate looks a bit better now. gathered information about all the contestants. And yet, we still haven't heard Gustavia's side of the story. That reminds me, why did you enter Mr. Dover's room, Mr. Gustavia? Oh, well, that was because... Silence, Ignoramus. You are not to give that... Or Ignoramus. It's, it's, it's one of them, I don't remember which one. Give that attorney the tiniest hint of information. What exactly was he doing in Mr. Dover's room? And moreover, 
Something is odd about his semifinals entry. Pastry chef bad at design, and a sculptor skilled only at designing. It would have been extremely difficult for either of them to win the contest alone. Could it be that Ms. Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover's connection is... Detective Bad, we have a reason to suspect the actions of Dane Gustavia. Yeah, it is imperative that we find a way to contact him at once. Oh, this conversation is most interesting. However, I cannot allow you to speak with Mr. Gustavia. On karma. I have already continue, conducted my interrogation of, of him. It is not necessary for him to speak any further, especially to a mere defense attorney. But I will answer your questions in that fool's place. It seems Von Karma intends to prevent me from meeting Gustavia in person. I understand. In that case, I have but one thing to ask you. Yes? I would like to know the relationship between Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover. Gustavia and Dover's relationship. It's obvious the only relationship they had was what they... Was that they happened to, to participate in the same contest. Does it? <laughs> That's it? Hmm. There is nothing more to say. What? How are we supposed to understand anything from so little? If we want from Karma to divulge the truth, we have no choice but to present evidence. It's all too obvious that he's hiding something. Second statement. Okay, cool. Present semi final desserts. There we go. Oh, ow. Prosecutor von Karma, I'd like you to look at these desserts. The desserts were made for the contestants' semi finals. Contests' semi finals, I mean. Don't you think these two have a particularly impressive design? Hmm. Just what are you getting at? These two desserts were made by Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover. I wouldn't exactly call Mr. Gustavia's design skills praiseworthy. And yet, for the semi-finals, he was able to produce something comparable to Mr. Dover's. Let me take a look at them again, actually. They couldn't have made something, like, a little less... ...conspicuous? Like, something more inconspicuous? Like, they went for the same colors, they went for, like... Same flowers. Exact same flowers, actually. Oh, well. He was able to produce something comparable to Mr. Dover's. Furthermore, these two desserts have the exact same flavor. What are you trying to say? I'm saying it's possible they collaborated with each other on their entries. Prosecutor von Karma, please take a closer look at their desserts. At first glance, they may look completely different. But even though the designs are different, it's clear they were made from the same materials. Is that so? The same flavor and, com and composition it's impossible to dismiss their similarity as coincidence. The very existence of these two desserts points to a link between Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover. Hmm. Since you already know this much, I'll tell you the truth. Did Fun Karma know about their collaboration? However, what I am about to say is not going to help your case at all. Let me be the judge of that bitch. you want to know about Gustavia and Dover's connection so badly, I'll tell you. Last night, when I interrogated Gustavia, he told me about his connection with Dover. Until the day before the finals, they worked on their desserts together. You knew about their co cooperation all this time, didn't you? Why would you conceal the truth? 
I would appreciate it if you didn't sully my reputation. Until I explain my points in court, I avoid giving away unnecessary details. I was merely saving your, your time. How can he act like this and, and keep the truth from us? His concealment of the truth is something I simply cannot ignore. Third statement, okay. The Licia statement, where is that? Here. This many, I mean. Oh, the day before, okay, I get it. You say that Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover did not collaborate during the finals. That's strange. Delicia testified that Dover's sherbet was most delicious. Being a novice chef, chef, I, I doubt he'd, he could have done all that by himself. Perhaps the two of them cooperated during the finals as well. I sometimes pronounce like CH words like rather... Well, my... Oh my god. Hold on, let me just double check. No, it should be fine. It just says that like, there are some Twitch is currently experiencing issues with going live. That was like 15 minutes ago or so. Okay, anyways, it's probably fine because my, uh, I always have my stream open here just so I know if like something happens to the stream. I think that's a good thing. I'm considering like the... Yeah, 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 I'm moving, I'm moving. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyways. Oh my god. Perhaps the two of them cooperated during the finals as well. Uh, I was talking about something else. I don't remember what, what it was though. Defense attorney. How many times do I have to tell you? Delicia Scones' subjective opinion cannot be admitted as evidence. There is still a chance that a novice chef could make something tasty. Oh, that, that was it. That was it. I sometimes mess up CH sounds as, or CH words. Because <laughs> for some reason I've gotten used to like reading Japanese and CH always has a ch sound so it, it sometimes confuses me so that's why I sometimes say chef but I know it's chef really but I don't really re realize like that I'm saying it as chef until like after I said it anyways whatever <laughs> so a chance that novice chef could make something tasty my wife is an amateur yet her cooking rivals that of world-class chefs. So he does have a wife. Interesting. He mentions a wife. How is that not a subjective opinion? Moreover, even if you take this pharmacist's testimony to be true, it changes nothing. She also mentioned that a part of her sherbet was very salty. Which means you can hardly call this his entry for the finals perfect. Well, obviously he does have a he does have a wife. Yes, he has Francisca. But like, what is the family situation? I need to fucking read up on this bullshit. <laughs> no. What? No more objections. Is there no way I can prove their collaboration? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something that's been bugging me. Hmm. What is it? The desserts Mr. Dover made for the, for the finals would have taken a long time to make, right? Indeed. They were frozen sculptures, after all. How would he have had the time to sculpt it after it was frozen? Let alone help Mr. Gustavia with his, with his design as well. The way I see it, just waiting for the sherbet to freeze would have used up all of his time. Hmm, just how was he able to make those sherbet sculptures? 
Raymond, you may have a promising future after all. Thanks to you, I have noticed one more possibility. That's right, Mr. Dover Sherbet needed time to freeze properly. And the contest's time limit would not have been enough. The method Mr. Dover used to make his sherbet within the time limit was... He was prepared in advance. If the sherbet was prepared in advance, all he'd need to do, to do was sculpt it. You, just what are you mumbling about? Please excuse me, I finally realized. Your earlier view was correct. Huh? Mr. Edgeworth! What are you doing? Oh, so you're finally admitting defeat. No, all I am admitting to is the truth of one of your statements. Dover and Gustavia's collaboration lasted only until the day before the finals. It is exactly as you said. They only cooperated until the day before the finals. The sculptures in Mr. Dover's room were all made out of sherbet. Such an amount would most likely need to be left overnight to freeze. Which means Mr. Gustavia prepared Mr. Dover's sherbet in advance the day before. <laughs> That's right. So you realize Gustavia's cooperation ended the day before the finals. Then why did Mr. Dover not help Mr. Gustavia in return? The views of the dead are of, are of no concern to me. If you aren't going to answer that, I'll need to get in touch with Mr. Gustavia himself. Or was your interrogation not quite as thorough as you claim? You ingrate. You dare mock me? That was not my intention, but I do have a problem with your attitude. I want you to give us a clear reason why we can't speak to Mr. Gustavia in person. Hmm, a clear reason. Gustavia and Dover's collaboration has no bearing on this case. You claim their collaboration is irrelevant. If Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover's relationship had turned sour, it could serve as a motive for murder. You're saying that Gustavia and Dover's collaboration was linked to the motive for the murder. If that were the case, why did he not conceal it? After all, we found out about his this collaboration from Gustavia himself. If you really are a lawyer, show us evidence that gives us reason to suspect Gustavia. Only one of Mr. Gustavia's actions has been suspicious. So far. Doubtless, Von Karma already knows of this fact. This could be a trap by Von Karma. Hmm. <laughs> What's wrong, defense attorney? Not going to answer? But I mustn't back down now. Mr. Gustavia sneaked into Mr. Dover's room. His reasons for this are currently unclear. But the very fact he secretly entered the victim's room is reason enough to suspect him. If that's the extent of it, I can dispel those doubts. I knew it. Was it a trap after all? I was intending to save this for the courtroom, but I'll make a special exception. We wouldn't want to prolong the trial with unnecessary information, would we? Take a look at this. This is... This is a photo of Gustavia and Dover. And their sons. Gustavia entered Dover's room in order to steal this photo. To steal the photo? It seems their sons attended the same elementary school. Apparently, he thought that he'd be suspected if people found out he and Dover were acquainted. Wait, hold on. Let me take a look at this again. Oh, they did change the sign. Interesting. Yes, just like you're doing now. Mm -hmm. There's nothing suspicious about Gustavia's actions. No further room for argument. No! still adamant on not letting us meet with Mr. Gustavia. I have an investigation to return to. I have no more time to waste on the likes of you. Curse that karma, calling us a waste of time. What should we do, Mr. Edgeworth? At this rate, I suggest Jeff will be... 
and Karma is busy. Of course. Why would he be busy? Both the body and murder weapon have been found, and he already has his suspect. The police should have more than enough evidence to prove Mr. Master's guilt. If that's the case, then why is Von Karma still investigating the crime scene? Mr. Edgeworth, is there something wrong? It seems I have been overlooking a matter of vital importance. Considering that he already has the evidence he needs to convict Mr. Master, I feel that Von Karma isn't as composed as he should be. He didn't even tell Detective Bad the full results of the investigation. Yeah. And Karma's a bit on edge at the moment. He still hasn't received the autopsy report. Furthermore, something vanished from the crime scene. And we still don't know why. Detective Bat, please look at the crime scene carefully once more. The bloodstain that should have remained at the crime scene has disappeared. Definitely didn't get any reports about the bloodstain being cleaned up. But the strangest thing we found wasn't in Mr. Master's room at all. It's a match. The blood in the fountain. It's Dover's. Mr. Dover's blood vanished from Mr. Master's room. And somehow found its way into the fountain. What, is it, what, what does this mean? Although the victim's blood wasn't found in Mr. Master's room, it was detected in the wa water fountain. There would be no need for the killer to conceal the bloodstains after the body was found. It's unnatural that only the bloodstains that were found with the body with the body disappeared. Unless the body was moved, the blood would have still remained on the chocolate. And tell me, someone removed the body? And then erase the bloodstains. Was the body removed? Huh, okay. It's possible that the body was removed from the crime scene. And the autopsy report still has not arrived. Although we have a murder weapon at a suspect, we don't know much about the body. We've been investigating under the assumption that the body had been discovered. Perhaps this assumption was wrong from the very beginning. Why didn't Von Karma give Detective Bad the autopsy report? To understand that, yes, I must turn my logic around. My thinking shouldn't be why is Von Karma hiding information about the body, but rather, what if Von Karma doesn't even have the information to begin with? What happens if I think of it like that? It's possible that the body was removed by the police for aut autopsy. It was moved and hidden by the real killer. Mr. Edgeworth! I've heard many dark rumors surrounding Hong Karma. He's a prosecutor who forges evidence, fabricates testimonies, and makes backroom deals. Yeah, I've heard of that too. But what does that have to do with this? I try to avoid judging others based on rumors. And I didn't let those rumors influence my opinion on Hong Karma until today. It seems he is a man who would distort the truth. Distort the truth? You don't mean... forgery? I do. And I can't allow him to get away with this. I must return to the prosecutor's office for now. Not a word to that attorney. Roger! <laughs> What do you want, defense attorney? I want to know the truth that you've been hiding. Fool, are you trying to mislead the police's investigation again? If you interfere with the investigation anymore, I'll be forced to reprimand you myself. Objection. Police! No, my objection is with you! What? Isn't it a prosecutor's job to ensure justice for criminals? 
Hmm. What are you saying? I have no time to debate the job of a prosecutor with you. However, I will tell you one thing. My job is to ensure all those I prosecute to ensure all those I prosecute are found guilty. Before the perfect proof, there can be no room for doubt. And to find that perfect proof, you would even stoop to forgery. Ha! <laughs> I was wondering what you were going on about. You intend to accuse me of forgery, don't you? Yes. And it's for that reason you did not allow Detective Bad to investigate. What do you mean? The real reason Detective Bad wasn't investigating was not so he couldn't keep an eye on us. He could keep an eye on us. It was to hide the fact you never found the body. What? He never found the body? Critness, you will cease with, with these ludicrous accusations. I will not tolerate any further insults. In that case, let us verify the body. If you do, we will have evidence that shows whether I am right or not. <laughs> the burden of proof falls on you, defense attorney. I have no reason to comply with your baseless conjecture. You must have noticed it too, the lack of bloodstains at the crime scene. So why did the blood vanish? And more importantly, where did it go? Where did it come from, Cotton Eye Joe? Foolishness. Why would anyone erase just the blood in the chest that contained the body? Yes, that's exactly right. If the body had been found there, the disappearing bloodstains would have no meaning at all. However, what if the body was already gone? To erase the traces of the body being there, one would have to get rid of the bloodstains as well. I make such a fuss over these those bloodstains. Seems like a trivial detail to me. Or, are you saying that you could show me where those bloodstains went? In court, everything must be said with evidence. Isn't that right, Von Karma? In that case, I'll show you the evidence supporting my claim. Which piece of evidence shows where the blood went? Um. There were traces of the victim's blood found in the fountain. Traces of Mr. Master's chocolate were also found in this very fountain. In other words, the blood was washed down the stream, which then flowed into the fountain. All of this points to only one possibility. After the body was removed, Someone erased the bloodstains. <laughs> On Karma, where was the body really found? If you really found the body, you should be you should be able to answer. You? How? How do you know this information? How do you know the results of the water composition test of the on the fountain? Because I allowed them to investigate. Bad. Always thought in my side. From here on out, I will not allow you to associate any further with this case. <laughs> it's not like you were letting me do much anyway. Karma, you still haven't answered my question. Or are you admitting to the fact that you didn't find the body after all? You say I never found the body. Where is your evidence? It's never going to confess. I have nothing further to say to you. Gregory Edgeworth. This matter will be decided in court. And see just how well your logic holds up there. From karma. I know your methods are wrong. I promise without fail. I will expose the truth you've hidden. Detective Bad, I'm sorry. It's because you let me investigate that. No, this was bound to happen. Sooner or later. This is also the first time I have been restricted in my investigation. Your theory that they never found the body sounds pretty close with Matt to the mark. That, I will make clear in court. <laughs> if there's anything I can do to help, you let me know. 
even though I am no longer in charge of this case. Then, though I'm very sorry about this, I have one more favor to ask of you. Hey, what are you guys whispering about? I want to know too! Huh, <laughs> this will be my trump card in court. The information I've gathered up until now should be enough to prove Mr. Master's innocence. But if all else fails, I'll have this ready. Your trump card. Heh <laughs> We'll see at the trial. Wow, I get to be at the trial too? Of course, you are my assistant after all. <laughs> I'll be an ace attorney too next year. On Karma will never be the two of us. Right. Although I hope to clear Mr. Master's name before you become a lawyer. If Unkarma is to be my opponent, he'll want the trial ended in a day. That's right. We have to save Master Jeff as fast as we can. After all, this is you we're talking about. I'm sure you'll beat Von Karma. Jeff Master, alone in a dark cell, arrested on false charges. I must expose Von Karma's lies if I am to save him. Sweet. Um. Uh, I'm just gonna go and grab something to eat real quick because I'm getting hungry again. So, yeah, just put on some music, I guess, until then. I'll be right back. There we go. Hmm. Hmm. Pears are so good. Especially like when they're like when when you've had them for a while and they just get like really juicy and just a lot of flavor. I love that so much. I also used to make like a, um, a shopping list for my mom. She's going out shopping tomorrow. So I'm just gonna do that while I eat this. <laughs>
Hmm. Nur ein Nü. First bread, french fries. <laughs> uh. Chicken milk. to hear my fucking awful eating habits. <laughs> Not, um, I have to be careful, especially with perishables, because I have a tendency to either forget things exist or just like not want them so, until like just one random day when I suddenly want it, maybe. So, I can't get milk because either I drink fucking two cartons in a day or I don't drink any milk like for a week, so it's just like safe to just like buy milk when i need it and uh, just leave it otherwise i have soda uh, what else do i need oh I want some chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm eating a pear. <laughs> and also writing a, a shopping list for my mom. <laughs> Is like your favorite state of pear <laughs> like like how do you prefer your pear to be like not ripe enough or not not quite ripe uh, ripe or like overripe yeah no ripeness that's what i meant
too mushy. I like mine really like juicy and just not like quite mushy like you can't really like squeeze it but like it's not like it's like an apple you know it's not hard like that but hmm. It's just the most like flavor in it at the time. Also, do you eat like every single part of the pear? <laughs> okay, nice. Hmm. Not the court. I eat everything except for like the stem. <laughs> and I mean everything. Mm. It actually just started by like pure laziness. Because I couldn't be bothered to fucking go and throw it away. I was like, nah, just eat it. <laughs> Thing is like the core the core is very edible in a pear i would say like compared to an apple considering they also have like those like giant seeds and it just doesn't taste good in a pear it was like ripe enough it's it's perfectly fine That's nice. Mm -mm. Mm. I gotta just clean my hands. <laughs> amazing film it and send it to me next time please <laughs> i'd love that okay huh fuck it i might just fucking sit until i'm fucking done with this too well depending on how long this part takes because we literally only have the end parts left there are three end parts so this is end part number one Back to present day. And that's all Uncle Ray knows about the IS-7 incident. So that's what happened in my father's last case. The truth of the IS-7 incident. Oh yeah, that's right. This is this is the case. Oh yeah. Oh wow. At the trial. In the end, when Karma defeated us. Huh? So you couldn't prove Mr. Master's innocence? We had gathered plenty of evidence to prove it. 
upon karma was even more despicable than we thought. He was a prosecutor who would do anything for his guilty verdict. That's right, and he really did use any means necessary. Because of this, that trial dragged on for about a year until it finally reached a conclusion. I'll never forget that fateful day, when the judgment was passed down the 28th of December. It's April now, so it's been a little over 17 years. All time flies. The 28th of December, 17 years ago. I was watching from the gallery that day. For the trial, your old man noticed that Mr. Master was acting strangely. He was at the breaking point, both mentally and physically. He wanted to be found guilty. No, Mr. Master didn't fake a confession, did he? Yeah. And that was what more, that, that was when, that was what Von Karma was aiming for from the start. When the old man tried to expose the fact that the body had not been found, Von Karma used the power of his police cronies to, to quash that argument. He even went as far as to prepare a fake autopsy report. Then. He made Mr. Master give a false testimony and confess to being an accomplice. Mr. Master's confession, the situation quickly became dire. But your old man had a trump card up his sleeve. Was that the trump card he was talking to Detective Bat about? Yeah, the trump card was to be our insurance in case Mr. Master confessed. He had asked Detective Bad to have Mr. Master's interrogation recorded. Detective Bad? You wanted to know the truth too, huh? After he was dropped from the investigation, he never stopped caring about the case. Even when he was involved with other large cases. He really was the definition of a true detective. The defense presented the recording, which proved that the confession was forced. Well, it seems the detective in charge of the initial investigation and, in and interrogation, Rip Laser, took all of the blame and was charged and dismissed. Still, at the trial, your old man exposed Von Karma's corruption and Von Karma received his first penalty from the, then, from the then chief prosecutor. The only penalty in his 40 years of prosecution. However, Mr. Master didn't want the trial to continue any longer. And the curtains closed on the trial that day with the verdict of, the, of guilty. The memory of that time is fuzzy, but I was also there, watching my father's final trial. I think his final regrets became my own. The old man wanted a retrial to prove Master's innocence, but he passed on before he could fulfill his wish. After getting entangled in another case. It breaks my heart even now. I didn't return home with him that day. And what's more, to blame myself for my own worthlessness. Uncle Ray put all of his hatred on you as a traitor for being from Karma's pupil. I'm about to fucking cry. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's natural you would hate me. After I became a prosecutor, I was able to get from Karma to show me the case file. Mr. Master was found guilty for the murder of Isaac Dover. Eh? That's not right. Wasn't Mr. Master found guilty of being an accomplice? But this case file says, guilty of murder. There shouldn't be anything unresolved in the case of cases handled by Manfred, Manfred von Karma. Wait, can I take a look at that file? It looks like the charges have been rewritten. What? Look at this. Jeffrey Master 39, creator of the dessert contest, the victim's body was found inside a search made by the suspect, set to arrest in jail. In jail, he was diagnosed with hypogusia. And was created. Uh, was treated by medicine. After his own confession, he was convinced, convicted as an accomplice to the murder. The charges: accomplice to murder. 
This is a copy of the original case file I received from the courts. Why would the charge be altered? This file was given to you by Von Karma, right? Maybe he just didn't want you to know the truth, since you're Gregory's son. He would have wanted to avoid another retrial before the statute of limitations ran out after all. So what I have come to believe, back then, had all been a lie. Oh my god! If you didn't know about it, just make sure you know it from now on. The statute of limitations has long expired, but the truth still sleeps right here. After your old man passed away, Uncle Ray took over as Mr. Master's defense attorney. Although from Karma also had another prosecutor take over the case. Perhaps he thought that since his opponent was a rookie, he didn't even need to turn up. In the end, the real killer was never found, and Mr. Master was found guilty. No! Is there nothing we can do even now? Since the killer was never found, he can't withdraw his confession. I found out after the trial that Mr. Master made a deal with Von Karma because Von Karma had threatened him. If you don't confess, Catherine Hall will be, ha will be held under the same charges. That's terrible! I don't think Mr. Master really thought that Kate was the killer, but to protect her, he faked the confession. Miles, on the day that Nightly Boy was killed, why do you think Uncle Ray was at the prison? Ha, ah, I see! You went to see Mr. Master, didn't you? I said I'd visit him every day. I couldn't keep that promise, but... I asked Katie Pie to look in on him for me when I couldn't. Through rain or snow, she went. Every single day, without fail. But nothing has changed, and Mr. Master still serves his punishment. That's so sad! Isn't there anything we can do? That's why I came here. Because I knew those ice sculptures would be on display here today. So what are you going to do, Miles? I'm a prosecutor. My position is different from you and my father. Miles. But moving past my position, and what I want is Miles Edgeworth, is to know the truth of these two cases. It is for that reason that I am here. <laughs> you really are your father's son. Well then, if that's what you've decided, I'll support you all the way. And I better leave the IS-7 documents and evidence with you then. Alright, here are the documents. By the way, the parts in orange are Uncle Ray's old notes. Did you regurgitate them or something? Thank you. And now, here's the IS-7 evidence. There's a lot, so make sure to look it over while you investigate. Receives a lot. <laughs> hmm, right. I'll check through it later. Anyway, there are so many strange things about this case. Didn't you eat your notes? Yeah, I was like, don't tell me you regurgitate them. <laughs> Ew. Indeed. Those involved in the case 18 years ago have reunited, and another incident occurs. Replicas of the statue from 18 years ago were displayed in the Winter Palace. And... Poison gas was released in the Autumn Palace, which had been disguised as the Winter Palace. The two chemicals in the Pisces case. Oh, wait. I'm trying to... There you go, my stream. There you go. Normalium and Fatalium were mixed, causing an outbreak of poison gas. He isn't exactly wearing cargo pants. No, don't make me imagine Edgeworth in cargo pants. What have you done? The victim of the poison gas was Dean Gustavia, a person involved in the IS 7 incident. Because he was unconscious, he received treatment in the Zodiac Art Gallery's infirmary. 
Finally, the dead body found floating in the fountain. And once again, the ice sculptures have melted. There are deep connections between the two cases. It's possible there are still some clues left from 18 years ago. Right, let's get started! Just one second. Don't tell me you've forgotten about me. Sorry, baby. I kind of did. I kind of did. <laughs> Didn't I tell you that I'm the one in charge of this case? Prosecutor Edgeworth, if you intend to continue disrupting it's Sebastian's investigation, the word guilty will be added to your PIC report. What does she mean, guilty? Oh yeah, he was on this case. I find it kind of fascinating that you don't hate him, actually. He is kind of annoying, but like he's just doing his best, you know. <laughs> now Justine, on the other hand. God, you can't get any more fucking annoying. It's like, fucking give me old bag instead. I don't care. Yes, I said it. <laughs> give me old bag. Please allow me to assist in your investigation as before. I appreciate your proposal, but I'm afraid I must overrule it. That was fast. Even though we're short on hands to identify the victim right now. It's only a matter of time until we figure it out. <laughs> give me old beggar, give me death. <laughs> In that case, I shall take that load off your shoulders at once. Regarding the identity of the unidentified body, one person comes to mind. Really? Then tell us. Hmm. Very well. It's not just the sculptures that have made a comeback from the incident 18 years ago. The body in the fountain is... It's likely that the identity of the body is the victim of the murder that occurred here 18 years ago. Isaac Dober. <laughs> it's Isaac's body! Hey, who's that? I've never heard of him! Mr. Isaac Dover, a truly great sculptor. Like an overeager but lost puppy, yeah, pretty much. He was better known as Pierre Roquet. The sculptures on display here in the museum are all his creations, hold on. Meh. Ah, so in other words, that sculpture was the best. Somehow, I feel a strong kinship to him. Sure you do. And he was the victim in the IS-7 incident. She knew about the IS-7 incident. Prosecutor Edgeworth, the IS-7 incident occurred 18 years ago. And what's more, the police reported the removal of the body. That's what's on the record, and I wonder if that really is the truth. What are you saying? The defense attorney in the IS-7 incident claimed that the body was never found. Not that the prosecution would ever admit to such a thing. Hello? Hey, really? Is something wrong, Sebastian? No, it's just they said that they know who the victim is. It's just as that prosecutor says. It's Dover. No, it can't be. Ma'am, you've been lied to. Hmm. I would see my father's suspicions were correct. What is it, Judge Courtney? Have you finally realized that I'm much more helpful than Mr. DeBest? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I hate this fucking mic. I mean, I don't hate the mic, but I hate the filter I have to put on the mic because if not, it's gonna pick up the fucking- my computer. But it doesn't pick up my laughter, and that's annoying. Ugh. Throwing shade at you. I mean, I guess what I could try to do is bit of... No, it's not there. Where was it again? Down here. Filters. I mean, there is this one, I guess, but, uh... I don't know. It makes me sound kind of, like, more robotic. 
doesn't it? I mean, I can't fucking tell right now because I can hear myself. But uh, what do you what do you think of this one? Like, do you even hear like any difference at all? <laughs> I think that's more like the uh, question I should be asking. La 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 la. Ba, ba. Slightly more something? What, what does that mean? Can I quite describe? Okay, I see. <laughs> I don't know if it catches my... Uh, is, it, is it better or worse though? Oh, like your slightly bigger room. Okay, so there's a bit more like reverb, I guess. What if we, we can up the suppression a bit more? Or is that down? No, that's up. That's down. This is up. No. La 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 la. <laughs> yes, I'm really doing this in the middle of a fucking chapter. I'm sorry. Um... It just bothers me that it won't catch my, my laughter for some reason. I don't know why. It's like, if like, the sound like exceeds like a certain volume, it just won't pick it up for some reason. It's, it's a... Oh, okay, I see. You can hear any difference. I can still suppress it. Even more. <laughs> Huh. So it's good, but yeah, now I turn it down even more. It seems to be making more noise. Sometimes. Because I'm like looking at my like mic bar. And, uh, yeah. Fuck it, I'll just use the one I had, I guess. Because this one has higher quality. What does this mean? I have no idea what this means, by the way. I tried something. I don't know what that does or how that sounds. I can test that out later. Hide that. There we go. Okay. Back to the game. Hey! You! Are you trying to steal the best position for yourself? I'm doing no such thing. I just want to know the truth. And for that to happen, we need to cooperate, no? The truth is none of your concern. Objection. I don't think that's true, Courtney Pie. You again. Uncle Ray assisted the defense attorney involved in the IS-7 incident. The one who claimed that Mr. Dober's body was never found. The prosecution denied it at the time, but now the body has been discovered here. In other words... The IS-7 investigation was unjust. And isn't it the duty of the PIC to investigate corrupt prosecutors? Uh -huh. Then, wouldn't you want to cooperate with those who were involved in the case? Unless you have an ulterior motive. Now that I think about it, Judge Courtney knew about the IS-7 incident. So it would seem she really is here because of the PIC. Even if you're related to the incident, I don't see how Prosecutor Edgeworth is. He is the son of the attorney in that case, and a prosecutor taught by Von Karma himself. And what's more, he was in the audience at the IS-7 trial. I'm sure there are many points he can enlighten us on. <laughs> I get fucking wrecked, Beach! Very well, I will allow you to cooperate. However, your investigation must not hinder the other investigators. The Winter Palace is currently being investigated, but the fountain patio is open to you. That's my Courtney Pie. Now we're talking. As thanks, I will allow you to have a hug with Uncle Ray. Overruled! If I feel your cooperation isn't needed, I will have to ask you to leave. Understood. Ah, isn't that great, Miles? Now we can start investigating. You really helped us there. <laughs> Uncle Ray did it all for himself. Hmm. Alright, Uncle Ray is going to investigate too. So let me know if you figure something out. Got it.
Right then, right then. Okay, let's begin the investigation. Okay, let's do this. We still don't know where Mr. Dover's body and the Normalium were hidden. We don't have enough information to go on. You're right. Our first priority is the Normalium. Well, Normalium is used in washing, washing detergents, paints, and the like. If I recall, it's a red liquid with a minty aroma. Well then, let's get looking for that Normalium! God, the audio tanked again. Oh, are you kidding me? Why does it keep doing this? I don't understand. Okay, that didn't fucking help. What about Z? Ah, yes. Music to my ears. That is cursed. <laughs> it really is. Okay, what about P? Oh no, that's the one that like changes the pitch, isn't it? Oh my god, literally no one none of them are good at all. Oh no. Oh no, this is bad. This is bad. Uh oh no. Oh no, that's awful. That's the best one. What's the best buffer size? Isn't there like a... Oh my god! I mean, yeah, it will, but like... I think actually this one was like the best one. I mean, none of them are good at all, but okay. On this service cart, Miss Hall has prepared her tea set. <laughs> According to the pamphlet, the museum is also famous for its tea. Oh my god, no, it's fucking awful. Fuck. Okay, well. Yes, it certainly had a flavorful, rich taste. Hmm, it seems this tea set was also made by Mr. Dover. I can't tell if this is like... If the sound is delayed, or what? Oh, so the tea set was made by the victim. Let's take a closer look. The sound makes it delayed. This is this tea set was made by Isaac Do Dover. Fancy stuff, huh? <clears throat> oh my god. Okay, I'd say this tea set is worth thousands of dollars. I on. Uh, best audio settings. It kind of stutters. Yeah. Apparently I can turn up hold on, wait. Proper size. We're just fucking write in a bunch of nines. Nine 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 nine. Nine
It is very much delayed. Okay, let's try this again, I guess. Hmm. Please be careful with it. Eh? This tea set is such a treasure. Please don't look so excited. I can fix the lag at least. If I recall correctly, Miss Hall was a huge fan of Mr. Dover. Okay, cool. Hey, Edgy! What is it? Be careful with that teapot! Why must I be warned by him of all people? Madame and Messieurs! Do you care for some tea? Miss Hall. Ah, Katie! No, I'm fine, thanks. Kay and Edgy, you guys can have some. Well, since you asked, we might as well take a short break. Certainly. Thanks for the tea. <laughs> oh god, no, that's so funny. Oh my god, hold on. Let me try. Um, what about that one? Oh, it's so tasty. What kind of tea is this, Mr. Edgeworth? It's Sulon tea. Known for its citrus aroma, citrus aroma. However, Miss Hall, is this the same tea you served us this morning? Yes, that's right. Was it not to your liking? No, it's not that. The tea we had this morning had a slightly different aroma. How strange! It is the same Sulan tea I served this morning. There shouldn't be anything different about it. What's wrong with you, Edgy? Quit nitpicking about nitpicking about the tea Katie so kindly prepared for you. Larry, what are you getting so upset about? I'm not upset? You're just being a rude jerk. And I told you to call me Larice. Sheesh! I'm not gonna talk to you anymore. It's like arguing with a child. Larice, I wonder what's wrong. I'd like to ask him that later myself. And, I also need to speak with Miss Hall. I don't have any evidence that shows she is the culprit, but... I dare say she is the one who set up the poison gas trap. Is this all I need to do on this table? I guess so. Hmm. This smell and this color. Don't tell me this is a puddle of tea. Huh. There's a piece of pottery in the middle of the puddle. <gasps> oh my god. I wonder what broke. I don't actually think it's the... It has to be the actual game itself that's... Okay, that didn't help.
I think I recognize the design. I should probably show this to that man and see what he has to say. Oh my god. How in the fucking flying fucking... This is fucking awful. I thought it was bad, but I, I honestly did not remember it was this bad. Oh no, did it crash? No, no, it fucking crashed! Are you kidding me? Well, at the very least, I just started this chapter. So I can literally just skip to that part. <laughs> That's fucking dumb. Anyways. Let's just start over, I guess. Not a big deal. It's a bit annoying, I guess. Hold on. I believe I have like a speed up button too. The audio broke the game. No, I was trying to do like some, some stuff. Is this the one that I have to speed up? Yes, it is. So I can literally do this and I can speed up like double. There we go. <laughs> oh my god, look at the speed run! <laughs> safe side. I'm gonna save here in case something fucks up again. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to suspend it, dumbass. Or maybe it does it from... Uh... Did it do it, like, automatically? Whatever, I think, maybe, whatever. Doesn't matter. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I already did this part too. There we go, and now we can go in. Investigate here. There we go. Smell in this color, it means polo tea. Okay, and then there's that thing. Yeah, the pottery shard. Miles, how's the investigation going? Well, little by little, I'm beginning to see the entire truth behind this case. Well, that's good to hear. Uncle Ray had better not fall behind, either. And this case seems to have a lot in common with the case 18 years ago. I agree, the melted ice in the Winter Palace and the body of the victim from 18 years ago. 
I wonder why nobody ever noticed the body was missing after all this time. The only family Mr. Dover had was a young son. His son, and Mr. Gustavia's son, who attended the same elementary school. After the case, they both went missing. What? And they haven't been found yet? I haven't heard any news about Mr. Gustavia's son being found. But as for Mr. Dover's son, he was found and his inheritance was delivered to him. And because of that, Mr. Dover never had a proper funeral. That way, they were able to make it look like the body had been in police custody. The autopsy report had also been forged, so nobody but the defendants ever found out. Oh, karma. You would go that far. Anyways, I need to talk to Larry, apparently. Maurice, where are you at, bitch? There you are. Larry, tell me what you're hiding. You two, stop glaring at each other like that. I'm not glaring, Kay. I'm just using my artist's perspective. Edgy's the one who's glaring. Then, if you know what's good for you, you will tell me what you're hiding right now. No way, dude! Didn't I say that I'm not talking to you anymore? Aren't you talking to me right now? From now on! From now on, I'm definitely not talking to you anymore. Hmm. I'm not going to get anywhere like this. Looks like I'll have to force it out of him. Larry, take a look at this. Uh, what's that? Larry, I've got a feeling that what you're hiding is related to the tea and this pottery shard. Uh, uh. Well, if you're not going to talk to me, I can always hand this shard over to Judge Courtney. Wait! I'm, I'm trying to keep a clean image for Justy! I don't want her to see how I've dirtied myself! I can't imagine what part of you can be considered clean, but... If you don't want her to declare you guilty, I suggest you speak truthfully now. I... I got it! I'll tell you! There we go, thank you. Was that so hard? Larry, it's time you confess to what you've done. Uh, how can you be so cruel to your best friend? Hmm. The same way you can be so dishonest to your best friend. Well, you can stop glaring at me! I promise to tell the truth this time for sure! So he didn't deny that they're best friends. That's cute. I... I just thought I'd pour some... Justy some tea, but my hand kind of slipped a bit and it broke. I accidentally broke the crazy expensive teapot! The butt strike kisses again. Why am I not surprised? Oh boy, you've really done it this time, Larice. What should I do, Edgy? I... I... Katie will hate me! Crying to me about it won't solve anything. First, you should apologize to Miss Hall. Fucking Dogisa! <laughs> Is that so? My teapot was. Katie, I'm so sorry! I don't have any money, but I'll draw as many portraits of you as you like! Please kindly raise your head, monsieur. It is I who should apologize. I didn't notice the broken shards. It's dangerous, so I'll tidy up the broken pieces. Allow me to take this piece from you as well. Wasn't this tea set one of Isaac Dover's works? I heard that it was very important to you. Yes, but there's no use crying over spilled tea. Besides, I still have another one of these, those teapots left. Is she not as attached to Dover's works as she used to be? Katie, you're so kind. Oh. That other teapot you were talking about, is it the one in the cart? Yes. Hmm? Truth is, when I was trying to hide the broken shards, I looked under that cart. And I found a teapot that looked exactly the same, so I switched them. R really? Yeah, everything is cool now. I took great care to make sure no one would break that pot. You. Don't brag about that when you were the one who broke it in the first place. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't mind. Thank you for your consideration. Hey, gee, Katie is a really nice lady, isn't she? You should reflect on how you cause trouble for people like her. Okay, when I make it big as an artist, I'll donate paintings. In fact, 
I'll even become... I'll, be, I'll even welcome you as my own personal model. I think it'd be better if you just stopped causing trouble. I hope you haven't done anything else. I haven't! I just stood around sketching beauties! Sketching beauties. Hmm, if you're interested, I can let you take a peek. I guess even Mr. Edgeworth is interested in beauties. It's not like that. I just thought it might be another one of his strange paintings. How dare you! I'm very confident in my work this time. Ooh, I want to see too! Well, I'm glad you're so honest about it, Kay. I'll get it ready, so come check it out later. I guess I'll have him show it to me later. Like, how about now? How about that sketch you mentioned just now? What? If you wanted to see my art, you should have been honest about it from the start. Look, here it is. What is this? I already told you, it's a sketch of beauties. But just to be clear, the beauties only refers to Justy and Katie. That other plump lady has nothing to do with that. Then why did you draw her on the same page? Well, I was taking a break from my still life painting when those beauties caught my eye. I guess I just drew them on the same page without thinking. So you're saying that the pictures on this page were each drawn separately? Huh? Oh well, yeah, I may have drawn them at different times. By the way, there's a drawing of a beautiful little Miss Kay on another page. Wow, beautiful, huh? <laughs> Thanks! Larry, you drew this exactly as you saw it, correct? Well, yeah, even I can't draw what I can't see. I recreated the scene perfectly. Even the delicate shades. Delicate shades, huh? Hmm. Okay, but like, since when did he actually become, like, decent at art? I don't want to admit it, but this picture might be of help to the investigation. The contents of this sketch and the service card in the fountain paid patio. It seems there is a contradiction between the two. I'll need to expose this contradiction using my powers of deduction. Could I borrow this sketch for a while? Sure, I could even sign it for you if you like. You know what? I never even considered that he drew those. <laughs> I just considered like they were printed out or something. Did he now? Wow. Sure, I could even sign it for you if you like. I think I'll pass. Okay. Larry, there's something I want to ask you ask you about your sketch. Huh? You want a lecture on sketching from the famed Professor Professor Loris? Loris, do you? No, Loris. <laughs> I just need to ask you something. The tablecloth in your sketch, are you sure it was light blue? Yeah, my eyes never fail me. But the one on the service card here is white, isn't it? Dude, you're always so busy thinking with just your head. Now you missed the obvious. What's with that look on your face? When I drew that painting, I was using the cart with a tea set on it, remember? Because I was tidying up the broken pottery shards. That's not something to be proud of. And right then, Katie came out of the Winter Palace. I had to hurry and hide the broken teapot so that she wouldn't notice it. You just say, Miss Hall came out of the Winter Palace. That's right. This time, she was pushing another service cart. And the tablecloth was, cloth was light blue, just like how I drew it. Interesting. 
And what did she do with that service cart? Meets me. She went into the summer palace with it, so I don't know. And when she came out, she was pushing the lift trolley. The lift trolley? And when I called out to her, she was so surprised that she just left it there. She's so cute when she's shy. A second service cart. And the lift trolley. Maybe there were two tea sets along with the two service carts. We'll have to verify it with Miss Hall. Different tea aroma when with the pots were switched. Maybe the reason why the Sulan tea smelled different was because the pots had been switched. Eh, really? The taste of the tea itself did not actually change after all. Let's go ask Miss Hall about it in more detail. Miss Hall. Was the reason why the Sulan tea smelled different because the pots were switched? Yes. That's certainly possible. It had a fresh minty aroma, not unlike that of... Yuva tea. Huh. I remember now. I prepared some mint tea yesterday. I'm sure that the aroma just happened to remain in the teapot. Is that really all there is to it? A minty aroma was emanating from the pot Larry had, had replaced. Miss Hall said the aroma was left over from, when from the mint tea she prepared yesterday. Indeed. She seemed less surprised to find out that Larry broke the teapot, and more surprised by the fact that the pots had been switched. That's right! Normally, it would have been the reverse. A broken teapot is much more shocking. She was probably trying to hide this teapot. Hide the pot? <laughs> <laughs> nope, it still does not pick up those sounds. Well, I tried. <laughs> hide the pot? Huh? Would never. One of the characteristics of normalium is a minty aroma. There is a possibility that she was hiding normalium inside this teapot. What? Inside the pot? It is only a possibility for now, but it's one worth investigating. Hiding your pot? Mr. DeBest, I assume you haven't found the normalium yet. Huh? Uh, oh! I've heard that the entire art museum searched, but I haven't received any reports yet. And what about you? Do you have any ideas? Only one. I knew it. Nobody but me would be able to find it. Wait, what? You have an idea where it is? Indeed. Th then tell me! It may have been in this teapot that Miss Hall had used. Ooh! This teapot is pretty nice. It would make the perfect present for the best prosecutor. It's not a present. It's an important piece of evidence. Oh, it's just evidence. Then I guess I'll have forensics take a look at it. <laughs> Sir, please. <laughs> Shoe Edgeworth! Is there something wrong with the teapot I used? This teapot has a minty aroma to it. It's the same aroma as one of the two chemicals used to create the poison gas. Monsieur Edgeworth, surely you don't mean... You suspect me of having set up the poison gas? I do. Setting up the poison gas trap in the Autumn Palace would have required some preparation. As the curator of this museum, you are the only one who could have prepared it in, av in advance. I wonder about that. Preparations for the opening of the museum took about a week, and I received help from both outsiders and Madame Delicia. I think there are people besides me who are also suspicious. Of course, Delicia is also under scrutiny. Furthermore, I don't even know how to create something like poison gas. Even if you found normalium in my teapot, there is no way I could have prepared the poison gas. Well then, I look forward to hearing the analysis of results of the teapot. Her excuse is that she doesn't know how to prepare the poison gas. I must find a way to shatter that excuse.
Miss Hall, where have you been until now? We're showing the remaining guests out and hand guests out and handing out complimentary gifts as an apology. Did you require my services? Yes, there are a few things I want to ask you about. If my suspicions are correct, she's the one who set up the poison gas trap. Is it true you keep two service cards on the premises? I yes Is there something wrong? Earlier, I was looking at one of the sketches from that so-called artist, and... I noticed that he had drawn the card with tablecloth light blue. L light blue? Are you sure you weren't mistaken, monsieur? I only ever use tablecloths that are pure white. That's true, the tablecloth here doesn't have a single spot on it. Yes, that's because I always change them immediately whenever they get dirty. And Larry really get their color wrong then. What were you doing when the sketch was drawn? At that time, I was just doing my job as usual. Then could you tell me exactly what that work entails? What were you doing when you were drawn when you were drawn in the sketch? From the looks of the drawing, it doesn't seem like you were transporting the tea set. This was when I was delivering chocolates to all the people in the investigation. Ah, how nice! Chocolates! I wish I could have got them too. There are still a few left, so please eat these then. I made them myself, though it's possible they might not suit your taste. Woohoo! <laughs> thank you so much! Hmm. Thank you. Perhaps it's because she had them in her pocket. But it looks like they've melted a bit. The sweet goodness! <laughs> I'm happy to hear you say that. These chocolates are a little misshapen, but I'm glad to get some sugar into my system. Although, they were a little too sweet for my taste. <laughs> That's the exact same thing that his father said 18 years ago. What the hell? How exactly did you prepare the melted sculptures from 18 years ago? My! So you know about what happened 18 years ago. He's just like his dad, he is. It's because 18 years ago, I photographed Monsieur Dover's sculptures. Using the photos as a base, I managed to create replicas. Replicas? The Zodiac sculptures had been an unfinished work, so I wanted to complete it somehow. Because I am the one who accidentally melted Monsieur Dover's sculptures. Could you tell me why the Autumn Palace resembles the Winter Palace so much? Well, my apologies. Did they really look so alike? I think I may have gotten some of the decorations mixed up. She is obviously lying. But I haven't gathered any evidence to prove that yet. It appears the body has already been recovered by the police. Why was the body of the victim from 18 years ago found floating in the fountain? I mean, wouldn't the body have gone all goopy after 18 years? I don't know if I would call it goopy. It certainly would have required a special method to preserve the body. Yeah, I wonder if such a method even exists. Hey, Mr. Forensics Guy! Any new information? Yes! Normalium and Fatalium have been detected in the fountain water. They must have flowed through the stream from the Autumn Plate Palace to the fountain. Aside from the chemicals, we also found high levels of sugar. We're working hard on investigating it. Sugar in the fountain water. What could have caused that? This is Edgeworth. It's Gumshoe, sir! It's something happened. Actually, right now, all the investigators but me have left the Winter Palace. So I can finally tell you what we found. It's not good for a detective to be leaking out information about the investigation. But... His, resor his resor resourcefulness has saved me many times these past few days. All of the sculptures in the Winter Palace have melted. There's still some liquid left in the cases, but... There's less in the Gemini case than, than in the Taurus case. There's still liquid in the cases. In the glass cases. Yes, sir. 
We just investigated the light blue liquid a moment ago. We only detected sugar in the Taurus case, but... For some reason, in the Gemini case, we detected three different substances. Three substances. They consisted of sugar, salt, and blood. Ah! Blood? Blood and salt were detected in the Gemini case. I wonder whose blood it could have been. I've asked the forensics to look into it, sir. Right, I leave it to you, detective. It reminds me, the forensics investigating the fountain patio contacted me. It seems the sugar found in the fountain matches that found in the light blue li liquid. Oh, that sounds like valuable information. Is that all the new information you have for me? Uh, now that you mention it, you found a rainbow light device in here too. The device was used to disguise the Autumn Palace. It seems the device was used in the IS-7 incident. That was used in the IS-7 incident is also connected to this one. I should listen to what the Lysia has to say about that. I have to go back to investigating now, sir. When we get the results of the blood tests, I'll let you know right away. Yes, thank you. Was that Gummy calling? That sure was a long call. Hmm. Thanks to him, we now have an important piece of information. In order to break Miss Hall's alibi, I'll need to talk to everyone involved in the IS-7 incident. Alicia, would you be willing to aid in the investigation? Yes, see, of course. Anything for Miley and KK. Kayfei. I'll listen to whatever you have to say. I was wondering if you could stop calling me Miley. And stop calling me Kefe. Yes, do please show me. B, that's out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No, I love it. I love it. Yes, 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 yes. You know what? Uh, I have the perfect way to fucking reveal this. Here we go. Miss Edgeworth. But once you zoom out, you realize there's something very <laughs> Oh my god, it's amazing. It looks so good though, like... My god! <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Holy crap. That's awesome. Now we can finally carry all that evidence! <laughs> I can't just change the name I've already decided on. Aww. Even if we ask her, she won't listen to what we have to say at all. Do you know anything about the decorations that are used in this museum? Specifically, the fluorescent cloths and a special device called the rainbow light device. Yes, see, of course I do. Because they are presents that I gave to Katie. As an apology for breaking the rules 18 years ago, I gave her four new rock salt lamps and the four fluorescent cloths I used in the contest. Wow, sounds nice. Fluorescent cloths and rock salt lamps. <laughs> Seems like only us girls can understand how wonderful they are. That's a cruel thing to say, Miss Delicious. I like them too, you know. B, that was back when Ray Ray was still a cute little boy. Back when Mr. Shields was a cute little boy? Hmm, I can't even imagine it. Are they the same decorations you saw 18 years ago? What the fuck is flying around in my room? I don't know. Probably. And the rock salt lamp, the cloth, and the rainbow light device, they all seem the same. More fluorescent cloths were used in the Autumn Palace. But I have the feeling I saw one more of the same cloth. It's true! Look, I've got the proof right here in my bag. What is she searching for? Not this. Not this either. Hmm. I remember seeing cloth like that recently. I'll show Delicia and have her confirm my suspicions.
Wasn't there a dirty rag in your bag that looked similar to this? Fee, I'm not going to give any information to someone who calls it a dirty rag. Then, would it be better if I called it a washcloth? Fee, wrong again. It's a fluorescent cloth. Ah, oopsie. That was supposed to be a secret. Please tell me all you know about this fluorescent cloth. Please tell me the reason why you hid this cloth. Oh, I guess I have no choice since the cat's out of the bag. I found this cloth floating in the fountain. And right after that, I was called to the Autumn Palace. So that's the moment Larry captured in his so-called sketch of beauties. At first, I thought one of the fluorescent cloths I'd given to Katie had washed away. But didn't you only give four fluorescent cloths as a present to this museum? There were four... There were four fluorescent cloths covering the sculptures in the Autumn Palace, right? So that, that's when I realized that this was the cloth that went missing 18 years ago. The poison gas broke out because someone had stolen my megatoxin X. So I thought the fluorescent cloth had also been used for the crime. I was afraid I'd been suspected. I'd be suspected, so I didn't say anything about it to anyone. I see. But I sure feel a lot bitter. Bitter? <laughs> Did you just it's a literal Australian? Sure. Bitter. After talking about it, stress isn't good for your figure after all. 18 years ago, the cloth that was wrapped around the body went missing. Who would have thought it would turn up in the fountain along with the body? I'd like to ask you something, since you're a pharmacist. Exactly how would one gain the knowledge required to set off the poison gas? Into <laughs> Australian for a moment. Well, that's basic knowledge for any pharmacist acquainted with Megatoxin X. It even says on the warning label, Danger, do not mix with Normalium. Then, is there another way for someone who isn't a pharmacist to obtain that information? Hmm, well... It might be possible if they've seen the angel's recipe. The recipe book that was the grand prize for the contest 18 years ago. Since it also contains the recipe to repair Megatoxin X. Okay, that's something strange to put in there, I guess. Does this moon, me, moon? Does this mean that you've also seen the contents of the angel's recipe? Yes, see, that's a given, of course. The pharmaceutical company I work for is the Master Grip. It's the company that makes the Cold Killer X medicine. Cold Killer X? The cold medicine that promises to kill colds good. After Jeffy got declared guilty, the company took back the recipe book. However, only a small group of elite pharmacists have been allowed to see it, though. So this woman is also part of that small group of elite pharmacists. Interesting. Talk to Ray. Ray, 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 Ray. Mr. Shields, can you could you tell me what kind of person Miss Hall is? Hmm? Miles, don't tell me. You're also interested in Katie. No. Well, all joking aside. All Uncle Ray can say is the Kate I know is a truly admirable woman. For 18 years, she has always wanted to remain here and wait for Master's return. However, she was driven out of the mansion by Master's relatives. What? She was driven out of the mansion? That's because Kate isn't related by blood to Mr. Master. With no family and her job taken from her. She could only live on with the song and dance that Mr. Master had taught her. Are you interested in a girl? No. <laughs> well, she's now retired as a world famous actress, though. Why did she retire? Because she had already saved up enough money to buy this mansion. It seems she even got back the angel's recipe that had been taken by the master group. Oh, really now? Interesting. This mansion, where she lived with Mr. Master, had been everything to her. She probably just wanted to take back everything that she lost. 
It seems that Mrs. Shields sympathizes with Miss Hall. You could also say that her actions have taken away everything Mr. Master had. Okay, now we go to logic. What Kate did contained in the book. The method used to set off the poison gas is explained in the Angel's recipe. And the current owner owner of the Angel's recipe is Miss Hall. Ha! Ah, so that means Indeed, it means that it is possible she knew how to set out the poison gas. With this, we can expose her lies for what they are. Hmm, this lift trolley has just been left here. I wonder if it was used recently to carry something heavy. The surface of the platform appears to be wet. Hmm. I remember seeing this lift trolley someplace before. You mean during the IS-7 incident? Uh, that's right, I remember now. It was in Dover's room. And if I remember correctly, it was used to transport the ice sculptures. A lift trolley has a feature that allows you to adjust the height and angle of the platform. With just one of these, a single person could have moved the could move the sculptures all by themselves. Oh, really now? Wow, how convenient! I want one too! Is there a lift trolley here? I guess that's something we'll need to think about. Yes, it could be related to the case. Sweet! Now all that's left is to wait for the result of the teapot. This one isn't that long either, what the fuck? <laughs> I have a report. We have detected traces of normalium from the teapot. You can't be serious! It's just like Mr. Edgeworth said! Darn it! Did Mr. Edgeworth take the title of the best for me again? Mr. De Best, it seems like you have an obsession about being the best. And when you're on a case, winning and losing is of no importance. What are you saying? Obviously, it's best to be the best at everything! I don't know! <laughs> if you can't understand that, then you have no business being a prosecutor. What? I... I... Please stop harassing Sebastian. Sebastian... A person of your caliber has no need to listen to such things. Uh, Justine! Yeah, you're right. Please leave this to me. Why don't you go and check on the vic victim's condition? Yeah, that's a great idea. I'll be right back then. All right, I'll be waiting. Judge Courtney is much more troublesome than Mr. DeBest. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself, my guy. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself, my god. Well then. I really like the voice I, I, I gave Courtney, though. I don't know why, I, I, I just really like it. I also like doing it. Mitz Curator, can you tell us why Normalium was discovered in the teapot? I was not aware that it was contained that it contained such a chemical. I suppose it may have been an ingredient from the from the detergent I had used. So you're saying that you did not put it in deliberately? No, of course not. There is no way for me to have known how to create the poison gas. Objection. Despite being a former actress, it seems you're not very good at lying. What do you mean? The angel's recipe is in your possession, and the method to create the poison gas is contained inside that recipe book. So you must have known how to create it. I'm surprised you knew about that. Miss Curator, is this true? It's true that information about the poison gas is contained in one of the recipes. However, just because I saw it does not mean I that I was responsible for the crime. Could you tell me... 
Could you tell me what set off the poison gas? It was caused by the victim hitting the lid of the glass case with the burner. I see. If he locked himself in that room of his own, own will and then set off the poison gas, wouldn't that suggest suicide? Though she intended to deny it until the bitter end. Furthermore, I wouldn't have been able to obtain a chemical like Megatoxin X. It may be true, you could have stolen it from someone else. That reminds me, I met up with Katie a week ago, and that night was when I realized that my Megatoxin X was gone. Katie, you couldn't have. Madame Belicia always carried her medicine bag around with her. Anyone could have stolen it. That's right, I don't have any proof that she was the one who stole it. Okay, can you tell us that what you're hiding? I know you're not the kind of person who would hurt someone without a reason. Monsieur Shields, you taught me as well. Setting a trap in one of the gallery's ex ex exhibits and then disguising the rooms. I just think it would have been impossible for anyone but the curator. That's not true. There are no guards or security cameras at this gallery. If any ill-intentioned person wanted to sneak into the gallery, it would have been an easy task for them. Then... Isn't it like an all-you-can-steal buffet in here? You have to be careful. You never know when a great thief should could appear. It doesn't sound like a joke when Kay says it. Actually, Miss Yugoslavia apparently entered the gallery before it opened. Well, I'm beat. Looks like Uncle Ray can't do anything to break down Kate's iron guard. Hmm, this might be a good time to use the technique your old man taught me. The technique... Your father taught you. This case is deeply connected to the one from 18 years ago. If we just pursue the present case, it may seem like there's a lot we don't understand. But if we try turning things around, there might be a hint in the case from the past. Thinking the other way around. My father do that too. For example, Let's consider the relationship between the past case and Kate. Miss Hall melted Mr. Dover's sherbet sculptures 18 years ago. Today, Mr. Dover's works are on display in this gallery. It can't be. She... I see. Now I know what to ask her. <laughs> That's good to hear. In that case, Uncle Ray will just watch over as you do your work. Miss Catherine Hall. Eighteen years ago, it seems that you melted Mr. Dover's sherbet sculptures. Yes, I was young and inexperienced, and I did something inexcusable. However, isn't that why you were able to open the Zodiac Art Gallery? I don't know what you mean. I don't understand either. Prosecutor Edgeworth, do you seek her testimony? Yes, I would like her to tell me about the Zodiac Art Gallery. I would like to know the reason you decided to open a gallery for Mr. Dover's artwork. If you insist that this is related to the case at hand, I will allow it. Miss Curator, your testimony if you please. Very well, if that will clear your suspicion about me. Now then, please testify about the Zodiac Art Gallery. Eighteen years after Monsieur Master was arrested, I was finally able to buy back this mansion. Then, in order to maintain it, I decided to manage it as an art gallery. I collected Pierre Roquet's works from all over the world. After all, it was my dream to open the Zodiac Art Gallery. It's wonderful that your dream has come true. What do you think, Prosecutor Edgeworth? Listen, I don't know why she's here. She's just here to be a pain in my ass. I don't believe there was anything strange about her testimony. Judge Courtney, I believe in the courtroom. It is standard to cross-examine the witness. Wouldn't you agree? It's a little too early to say that there are no contradictions. Hmm. Hmm. You speak like a defense attorney. Very well. Proceed as you please. What a plot twist it would be if just like at the end of this game, Edgeworth, Edgeworth would just switch his profession over to being becoming a defense lawyer. <laughs>
Wouldn't that be something? Anyway, just press the third. Pierre Roquet. That's Mr. Dover's alias, correct? Yes, it's a name he used when he worked as a sculptor in France. About collecting his works. How did you prepare the Taurus and Gemini sculptures? I heard that Mr. Dover passed away before he completed those two sculptures. I have the sculptures in the Winter Palace specially made based on the photos I took. Oh, could you tell us about that in more detail? After all, it was my dream to open the Sodi- Oh, I already did this. I prepared replicas of the sculptures in the Winter Palace based on the photos I took. There it is, liquid analysis. You really think that your excuses would continue to hold up. No matter how much you lie, you can't deny the composition of the sculptures. From the analysis results, it's quite clear that the sculptures in the Winter Palace are the sherbet sculptures Mr. Dover created. Oi, Miley, as a pharmacist, it's my turn to shine. What we call sugar actually comes in many different varieties and tastes. Even if the sculptures were replicas, it's nearly impossible to replicate the composition. I, I see. Thank you for the explanation. Well, I don't recall asking for one. That, Miss Hall, means you couldn't have melted the sherbet sculptures back then. You stole them and preserved them for 18 years. What? She preserved a sherbet for 18 whole years? Hmm, if you freeze it properly, it's not impossible. Silence, please. Miss Curator, what do you have to say? I can't believe you already uncovered so much. So you're admitting that you stole the sherbet sculptures? No, I cannot admit to such a thing. There isn't proof, any proof that I stole them after all. Also... I couldn't have stolen the sculptures 18 years ago. I don't think they would have been easy to steal without the police noticing. Hmm. Is that so? I don't know what you did 18 years ago. As such, how can I judge how difficult it would have been to steal them? It looks like you won't give up so easily. I don't intend on giving up until I learn the truth. I understand. Then I shall tell you what I did 18 years ago. On the day of the incident, I was waiting in the main building until the judging. During the judging, at Monsieur Master's request, I went to change the film and the camera. But before I could deliver the camera to him, I discovered Monsieur Dober's body. After Monsieur Gregory arrived, I prepared tea for everyone involved in the investigation. It was then that I witnessed Monsieur G Gustavia entering Mons Monsieur Dober's room. Sherbert? <laughs> it's Sherbet. <laughs> That was everything I had done on that day. I don't think there is anything suspicious about my actions. That is not your decision to make. Mr. Edgeworth, were there any contradictions in her testimony? For now, I should just prove that she stole the sculptures. But when could Miss Hall have stolen them? If I can answer that, her crime should come to light. After there we go, press this. Did you do did you do so in the same manner as today? Yes. I poured tea for everyone working in the investigation. Now that you mention it, Uncle Ray also got some tea from you that day. Kate was pushing her service cart back and forth from the patio to the main building. I see. Did anything seem strange to you then? Hmm. Well I remember your old man singing praises of her Sulan tea. And he also said something about how the saucer was chilled. The saucer was chilled. Could Miss Hall have stolen the sculptures then? She stole them then. <laughs> this was when you stole the sherbet sculptures. I'm sorry, but... Monsieur Shields and the company were at the fountain patio the entire time. Are you saying that I stole them in broad daylight? That's precisely what I'm saying. 
This is where she hid the sculptures, to steal them right under their noses. Beep. Neither my father nor Mr. Shields realized the sculpture was right in front of them. What you were pushing around was no ordinary service cart. It was the sculpture itself. But surely that would still be impossible. If she placed the sculptures in the service on the service cart, people would notice immediately. I never said she used the service cart to move the sculptures. What? What do you mean? Then what did you use to move the sculptures around? This is what Miss Hall used to transport the sculptures. The lift trolley. And this is... This is the lift trolley Mr. Dover used 18 years ago to move his sherbet sculptures. It seems the same lift trolley lies here, in the fountain patio. She didn't hide it under the cart, it was the cart. That's because it was originally prepared for the contest in the first place. Are you saying she used the lift trolley to move the sculptures? Yes. If the sculptures were placed on this lift trolley, and then covered with a tablecloth, it could be disguised as a service cart, and moved without arousing suspicion. How could that be? The sauces were chilled because they were sitting on the ice sculptures. Kate, what's the meaning of this? What were you thinking? That was truly impressive. You certainly are, Monsieur Gregory's son. After 18 years, it's hard to imagine any proof that I stole the sculptures from where remained, but I knew it was only a matter of time until I was suspected. Miss Curator, does this mean you admit to stealing the sculptures? Yes, I admit it. 18 years ago, I stole the sherbet sculptures from Monsieur Dover's room. It's just as Monsieur Edgeworth says, I disguised the lift trolley as a service cart, and I served tea as I made my way back and forth. That wasn't all. I also took the ice block with all the star clusters on it. An ice block with star clusters on it? That seems familiar. A giant block of ice is being displayed here. It appears to be quite heavy. On the inside must be hollow. The Winter Palace is a reproduction of Mr. Dover's room from 18 years ago. Because they had melted, my father never got the chance to see them. But those blocks of ice were also originally from Dover's sherbet salon. The two sculptures and the two blocks of ice. I took everything I could. And then I placed empty glass cases in Monsieur Dover's room. The sculptures were all encased in glass to preserve their fine details. But the ice blocks were being as displayed as they were. As per the rules, we prepared the, we prepared the glass cases for Mr. Dover. Hmm. So it would have been easy for her to prepare glass cases. In Monsieur Dover's room, there were some sculptures that were still unfinished. I thought if I melted them, it would look like the ones I stole had melted too. So everything you see in the Winter Palace are all original works from 18 years ago. Miss Hall, it didn't take much to get her to confess. Then she must know. She knows it isn't enough to try her in court. That is all I have to say. But, even though I admit to stealing the sculptures, you can't arrest me for it. What? What do you mean by that? Heavens! You're assisting in an, an investigation without knowing this much? Perhaps you should read this book concerning the Statute of Limitations. S Statute of Limitations? To put it simply, it's a time frame in which a suspect can be taken to court. You can see it on this page. The statute of limitations for murder is 15 years, and for theft, 7 years. Huh? 
That's right. And Miss Hall's theft was 18 years ago. According to the statute, she cannot be arrested for stealing the sculptures. So that's how it is. Stealing evidence from a crime scene is an unforgivable offense. However, for this crime at least, we have no right to pass judgment. It appears that Prosecutor Edgeworth's tepid reasoning has all been for naught. Hmm. I wonder about that. I deduced Miss Hall's actions simply to expose a different crime. If she only took the sculptures, she wouldn't have found the body from 18 years ago. Uh, are you saying that I hid Monsieur Dover's body? That's correct. But how can someone hide a body for 18 years? I would imagine it would be very difficult under normal circumstances. So you're saying the circumstances weren't normal? Are you claiming that you know where the body was hidden? When you consider Miss Hall's actions, the answer becomes obvious. 18 years ago, Miss Hall stole something more than just sherbet sculptures. If you're so confident, I would like to hear your answer. Where did Miss Hall hide the body? Uh. This is the photograph of Mr. Dover's sculptures. Yes, perhaps you've noticed that the victim's body can be seen in this picture. I do not see it. Please point it out clearly. Where in this picture can one see the body of the victim? It's time to expose the location of the body in the photograph. It just fucking throws you for a loop. Do you know where? If the body is hidden here... Where would it be? Which one? By the child? Oh, here you mean? The Gemini sculpture? Yes. While it may look like the Gemini sculpture at first glance, in reality, this is none other than Isaac Dover himself. This... this ice sculpture was the victim's body. But all I can see from this picture is an ice sculpture statue. If we take a look at... Uh, I believe we still have that, right? The picture... No, we don't. Damn it. We don't have it. Damn. That was why I looked at like the the differences between the two pictures earlier, and I was like, oh, okay, I get it. But I I wasn't like, I didn't say that I was looking at the differences. I was just kind of like looking at like what it looked like back in back in the day and like what the recreation looked like if like they were the same. And I was like, oh yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. But all I can see from this picture is an ice sculpture statue. 
That's because a certain piece of evidence was used to conceal it. Conceal it? Which piece of evidence did Miss Hall use to conceal the body? This is the cloth that was covering the sculptures in the Autumn Palace. This cloth manipulates light. With it, it's entirely possible to make something look like ice. Isn't that right, Alicia? Yes, see! When it glows red, it's like a raging inferno. And when it glows blue, you can almost feel the glittering cool ice. A cloth will only emit light when it is attached to a special device. Judge Courtney, look closely at the picture one more time. Beneath the Gemini case lies a box-shaped object attached to the pedestal. It, it, this is... A rainbow light device. Detective Gumshoe reported one in the Winter Palace. This is the device that went missing 18 years ago. Originally, it would have been attached to the cloth inside the glass case. Naturally, Miss Hall took the device with her when she moved the sculptures. By using the rainbow light device to make the fluorescent cloth glow. Mr. Dover's body was made to look like an ice sculpture. That's... ridiculous! So then, when Uncle Ray took a photo of the Winter Palace... That's right. The body had been in front of us all along, disguised as Gemini. However, the body and the fluorescent cloth were both discovered in the fountain. If the ice sculpture has, was the body, we, we... Ice sculpture was the body, we, could, we would have found it in the Winter Palace. If we had found it there, our trick would have been revealed immediately. Miss Hall moved the body out of the Winter Palace to prevent us from discovering it. Absurd! You say she threw the body into the fountain without any of us noticing. No, Judge Courtney. There was no need for that. She simply used the same method as before. Remember the lift trolley? Uh, uh. She moved the body to some other room and dumped it into the stream to the fountain. Naturally, the frozen body would have sunk to the bottom of the fountain. That's why the cloth floated up first and was found by Delicia. And eventually, the body thawed out and floated to the surface. Monsieur Edgeworth, you truly have a gift for deductive reasoning. However, do you have any proof that I moved the body? You want to fucking bet? If you cannot prove that, then there is no way I can accept what you are saying. Hmm... Wasn't there anyone who saw Miss Hall move the body? Yes, I believe such a person exists. The answers lie in the evidence that person gave me. And that piece of evidence will reveal the truth of Miss Hall's actions. Prosecutor Edgeworth, are you able to prove the crime of Miss Curator? Certainly. I have the evidence that will show exactly what she did. Then, it's time to be time we see your answer. Which piece of evidence reveals Miss Curator's actions? Another sketch? Oh, it appears I have been drawn in this one. This is a sketch Larry drew of the women at the fountain patio. I would like to direct your attention to the service cart on the left side of the sketch. Service cart? What about it? Hmm. <clears throat> you see, what transpired 18 years ago has happened again. Miss Hall was moving. The body in the sketch. No! Please wait. I don't see Monsieur Dover's body anywhere in that drawing. All I did was hand out chocolates to everyone. The key detail in the sketch is the color of the tablecloth. Until now, I thought Larry had just made a mistake. The tablecloth? It's light blue. It may be light blue in the sketch, but no blue tablecloths exist in this mansion. Perhaps it's light blue because the body was hidden, still glowing underneath the tablecloth. What? B but the lift trolley is rectangular in the sketch. 
if she just placed the body on, in the lift trolley, we would have we would notice it immediately. There were two blocks of ice in the Winter Palace that are completely hollowed out. If she put the body inside the block of ice, it would look like a service cart. That's... Miss Hall, you put the body in the block of ice and used the lift trolley to move it, didn't you? I... I never imagined you would be able to deduce so much from just a single sketch. But what if I was... what if it were just a, just a mistake? Like I said before, it doesn't prove anything. Hmm. <laughs> I agreed that alone that the sketch is worthless. Once you remove the body, the service cart would revert back to a lift trolley. That's why the lift trolley was left behind in the fountain patio. And without the service cart, there would be no place for you to try you to put your chocolates. The chocolates I gave everyone. Until then, the chocolates had sat on top of the service cart as you gave them away. And when you gave them to us, you took them from your pockets. Ah, now that you mention it, they were a bit melted, but they were still really sweet and tasty. So why was it necessary to put them in your pocket halfway through? Th th that's because... That's because once the body was disposed of, you no longer had a service cart. Huh? Hold it right there. If she put the chocolates in her pocket and left the lift trolley in the patio, then where did the tablecloth go? She has been, she, if she had been forced to put the chocolates in her pocket, she wouldn't have a time to dispose of the tablecloth. Prosecutor Edgeworth, can you answer that for me? The tablecloth wasn't hidden. It's right in front of us. Do clarify. The tablecloth used to hide the body. Where is it now? Miss Hall has it with her. With her. Isn't it obvious? Miss Hall is carrying it with her. Out in the open. Out in the open? Oh, you mean... Miss Hall. You are wearing the tablecloth around your waist. The block of ice was not encased in a glass case. In other words, the tablecloth was in direct contact with the block of ice. If we have it examined... We will undoubtedly found, find traces of sherbet on it. Miss Hall, you will turn your tablecloth over to the police at once. There is no need to examine the tablecloth. It is just as you say. I stole the poison from Madame Delicia. Delicia, and moved the body. I have done... I have done terrible things. Madame Delicia, I am so sorry. One week ago, I took your Megatoxin X bottle. I slipped it into that man's pocket to make it look like suicide. And if they suspected it was murder, the evidence would point to Madame Delicia. Eh! K Katie! Okay, what were you thinking? Weren't we always trying to save Mr. Master together? Hi. I could not let myself be arrested, not until I had proven Monsieur Master's innocence. From the very beginning, I had planned to turn myself in once everything was over. But I suppose it is too late to say that now. Kate, why? Why would you go this far? Even for Monsieur Shields, I have caused nothing but trouble. For the past 18 years, I have been a criminal. In the IS-7 incident, don't tell me that you were the true culprit. My greatest crime was stealing the sherbet sculptures for my own selfish interests. When Monsieur Dover died, they were no longer just ordinary sculptures. They had become the final works of the sculpture of the sculpture Monsieur Master so deeply loved. What if what if they melted before Monsieur Master returned? With that in mind, I couldn't let anyone touch them, not even the police. Even though I knew it was wrong, I moved them to the mansion's freezer. However, I only wanted to preserve Monsieur Dover's heart. I did not know his body was hidden among them. So she stole the sculptures without noticing the body. 
Monsieur Master would never take another person's life. But because of me, the body vanished, and Monsieur Master was found guilty. That kind man, he treated someone like me as family. He meant more to me than anyone else, and yet... Kate. When Monsieur Master was found guilty, I was chased out of this mansion. I was finally able to reclaim the mansion just a few days ago, but when I saw the sculpture still sleeping away in the freezer, I realized that I was the one who hid Monsieur Dover's body. However, the statute of limitations had already expired. Therefore, I, I could think of no other way to atone for my sins. It appears I have misunderstood her. It seems she caused this entire incident in order to save Mr. Master. What you think about, Mr. Edgeworth? There is one thing that has been bothering me this whole time. Why would Miss Hall plan a murder with such an uncertain method like poison gas? And the reason she disguised the Autumn Palace to look like the Winter Palace. The Winter Palace, I mean. I said that weirdly, just sorry was to make those involved in the incident 18 years ago confuse the two rooms. I wonder what Kate was trying to accomplish. She was trying to prove Mr. Master's innocence. In that case, Miss Hall's true objective was... to find the true culprit. Perhaps she was trying to find the true culprit. Miss Hall! Are you trying to prove Mr. Master's innocence? You wanted to reveal the true culprit and have the police find the body from 18 years ago. Was that not your true goal? By displaying those sculptures, you'd attract those involved in the past incidents. Only two people would know where the body was hidden. You and the true culprit. The culprit would have panicked, knowing that their body would be displayed publicly. Yes. And if the culprit really showed up, there's the risk they'd erase their tracks. In the worst case scenario, they might have even stolen the body. So, how could she protect the evidence while simultaneously luring in the culprit? I see! That's why she made the Autumn Palace look like the Winter Palace. Yes, and then, Miss Hall, you must have thought. Whoever opens the Pisces case, believing it to be the Gemini case, must be the true culprit of the IS-7 incident. What? But, but that means that person is the true culprit. Please wait a moment, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Do you realize what you're saying? Do you intend to accuse that person of being the culprit behind the IS-7 incident? Miss Hall was trying to trap the true culprit. If so, wouldn't the person who fell for the trap be the true culprit? However... I have no evidence to back up my claims. If I make a formal accusation, without any proof, it will not end well. Should I announce the true killer of Isaac Dover? Make an accusation. What I should do is reveal the truth. In that case, there is no need to hesitate. Yes, that's correct, Judge Courtney. I indict this person as the true culprit behind the IS-7 incident. Tank Gustavia, who fell victim to the poison gas, is a true culprit of the IS-7 incident? Gusty is... Mr. Gustavia. Miss Hall, didn't you believe that if you opened this gallop, the true culprit would come? That's why you set up the poison gas trap, is it not? You truly have a gifted mind, and just like your father. It is as you say, Monsieur Edgeworth. Now, would you please tell us the whole truth? Yes, I have nothing more to hide. I will tell you everything. Okay, I have one part left. How long is that? Oh, this a long bitch. Oh, this a long bitch. Set a trap in the gallery to find the true culprit. 
before the gallery opened, I left only the autumn palace unlocked. At opening time, when I went around to unlock each room, I discovered that the autumn palace had been locked from the inside. I knew that the true culprit was on the other side of the door. My hand was trembling. All that was left was for the trap to do its work. When I heard Monsieur Gustavia had was exposed to the poison gas, I realized he was the culprit. And I thought that if the police discovered Monsieur Dover's body, it would prove Monsieur Master's innocence. Why didn't you ever come talk to me? There might have been another way. I know that you did everything you could for me ever the, over the past 18 years. However, all of this has been had been brought on by my own crime. That's why I wanted to save Monsieur Master as soon as possible. Kate. Not only that, the police hid the fact that the body went missing 18 years ago. Oh, uh, I don't know, two hours maybe? Even if I reported the body, there was a chance that the truth would be hidden again. That's why I caused the incident at the museum's opening, with as many witnesses as possible. I'm sorry. Gregory, Mr. Master, and even you, I couldn't protect anyone. Mr. Shields, I must be tough on him as well. The one who should be apologizing is me, Monsieur Edgeworth, Monsieur Shields. I am terribly sorry. I shall accept whatever punishment I am given. However, I must ask of you, please clear Monsieur Master's name. truth that was hidden for 18 years was revealed in an unexpected manner. However, to think that things would end this way. Well, I'm not stopping now. I have one chapter left. Like, there is no fucking way. But, like, this would make the fucking third day in a row that I stream for over 10 hours. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I guess we'll see how long it takes. Okay. Miss Hall, have you composed yourself? Yes. What you did, no matter the reason, was unforgivable. Yes, I know. However, you committed this crime in order to prove Mr. Master's innocence. If the true culprit is someone else, we have a duty to reinvestigate. Ma'am? This episode? Oh yeah, it's, it's great, honestly. No false evidence from the IS-7 incident remains in the official case files. Moreover, there is no evidence to lend credence to Miss Hall's testimony. We should first arrest Miss Hall as the culprit behind today's incident. We cannot be certain that all the case files are accurate. After all, the prosecutor in the case has a history of forging evidence. Are you suggesting that the PIC overlooked such, such, such a prosecutor? Yes. Very much yes. That's none of my concern. The truth is that evidence was falsified. And the fact that Dover's body from 18 years ago was just discovered proves it. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I can see remnants of Prosecutor von Karma within you. What did you say? You tried to deceive the PIC and fabricate the truth, ma'am. Let me inform you of my, or rather, the PIC's logic. The, the, the non-existent kind? I acknowledge that Prosecutor von Karma fabricated the information about the body. However, he successfully convicted Mr. Master as an accomplice. I believe that the true culprit was, Mr. was Miss Curator herself. She even attempted to murder Mr. Gustavia today in order to pin the blame on him. Can, can you- Okay, ma'am, can you please just give me like one good reason? 
why Gustavia himself would try to open the fucking ice sculpture. But what? Why would he do that if he didn't know about the body? Your logic doesn't exist. Yeah. Is that really what the PIC believes? Yes, every word I utter is for the sake of law and order. Uh, PIC is fucking dumb as fuck then. Why? <laughs> it seems she intends to hide the truth for the sake of the PIC. At this rate, neither Mr. Master nor Miss Hall will be saved. I can go to fourth statement, that's she even. Okay. If she wanted to pin the crime on somebody, why choose Mr. Gustavia? Perhaps Mr. Gustavia suspected Miss Hall was the criminal. As, she, as he attempted to confirm whether or not the Gemini sculpture was genuine. He was caught in a trap meant to silence him forever. Objection. Can you prove that theory? Mr. Gustavia is currently teetering on the brink of death. There's probably no way to prove it unless he regains consciousness, so you, you admit you have no proof. In other words, there is nothing we can do for now. It can't be true. There must still be something we can do. You still don't get it, do you? Allow me to give you a clearer explanation. We already have ample evidence for both the IS-7 incident and today's poison gas incident. There is no need to investigate any further. Okay, and any, and either. Where's the liquid, uh... There's still one piece of evidence from the IS-7 incident that remains unsettled. Take a look at this. This is... This is the forensic results from the Gemini sculpture that melted in the Winter Palace. According to the results of the an analysis, traces of someone's blood were found. Who does this blood belong to? Until we know the answer, this case is still open. There was blood mixed in with the remains of the Gemini sculpture! I heard nothing of this from Sebastian! This was a report from Detective Gumshoe. I had planned to tell Mr. The Best myself. Hmm. So even though you had no investigative authority, you still did as you please. I shall report everything that transpired today to the PIC. I will not avert my eyes from the truth, nor shall I overlook the mistakes of the past. If you wish to report my actions to the PIC, be my guest. But in exchange, I want you to let me investigate this case to the very end. It is not my place to decide such things. I must ask that you check with Sebastian regarding this matter. Hey, good news, you guys! Thanks to our early detection, Mr. Gustavia's life was saved! Mr. Gustavia? So, he's alive! Would you be the ones who saved my life? Hey, Mr. Gustavia. Hmm? You are Sir Assistant, are you not? You've grown so big this time. This one is your assistant then. No, I... <laughs> He's an assistant candidate and Gregory Edgeworth's son. I am Miles Edgeworth, a prosecutor. <clears throat> what a twist of fate. I'm in your debt, and it is thanks to you that I have completely recovered. Heh. <laughs> There's no need for thanks. Since you're alive, we can reach the truth behind the incident 18 years ago. Hmm? What do you speak of? While you were unconscious, the truth has started to come to light. You may be Isaac Dover's murderer. What? Really? Miss Hall was looking for the criminal behind the events of 18 years ago. That's why 
She set up the poison gas in the Pisces case. Mr. Gustavia, the events of the incident 18 years ago. Tell us what really happened. So you wish to remain silent? Ah, I think he's just meditating. He can sleep standing up? What a useful skill to have. Meditation is different from sleeping. Mr. Gustavia, please tell us what you did 18 years ago. <laughs> I'm the criminal because I fell for the trap. That's not a very funny joke. I'm a victim, not a culprit. Mr. Gustavia, it has not yet been made clear whether or not you are the criminal. This is only be only their baseless speculation. Is more it has more base than yours, baby girl. I'm just gonna fucking say that straight out. Like, fucking... Do not concern yourself with the drivel of a prosecutor without jurisdiction. Mm. At least there is one person here who understands. My name is Justine Courtney. I am a judge. If you would like, I would be happy to assist you. Let us show the prosecutor Edgeworth. Let us show Prosecutor Edgeworth the truth of 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. Understood. I shall prove my innocence to you, Sir Prosecutor. Objection. Judge Courtney, is that your answer? Do you intend to bury the truth of the IS-7 incident before it can be brought to light? I merely believe in the judgment of the Goddess of Law. You, f you should fucking find another fucking belief. I don't fucking know what to tell you. <laughs> Ultimately, those who render judgment are only human. As long as humans control the law, there's no guarantee that every verdict is correct. If you're going to help conceal the truth, I will not hold back. Mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Lady Justine, what should I do now? You are being suspected because you set off the poison gas. Can you tell us the reason? Why you open the Pisces cage? Understood. I came to see Sir Dover's works from 18 years ago. However, I accidentally entered the museum a half hour before it opened. Miss Hall, there was nobody at the entrance, correct? Since I thought the criminal from 18 years ago might be coming, I had no security guards in place. I didn't even lock the doors. I was very busy with opening preparations, so there was nobody on the first floor. In addition, I locked, locked every palace door out aside from the autumn one. I see. This must be- this must have been done in order to lure the criminal to the Autumn Palace. Which is why he ended up entering the Autumn Palace. It's already suspicious that he snuck into the museum in the first place. The gallery should remain silent. Unless you have evidence that can prove his testimony false, I will not allow any objections. I gallery? This isn't even a courtroom. I think- I think what's wrong with- with- Courtney is that she's just delusional. She believes she's in the court, obviously. She loves playing judge. No matter the situation. I can't imagine what it would be like to be in her family. That would be fucking awful. I would hate to be there. Now then, why did you open the Pisces cage? I wish to view Sir Dover's handiwork up close. A Gemini sculpture. No, it was actually the Pisces, wasn't it? The lid had been frozen shut, so I borrowed a burner to open it. But as soon as I opened the lid, poison gas began pouring out. That's quite a convenient testimony. It sounds like a total lie, doesn't it? Christmas dinner with Corky doesn't seem fun. Oh my god, no. There are parts of Mr. Gustavia's testimony that I, ha that I have issues with as well. However... There is no evidence to disprove it. But, but that's... But it not make sense for suspicion to fall on Lady Catherine before myself. She may have intended to release the poison gas haphazardly. Objection. Kate turned on the sprinklers as soon as the gas was released. She was specifically targeting the person who triggered the trap. Mr. Gustavia, you were her only target. You, you're willing to accept the words of this criminal as the truth. Miss Hall must atone for her crimes. However, the same can be said for the criminal from 18 years ago. So, prosecutor, it seems you wish to suspect me to the bitter end. However, I have no reason to murder Sir Dover. 
If there is no evidence to, su to suggest that I killed him, you cannot suspect me. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth! Can't you prove that Mr. Gustavia is the criminal? All we know for sure is that Mr. Gustavia fell victim to the poison gas. No matter how strange his behavior was, it won't prove he committed the murder. But that's... Mr. Shields, is there nothing we can do? Well, if there isn't any evidence, we should try reorganizing the facts. If Mr. Gustavia was the one who killed Mr. Dover, there must have been a motive. Motive? Mr. Gustavia himself is denying that such a motive exists. It's not easy to take another person's life. Eighteen years ago, your old man also discussed motive with Prosecutor von Karma. You claim their collaboration is irrelevant. If Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover's relationship had turned sour. It could serve as a motive for murder. We couldn't talk with Mr. Gustavia 18 years ago. This time, things are different. If we connect everything we've learned so far, the truth might be revealed. Yes, I suppose so. It seems I must re-examine the information from 18 years ago. I must recall all the details that have remained un unexplained. So, the gloved finger marks on the picture frame was your doing. Delicia denied leaving the finger marks on the, on the frame. They were left by Mr. Gustavia. He may have been trying to view the angel's recipe. Monsieur Master asked me to change the film on the camera. It seemed the film he prepared in advance wasn't enough. It wasn't enough film. It seems the number of photos he took didn't match up with the amount of film remaining. Well, he told me himself it might have been just a mistake, though. The information my father collected 18 years ago was certainly not for naught. If there is no evidence, then I shall use logic to reveal the truth. Yes, fucking let's go. Alright. What if the murder partnership turns sour, for sure. Mr. Gustavia, you collaborated with the victim Isaac Dover to create your desserts, didn't you? Oh, it seems you know about my secret. Mr. Shields told me about it. Mr. Dover handled the, handled the design while you were in charge of the taste. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Back then my training had been insufficient. It seems you worked together through the semifinals, but not during the finals. Why is that? You both wished to compete in the finals against Sir Master on our own merits. You must have also helped with Isaac Dover's dessert even during the finals. Mm. What makes you able to declare something like that? Didn't you tell Prosecutor von Karma about it yourself 18 years ago? You cooperated until the day before the finals. Sculptures in Mr. Dover's room were all made of, uh, made out of sherbet. Such an amount would most likely need to be left overnight to freeze. Which means Mr. Gustavia prepared Mr. Dover's sherbet in, in advance the day before. Hmm. That's right, so you realize Gustavia's cooperation ended the day before the finals. Why did Mr. Dover not help Mr. Gustavia in return? Attraction. The views of the dead are of no concern to me. Why did Isaac Dover not help you in return? Mm -hmm. There is a reason why your partnership with Isaac Dover broke down. That would be a motive for murder. Mm -hmm. Could be a possibility. However, Sir Dover and I ended our partnership peacefully. A peaceful breakup? That's hard to imagine. Not to mention, it's absurd to think that I killed Sir Dover in Sir Master's room. I couldn't have killed Sir Dover while Master was also there, making his desserts. In other words, there is no way I could have committed the murder. That's not true. If there was a moment when Mr. Master was absent from the room, I could prove that it was possible for Mr. Gustavia to commit the murder. Oh, 
Those two? Nope, that's not it. If he had a if he had photographed the contents of the angel's recipe, he wouldn't need to steal it. Perhaps Mr. Gustavia used Mr. Master's camera to take the pictures. If he had stolen the actual recipe book, the police would have found out. I see. Pictures, huh? The problem is the time at which he entered Mr. Master's room. Mr. Gustavia could have moved around freely during the afternoon tea, right? Because it seems both him and Mr. Dover did not participate in the afternoon tea. If I remember correctly, the only time we can prove that Dover was still alive is... The victim was not seen, as he stayed locked up in his room after the contest had begun. The only one who could, who could have unlocked the locked rooms was Jeff Master. Must Master's desserts all that you ate? Actually, no. After the- after- After the afternoon tea, I also ate Icy's desserts. After the contest began, Isaac Dover was locked up in his room. We assume he was killed at some point before Delicia snuck into his room. Then there is a high chance that he was killed before the afternoon tea was over. Isaac Dover was alive up until the afternoon tea began. Ergo. It's the only time when Gustavia could have killed Dover. Prosecutor Edgeworth, are you satisfied? Heh. <laughs> Sorry, but I am far from satisfied. Because I am finally starting to see the truth behind this case. Are you saying you have found some evidence to show us the truth? No, there is no need to present any evidence. Since we can just have Mr. Gustavia tell us the truth. So this is where you use that, right? Indeed. Mr. Gustavia, there is one thing I want you to tell me. I said, Mr. Gustavia, there is one thing I want you to tell me. No. Oh, what is... Oh, by the way, uh, Gregory Edgeworth also did the, the Edgeworth noise. Oh, thing. Oh, oh, oh. During the finals of the contest, you made your desserts on your own. I wanted to compete for the title of the world's greatest pastry chef on my own merits. If that was truly the case, you would have competed on your own merits from the start. I want you to tell me why it was necessary for you to cooperate with Isaac Dover. It runs in the family, yes. During the contest 18 years ago, Mr. Gustavio collaborated with Mr. Dover. My, my head itches. But am I a dog? <laughs> oh my god. I wonder, what made them decide to cooperate in the first place? That's what I need to draw out from him, but... Oh shoot. Hmm. It seems he pretends to meditate when things aren't going his way. First, I'll ask about why he collaborated with Mr. Dover. The truth has been hidden for 18 years. That ends today. Why did you collaborate? Why did you decide to collaborate with Isaac Dover? Dover and I were already acquaintances, even before the contest began. Since he was interested in the contest, we simply decided to enter it together. Huh. Training forces with the sculptor. You weren't confident in your own abilities. <laughs> you know nothing about me. We wanted to make great works together. So Dover's son and my own attended. My own attended the same elementary school. We all got along well from the start. Really? So were you going to share the title of Ward's greatest pastry chef together? <laughs> Heh. <laughs> 
As expected, Hubert tends to meditate when things aren't going his way. Mr. Dover was a sculptor. I doubt he had any interest in the title of the world's greatest pastry chef. In that case, where did his true goal lie? <laughs> Indeed, my goal was the title of the world's greatest pastry chef. However, Sir Dover's goal was his grand prize, the angel's recipe. I see. You cooperated because your interests were aligned. But there must have been a reason why your partnership soured. Prosecutor. I am the victim of, vi victim of a poisoning. If you're going to suspect me in this manner. Perhaps I'd better return to the infirmary. W wait a moment. In that case, you should end things soon. I'm not a patient man. It seems he's trying to leave. I can't let that happen. He's still hiding something. Next, I should ask him about his true goal. I need to keep the pressure on him, while being cautious of the time. Uh... Didn't you have another goal besides the title? The title alone doesn't seem to have much value. Mm -mm. I dare the likes of you insult the title of a confectionery artist. My only goal was the title itself. I had no interest in anything else. My dream was to become the world's greatest pastry chef. Eighteen years ago, I was lacking in design sense. However, things are different now. Oh? Are you saying you have improved at your craft? Exactly, for I have trained at the Republic of Zhengfa. I failed to see the results of your training. Yes, yes. At the time, I also studied Mr. Master's works. I would often watch his show with my son. So you were studying Mr. Master's work to improve your own skills. If you had his recipes, perhaps it would have been easier for you to become the world's greatest. Hmm. Perhaps. To a pastry chef, Sir Master's recipes were worth their weight in gold. Heh. <laughs> Becoming the world's greatest pastry chef was your goal. You should have also been interested in the grand prize, the angel's recipe. <laughs> the recipes of the world's greatest pastry chef. I would be lying if I said that I wasn't interested. However, I wouldn't think that simply being interested in would be a problem. I wonder about that. The angel's recipe's true nature was not for making desserts, but cures. And all of the contest participants should have been aware of that. <laughs> Looks like I'm getting close. He isn't meditating anymore. I'll slowly but surely drive him into the corner. Next, I'll ask what he planned to use, it, use the recipe book for. Uh, did you intend to win the angel's recipe and use it to make desserts? Well, of course, if I obtained the angel's recipe, I was going to use it in my training. I hear the angel's recipe were the angel's recipe was worth a lot of money. Mm -mm. I don't know the exact details, but that recipe book was much too valuable to be sold. You seem to know quite a lot about the angel's recipe. It was explained to all the contest participants at the beginning of the contest. <laughs> In that case, you must know about the recipe book's true nature. That it was not a recipe book for desserts at all. Impressive, Sir Prosecutor. So you know the true nature of the angel's recipe. The angel's recipe. Some have called it the ultimate, res ultimate recipe book. It contained formulas for new medicines that were not yet on the market. He knew the recipes were actually for form actually formulas for new medicines. This could be a useful clue. The angel's recipe. Did you know its true value? Silly question. It contains Sir Master's best dessert recipes. We already discussed this. Any pastry chef worth their salt would want it. Looks like that clue will come in handy. You may have studied the sign in Sheng Fa. However, your skill in lying could use more work. You just said earlier that the angel's recipe contained formulas for medicines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You weren't interested in desserts. You wanted the medicine. You wanted the medicine formulas. Now, why would a pastry chef such as yourself be so interested in medicine? Perhaps that's what you were. What you were really after was the information about the new medicine. Hmm. Underestimated you, sir, prosecutor. Yes. My goal was more than just the title of the world's greatest past pastry chef. At the time, my son was ill. I needed the recipe for the medicine. Your son was ill? Tell me more about that. To protect my son's honor, I can say no more. Hmm. Judging by the worried look on his face, he must have struck a nerve. Next, I need him to tell me more about his son's illness. And this is it. This will be my final move of the game. What kind of person was your son? Ah, my boy, you love the desserts I made. But you enter the contest solely for your son. The prosecutor, you could never understand the feelings a father has for his son. I wanted nothing more than to cure my boy's illness. Until the semifinals, my son would always drop by the contest venue to play. By the way, I'm not actually following a guide now, I'm just- that's good. <laughs> Is that so? Wouldn't he get in your way? I doubt you had time to care for your son while you were challenging Mr. Master. Maybe so, but I wanted to grant my son's wish. He said he always wanted to be the first to eat my desserts. About your son. If he was so sick, wouldn't it be difficult for him to come and play with you? Mm -hmm. My son's illness. It wasn't life-threatening. Hmm. That might serve as a clue. What was the name of your son's illness? Mm -hmm. Mr. Prosecutor, how insensitive of you. My son was seriously ill. He will not be discussing this with the likes of you. Looks like that clue will come in handy. You told me your son's illness was not life-threatening. Is there really a need to be so secretive about it? It was enough to keep him from living a normal life. That must have been difficult for your son. I tried everything I could to cure his illness. It wasn't fair for the poor boy. He could never taste the desserts he loved so much. The angel's recipe contains a cure for a certain illness. A remedy that could also cure Mr. Master's taste disorder. What? He had it too? He had it too, I see. So your son suffers from a taste disorder. I didn't think you'd figure it out so quickly. In order to cure your son's taste disorder, you needed the recipe book. Wasn't that your true goal? Mm -hmm. It's as you say. Based on how he's acted up until now, it appears he is still hiding something. It seems I don't have enough clues. Oh no. Did the angel's recipe have the only cure? Yes. Well, the medicine is being sold everywhere now. At the time, the recipe book it was my one and only option. That's why I continued making my desserts without joining the others for tea time. So you weren't interested in what Mr. Master was making. You sure seemed confident in your chances of winning. I couldn't be bothered to pay attention to the other contestants' desserts. You just said earlier that you studied Mr. Master's works. In addition, if your goal was to win the contest in order to get the medicine formula, you must have been curious about the other contestants' entries as well. Mm. There was time to sample the other desserts during the contest, but none of their entries had any flavor. So I didn't want to eat any of it. I suspect I may have been a bit nervous as well. 
So everything I ate tasted flavorless. This could be a useful clue. This. Was he too fat? In order to cure your son's taste disorder, you needed the recipe book. Wasn't that your true goal? Mm, yes, as you say. Based on how he's acted up until now, it appears okay. Yes, here we go. Being unable to taste anything, regardless of what you eat. Such a bitter illness. That reminds me, didn't you say something similar earlier? None of their entries had any flavor, so I didn't feel like eating any of it, wasn't it? Perhaps, your son wasn't the only one who suffered from a taste disorder. It's hard to imagine being a successful pastry chef without a sense of taste. Perhaps what you really wanted was to cure yourself. It's completely ludicrous. 18 years ago, I made those desserts all by myself. Heh. <laughs> Seems you've caught yourself in a contradiction. Didn't you cooperate with Isaac Dover in the, in the contest? You can hardly say you made the desserts all by yourself. Ah, I get it. You must take great pride in your abilities as a pastry chef, but to betray your pride and cooperate with another contestant. You did it all to cure your own disease. Well done, sir Pro prosecutor. It is as you say, the one with the taste disorder is not my son. It is I. And we have two testimonies to go through, and that's it. No one knew. I kept it a secret for 18 years. It doesn't matter how long a secret is kept. If you lie before me, I will expose it. The Gustavia and Isaac Dober were both trying to obtain the recipes for the new medicines. Gustavia to cure his condition. And Dober most likely to sell the recipe book for money. We're like halfway through, I think. For this reason, they enter the contest as a collaborative effort. Like, down the page, we're halfway. <laughs> and with that, checkmate. Sweet! Mm -hmm. I have never told this to anyone. Well done. As you say, I developed a taste disorder 18 years ago. Taste disorder? It was a severe disorder. I was unable to discern any flavor at all. It's the one illness a pastry chef dreads above all. Those symptoms sound a bit different from Mr. Master's taste disorder. Mr. Master's condition is known as hypogeusia. It simply causes a decreased sensitivity to certain specific flavors. I'm sure it has caused Sir Master much pain too. After all, no medication was available to cure it 18 years ago. In order to cure your taste disorder, you would need Mr. Master's an Angel's recipe. And that's why you entered the contest, am I correct? That was one of my goals, but I still have my sights set on that title of World's Greatest. When it comes to making desserts, I won't lose to anyone. Even without the ability to taste, I still have the utmost confidence in my flavors. Oh? So I presume you also prepared your dessert in, in the finals with the intent to win. Mm -hmm. It goes without saying. According to what Mr. Shields told us earlier, the evaluation of, of Mr. Gustavia's entry was... So the semifinals, Ms. Mr. Gustavia's flavors and design were to my liking. Unfortunately, both the taste and appearance of his finals entry left much to be desired. It seems the dessert you made for the finals where it was not rated highly in regards of to flavor. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gustavia, you will tell us about how you made your dessert during the finals. Very well. Seems I must teach you up starts the lesson. 
Sir Dover and I cooperated until the finals. I handled the flavor. He was in charge of the design. Of the design. However, for the finals, I wanted to challenge Sir Master with my own skills. I helped Sir Dover make his entry, but I made my mind completely on my own. If the flavor of my entry wasn't good enough, my own lack of training was to blame. How about that, Sir Prosecutor? This is the truth about 18 years ago. <laughs> I can't find any contradictions in his testimony. Well, of course he isn't going to fess up that easily. This guy's been on the run for 18 years, after all. I guess, we're, I guess we'll just have to keep on pressing him, and, uh, pressing him until he breaks, huh? Yes. Poor statement. Poor statement. Nope, that was it. Damn it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. Stop talking. Let me fucking do the thing I want to do. Okay, thank you. If, there we go. Press. Up until the finals, I heard that you received high praise for the flavor of your desserts. Was there some sort of accident during the finals? Mm hmm. Nothing of the sort. I simply was unable to taste my work due to my taste disorder. My intuition must have been off, that's all. Then, was your intuition fine while making Mr. Dover's entry? How could there be such a huge difference between the finals and the previous day? Mm hmm. Hmm. We're not getting anywhere at this rate. Should I change the topic? About, about the semifinals. So you're sure there wasn't anything different between the semifinals and the finals? Yes, that's right. Aside from not cooperating with Sir Dover, the finals weren't much different from the semifinals. Objection! There was another difference between the semifinals and finals. This photo depicts your son. We know he came to visit you up until the finals. Mm, that is correct. What does that have to do with anything? Your son, who always came to see see you through the semifinals, was not present for the finals. And then, it was only in the finals that your flavor judged poorly. I won't I don't believe this to be a mere coincidence. Your son's visits must have been very important to you, were they not? A father can work miracles when his son is watching. With my son cheering me on, I was able to make the most delicious desserts. Mr. Gustavia sure sounds like a good father, doesn't he? And what he's saying is the whole truth. One could say so. But just hearing his son's cheers wouldn't be enough to change the taste of his desserts. A confectioner, confident in his sense of tense, taste, develops a taste disorder. It would have been difficult for him to maintain the taste of his desserts. Your son came to cheer you on. Was that really all he did? You seem very doubtful, Sir Prosecutor. In that case, I'll turn this around and ask you. What else could my elementary school son have done besides cheer me on? Tasted your desserts? I'm sure your elementary school son would have remembered the taste of your desserts. Well, of course, my, son's my son always loved my desserts. In that case... He would have been able to taste taste test your desserts in your place. Mm -hmm. What did you say? Earlier, you told us that you have a taste disorder. Mm -hmm. I've never told this to anyone. Well done. As you say, I developed a taste disorder. Yeah, we get it. We know you have a taste disorder. <laughs> no one else knew about your taste disorder. If Mr. Dover had found out, he would have ended your partnership. After all, you were in charge of the flavor. Your son didn't just cheer you on. He also helped you determine if your desserts tasted correct. Ah, I see. Mr. Dover's dessert was, was made the day before, so it still tasted good. You're saying is quite amusing, sir, prosecutor. You say that my elementary school son assisted me as a, as a taste tester? Do 
Because they don't expect people to sit through it. Like the way I am. You know, they expect people to like play for like... A little while and then like turn it off and come back the next day. I ain't about that life. <laughs> Obviously. You are insulting my pride. Your pride. It's true, I had no sense of design. 18 years ago. However, I won't lose to anyone when it comes to flavor. You claim I would cast aside my pride and rely on my son. Don't get carried away with your foolish conjecture. You upstarch. Mm -hmm. In that case, I'm sure your son can, conform can confirm if my theory is mere conjecture. Unfortunate for you. Unfortunately for you, I no longer have a son. Wh what? After my taste disorder was cured, I went to train in Zhengfa immediately. During that time, I severed all ties with my son. What? Don't tell me. You would even abandon your own son. That's not all. Even today, the whereabouts of his son are still unknown. The police have been searching, but they haven't been able to find any traces of him. If you wish to confirm your theory, I welcome you to try. The certs are the only things that are important to me. After regaining my sense of taste, my son no longer mattered. Order in the court. Mr. Gustavius' actions are clearly, certainly inhumane. This game is not that progressive. <laughs> However, we are not here to judge whether or not he is a good father. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I believe this is your loss. After all, there is no evidence left from 18 years ago that could prove your theories. <clears throat> Mr. Edgeworth, is there nothing we can do? At this rate, we'll never find out the truth. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Where are those results? I wonder whose flood, whose blood it could have been. I've asked forensics to look into it, sir. Right, I leave it to you, detective. I entrusted Detective Gumshoe with the last piece of evidence. If only I knew who that blood belonged to. Miles, there's still one thing that's bothering Uncle Ray. Was Mr. Gustavia's only reason for coming to the art gallery to check on the body? If he only wanted to confirm the body's presence, he wouldn't have needed to open the case. That's right. Is there a way we can prove this? There is one way. We just need that evidence from Detective Gumshoe. Prosecutor Edgeworth, what are you talking about? Mr. Edgeworth, sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Heh. <laughs> just the person I was talking about. Detective Gumshoe, I trust you have the test results. Of course, sir. I just got the report back from the lab. Detective, please be silent. So, this is the evidence that Pro Prosecutor Edgeworth was talking about. Huh? Hey, what's this? That's the first I've heard of it. Um... This was a request from me. I asked him to investigate a certain piece of evidence. Why? Why is everyone always helping you out? It's because you hang around Courtney, okay? And Courtney babies you like it crazy, okay? I'm the one in charge of the crime scene. Mr. DeBest. I apologize for taking matters into my own hands, but... How about we hear his report first? Uh, sure. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, what were the results? Here's the report, sir. The traces of blood found in the Gemini sculpture belong to the victim of the poison gas, Dane Gustavia. What are you saying? Good work, Detective Gumshoe. As I thought, my theory was correct. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? We too would like an explanation. What on earth does this blood prove? This blood is something the culprit of the IS-7 incident tried to conceal. It can't be. That's... This blood was found inside the glass case of the Gemini sculpture. In other words, your blood was found alongside Mr. Dover's body. 
How is that overruled? Why would Mr. Gustavia's blood be in a place like that? If you intend to remain silent, then I'll reveal the truth myself. In the Gemini case, aside from the blood, we also found traces of salt and sugar. Salt and blood? And only one of Mr. Dober's sherbet desserts tasted salty. Come to think of it. I remember Miss Delicious saying the same thing 18 years ago. Oh, yesy! His sherbet was most delicious! Really? I wish I could have eaten some too. But there was one piece that was so salty I couldn't eat it. Salty? It's right here in this photo. It was a part of that liar. It's a liar from the Gemini constellation. Exactly. For some reason, salt had been mixed in into the liar. And what the traces of salt were found in Dover's room. In that case, please explain. Where did the salt detected in the liar come from? This is the rock salt lamp used as the murder weapon in the IS-7 incident. I believe part of this rock salt lamp was mixed in with the sherbet from the liar. At the time of the murder, there were two rock salt lamps in Mr. Master's room. And one of those lamps took Mr. Dover's life. We know that Mr. Dover's blood was left behind on the murderous lamp. However, there were no traces of anyone's blood found at the crime scene. Mr. Master's room. Because the killer disposed of all of the desserts with traces of blood into the streams of water, right? Courtney's salty. No other traces of salt were found in Mr. Dover's room. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, weren't the two rock salt lamps found in Miss Delicious's room also broken? It looks like both the lamps are the, on the, and the pillars are broken. Both of the light bulbs are broken. Maybe they were dropped on the floor. We never did figure out why the other rock salt lamp was broken. Maybe Mr. Gustavia's blood was on the other lamp. Mm -hmm. Your blood was found on the lamps at the crime scene. You would have been suspected. As a culprit, you could have you would have needed to conceal all traces of your blood from the police. Don't tell me he concealed it in the sherbet liar. Exactly. The rock salt lamp and his blood were mixed into the sherbet liar and hidden inside the glass case. Unlike the fountain's water, the sherbet desserts would not be analyzed right away. Perhaps he had planned to dispose of the sherbet when the opportunity presented itself. Th then, the reason Mr. Gustavia came to this gallery... 18 years ago, the body and evidence pointing... The body and the evidence pointing to the killer were both stolen. Even the killer could not have anticipated that. There was no way of knowing when the body when the evidence would be discovered. So he planned to destroy the evidence before the Zodiac Art Gallery grand Gallery's grand opening. Dean Gustavia, isn't it about time you confessed? You are the true culprit of the IS-7 incident. <laughs> Monsieur Gustavia, you're the reason Monsieur Master is... Master is... Mr. Gustavia, could it be, after all this time, my crime is finally brought to light? The prosecutors and defense attorneys 18 years ago never even came close. Bravo, bravo, well done, sir, prosecutor. So you admit that you killed Mr. Dover? It is true, I killed Isaac Dover, but he had only himself to blame. What do you mean? Dover and I worked together in order to win the contest. No matter who won, we agreed that we'd share the angel's recipe. But on the day of the finals, he stabbed me in the back. Sir Dover, this isn't what we agreed to. I'm sorry, Gustavia. The deal is off. What? But I made your desserts for you! I'm the reason you got this far! And what of it? Can you prove that you assisted me in any way? Dover, you... You were planning to betray me all along! 
because of Dover's treachery. I was forced to make my final entry on my own. It's just as Sir Prosecutor said. My son assisted me every day until the finals. And what about your pride as a confectionery artist? Proud chef loses the ability to taste his own creations. That's a feeling an upstart like you would never understand. Mastering the art of dessert, making it... Dessert making is my reason for being... For being. It is my one and only pride. Committing murder for the sake of pride. is another feeling I will never understand. To say nothing of abandoning your own son. Such a thought disgusts me. Before you judge me, first understand what happened 18 years ago. On the day of the finals, my son never came to assist me. Thinking back on it now, I suppose Dover had a hand in that as well. Huh? What exactly happened to your son? I do not know, but I no longer it no longer matters. Ever since that day, my son meant nothing to me. From what I hear, he's still missing. <laughs> That's awful! Giving up on him like that. Without your son, you had no chance of winning, correct? Yes, and since I was guaranteed to lose, I needed a failsafe. During the afternoon tea time, I made my way to Sir Master's room. I just needed to take a photo of the cure to my taste disorder. It would have all worked out. If only Dover hadn't in interfered. Ah, huh, Gustavia. Trying to steal a picture of my prize, are you? That hardly seems sporting. You! Cure for taste disorders. Oh, you have a taste disorder, don't you? Oh, this is rich. A pastry chef who can't taste. Dover, you. Puny worm. You are in no position to oppose me. Are you... When I attempted to hit Dover, he struck me and sent me flying. I crashed into one of the rock salt lamps, and that was when I, and that was when my blood stained stained on it. So Mr. Dover wasn't the first one to be injured. To conceal my blood, I shaved away part of the rock salt lamp and mixed it into the sherbet. After that, it became part of the liar sculpture. So that's how you tried to erase your traces from the crime scene. Dover tried to blackmail me by using his knowledge of my taste disorder. I know, right? It's not that fucking deep. <laughs> if I didn't want it to become public, I was to pay him a large sum. So, that's the reason why you killed Isaac Dover. Exactly. What reason do I have to let those who obstruct me live? He was the one who drew first blood. I simply gave him his, his just desserts. So that was his motive. I carried the rock salt lamp that bore my blood into Dover's room. And I came up with a hiding place where it would not eas be easily found. I get it. My room contained plenty of tools for sculpting sherbet. Your deduction is spot on, Sir Attorney. It was the ideal place to shave away the rock salt. Well, obviously, he has to murder everyone in that restaurant. Dump the shoe, dump the sous chef into the fucking <laughs> into the shellfish. <laughs> Serve it. That's that's the only solution, right? And then proceeded to coat the surface of the sherbet liar with. Vast amounts of the salty mixture. Why? Why did you try to pin the crime on Monsieur Master? You are wrong to blame me for that, Lady Catherine. Why do you think we moved to sweet? <laughs> oh my god. If not for your unnecessary meddling, Sir Master would never have been the suspect. Why do you think I hid the murder weapon and fluorescent cloth in Lady Alicia's room? There was only one reason why you would place a murder weapon in someone else's room. You wanted to pin the crime on Delicia. Eh? Me? Yes, that is correct. Gatti, why? Why me? 
was one who sought to be the world's best confectioner. I greatly respect Sir Master. It was never my intention to cast suspicion on him. But an insolent woman who dared to, to sully the contest with fake desserts. I had no problem letting someone like you take the blame for the crime. Th that's That makes me sad. If you hadn't snacked on other people's desserts, the body would never have been found. That, that's that sounds that 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 sounds like a, a good resolution. Not this bullshit. It was when Sir Master would be judging Lady Delicia's room. That's when I finally saw an opportunity to freeze the body. But before I could move the body, Lady Catherine had already discovered it. Why did you need to freeze Monsieur Dover's body? Why indeed. Monsieur Edgeworth, please tell us, why would Monsieur Gustavia have needed to freeze the body? To throw out the time of death. Monsieur Gustavia intended to freeze the body in order to throw off the time of death. If the time of death had coincided with the tea party, Monsieur Gustavia would have been suspected. That is correct. Preparations were necessary to freeze the body while I was preparing in Dover's room. I placed the body in the treasure chest in Sir Master's room. I could think of no better hiding place at the time. But thanks to that gluttonous pharmacist, the lid of the chest broke! Why did you disguise him as an ice sculpture? Once the body was discovered, there would be no time to throw off the time of death. To buy time, you needed to hide it someplace else. How horrid! How could you hide Monsieur Dover's body within one of his own works? It all would have worked out if the body hadn't been discovered, while it was in Sir Master's room. If everything had gone according to plan, Sir Master would never have been arrested. So, because I discovered the body, it's my fault Monsieur Master was... Kate, okay. don't take his words too hard. Even if, even, if, even if suspicion hadn't fallen on Mr. Master, Mr. Delicious would have taken the fall. No matter who he targeted, the one at fault here is Mr. Gustavia himself. A detective in charge in the, of the initial investigation was also a dunce. To think that he never reported the missing body to the prosecutor. Prosecutor von Karma indicted Ms. Master, Mr. Master without knowing the body had vanished. I see. That would explain why he looked so flustered at the crime scene. Although, it's, some, it's something that would stand out if you read the official documents. Could someone have intentionally distorted the information? At any rate, Von Karma found out about the missing body after he had made, he had made his indictment. And if he had let one person be acquitted, he'd have a stain on his much-prided perfect record. That's why... He concealed the fact that the body was hidden, and had Mr. Master's, he had Mr. Master declared guilty. What are you saying? For 18 years, a man has taken the blame for your crimes. Don't you feel anything at all? I don't care what you say. What a monster. I'm arresting him right here, right now, sir. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that will be impossible. So you figured it out. That's correct. You have no right to sentence me. Wh what? But the culprit is standing right in front of us. Allow me to tell you the reason why you can't arrest me. It has been 18 years since, it, since I murdered Dover. The statute of limitations for murder in this country is 15 years, is it not? In, order, in other words, it's impossible for you to arrest me. I only confess my crime because the statute of limitations had, just, had expired. The statute of limitations for murder is 15 years! Mr. Edgeworth, is there nothing we can do? Mm -hmm. As long as the statute of limitations, limitations remains, arresting him is impossible. No way! 
My sincerest apologies, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Neither Mr. Gustavia's testimony nor your logic can be taken as official legal proof. The verdict of the trial 18 years ago cannot be overturned. What? What about the fact that Mr. Dober's body was hidden? Even if we can't arrest Mr. Gustavia, this should at least earn Mr. Master a retrial. Really? I wonder about that. Overturning a verdict of the goddess of law is much harder than you think. Is the PIC trying to justify the verdict from 18 years ago? How unfortunate, Sir P Prosecutor. Is there nothing I can do? Is there no way to continue pursuing Mr. Gustavia? Okay, this is it. This is, uh... Yep, this is, uh... Rasto Spato. Last bird. Press in the second. It's possible that some of your actions 18 years ago were not affected by the statute. It's been so long, I got nothing left to hide. Ask me anything you'd like. Very well. Could you explain to me what you did during these past 18 years? Certainly. After the contest, I, the medicine from the recipe book allowed me to fully cure my taste disorder. I then immediately headed to Zhang Fa to train my design skills. So he wasn't seen ever since that case because it was in a foreign country. Indeed, and I'm certain that I went abroad to train. Uh, wait, let me just check the statute of limitations here. Oh, really? We fucking got him, boys. We fucking got him. If the suspect flees too or lives in a foreign country, the time the time limit is is on hold until the suspect returns. Meaning that because he went there, he fucking fucked himself over. Now, one year after that case, right before Sir Master's final trial began. And thanks to my training, I am now a confectioner unparalleled in both taste and design. You should not be proud of your of a you should not be proud of a position earned through the sacrifices of others. You can't bake a cake without breaking a few eggs. Sacrifices were necessary for my goal. That's horrible. Say what you will. The fact still remains that you cannot arrest me. <laughs> I have to get more information out of Mr. Gustavia. Is there anything of note in his recent testimony? His training in Zheng Fa. Could you please add the details about your training in Zheng Fa to your testimony? Certainly. After your training in Zheng Fa to become the world's best confectioner? <laughs> I got you, bitch! One of the conditions regarding the statute of limitations for murder is as follows. If the suspect flees to a foreign country, the time limit is on hold until the suspect returns. So the statute of limitations was suspended while you were, while you were overseas. That's right! The statute of limitations stopped while you were training in Zheng Fa. Indeed. It is possible that the statute of limitations has not expired yet. Mr. Gustavia, please tell us how long you stayed in Zheng Fa. <laughs> it will be exactly three years. Three years? Wait. Let's calmly think this over. The case occurred 18 years ago. The statute of limitations is 15 years and he was away for three. 15 plus three is exactly th 18 years. I'm sure of it. Miss Ridgeworth, we did it. The statute of limitations hasn't expired yet. <laughs> okay. Exactly 18 years, you say? How amusing. <laughs> so he realized. Why are you laughing? The statute of limitations still applies. Okay. It's frustrating, but... The case occurred in December. It's April now. Which means... Strictly speaking, the case occurred 18 years and 4 months ago. His stay abroad wasn't quite enough. 
We're just a few months short. Not enough! That... that's... Like I said, it's impossible for you to arrest me. You must have known all about this. You must have known all about this when you confessed to his crime. Prosecutor Edgeworth, it really is a shame. If it was just one year earlier, the statute of limitations would not have run out. <laughs> Those who undermine the Goddess of Law's verdict must bear the burden of their crimes. It seems you were simply incapable. <laughs> this can't be the end. So, Monsieur Gustavia really is beyond the law's reach. Kate, what are you thinking? Objection. If you're thinking of taking matters into your own hands, I implore you to re reconsider. There still might be a way to bring this man to justice. What? Miles, remember the fact of the case 18 years ago. Just as you were mistaken earlier, it seems Mr. Gustavia has also overlooked one key detail. Overlooked? He wasn't presented during he wasn't present during Mr. Mr. Master's final trial. So he doesn't know the outcome of the trial. There may yet be a way for you to arrest him. Miles, look over that book on statute of limitations again. Seventeen years ago. Master was falsely declared guilty for a serious crime. Thanks to that verdict, we are not of ammunition just yet. Mr. Shields, I don't mean. Those who undermine the goddess of law's verdict must bear the burden of their crimes. I am Mr. Master's attorney. I can't use his suffering as a weapon in good conscience. For that reason, I leave the rest up to you. trial my father and von karma battle over. Can I use that to arrest Mr. Gustavia? So if if possible accom if yeah if possible if possible accomplices are on trial, the countdown is stopped until the verdict is reached, then resumes. There is one year left. Because he was only found guilty. A year later, right? Yes. What should I do? Should I raise an objection? My father and von Karma, their paths diverged. One revealed the truth, the other concealed it. The path that I choose is the one that reveals the truth. I see no further reason to prolong this trial. I hereby find De Dane Gustavia not guilty. Overruled! Gustavia will stand in court for his crimes. Do you mean to say you have found a way to arrest Mr. Gustavia? Exactly. I'll show Judge Courtney the evidence that will shadow the statute of limitations. Incident file. This right. Take that. I mean, technically, she can. The IS seven case file. Which page are you referring to? Uh. Suspect data. The suspect data page. At the trial, Jeffrey Master was found guilty of being an accomplice to murder. And it took one year to arrive at this verdict. Right. That is indeed true. This book lists conditions in which the statute of limitations can be put on hold. The first, as I have said earlier, is if the suspect flees to a foreign country. But there is one more. Possible accomplices are on trial. Countdown is stopped until the verdict is reached. What are you saying? Sir Master was found to be an accomplice. That's right. Mr. Master was sentenced after you had left for your trip to Zhang Fa. 
and he was found guilty not of being the culprit, but of being an accomplice. It seems you didn't know that. That's absurd! Sir Master never committed any crime to begin with. You should certainly know this. Of course we do. That is why we are going to free him. To that end, we will shatter the one remaining obstacle in our way. The Statute of Limitations. You fled to Shengfa for three years. And Jeffrey Master was being tried as an accomplice for one year. Put it all together, we see that the total time limit for this case is 19 years. In other words, the Statute of Limitations is not over for you yet. The Goddess of Law is unerring, an unerring in her judgments. However, it seems that the prosecutor at the time was not. I cannot believe it, but it seems like the case will have to be reopened. This is absurd. You cannot arrest me. For the last 18 years, an innocent man has suffered greatly in your stead. Mr. Gustavia, it is now time for you to atone for your crimes. No! I had finally earned my place as the greatest confectioner in the world. To achieve that goal, I cast everything aside, even my own son. What a shame. You can't run from your crimes any longer. And Gustavia has been taken into custody, sir. Um, yeah. So you're up next, right? Yes. Yes, I understand. Kate. Everyone, I am truly sorry for all the trouble I've caused. And thank you very much for catching Monsieur Gustavia. What you did cannot be overlooked. Even if the crimes he committed were in response to a past injustice. As a prosecutor, I am terribly sorry for what happened. No, I'm only getting what I deserve, since I, since I was the cause of all this. Kate, will you have me as your attorney? I'm not quite the same useless kid I was 18 years ago. I won't let them find you guilty. Oh, Monsieur Shields! Yes, thank you so much! Sorry to interrupt, but it's time to go. Yes. Alright. Judge Courtney, I can't help but feel like you've been dishonest with me. Dishonest? Whatever do you mean? You said that the verdict could not be overturned, but that was not the case. A reinvestigation and retrial were obviously required as soon as the missing body was found. I have no need to answer you. It seems she doesn't intend to ever give me an answer. Prosecutor Edgeworth, the PIC has you in its sights. They will receive a report on everything you did here today. And you will most likely be required to appear before them. Now then, I shall take my leave. Hold on, Miss Redgeworth. Hold on, Miss Redgeworth caught, caught, caught the real bad guy. Didn't he do his job as a prosecutor? No matter how things turn out, I will never regret what I did here today. Mr. Edgeworth. Hey, Prosecutor Edgeworth? What is it? Why are you always sticking your nose into cases that you are not even involved with? My duty is to, is to reveal the truth. Not only as a prosecutor, it's just who I am. I don't get it. 
As long as you continue to think that being the best is all that matters. I doubt you ever will. Well, I don't get that either. I'm going home. <laughs> okay, good for you, boy. What was that all about? There is much he still needs to learn. Miley! Wh what is it? I knew Greggy's son could do it. You think I might be falling for you? Thanks for helping, Jeffy. Well, um... Yo, Edgy! Great job solving that case. Well, I was busy drawing, so I really didn't catch all of it. Huh? Where did Katie and Justy run off to? Reese, you really weren't paying much attention at all, were you? Well, I hate to admit it, but Larry's doodles actually helped us out a few times. Doodles? You call those doodles? Sir, fucking show me, show me, show me your fucking artworks, okay? I should say something nice to him. Don't glare at me like that, I'm sorry! It was not my intent to glare at you. <laughs> that patented Edgeworth glare. You're just like your old man. Uh, is that so? Well then, Uncle Ray's gonna go pay Mr. Master a visit. You guys wanna tang along? I'd be happy to accompany you. Oh, me too! So this Jeffrey Master, what's he like? Oh, he's a really nice and gentle guy. He's still doing his best to make people happy. He actually cooks desserts for the inmates. Nowadays, all the prisoners and guards look forward to a snack to snack time at 3 o'clock. Wow, that's nice! I want to eat his desserts too! So the chocolate cake we saw in the prison the other day. He was the one who made it. Oh, Gummy! Why are you here? I heard everybody was coming to visit, so I escorted Mr. Master myself. Hello, one and all. I am Jeffrey Master. Prosecutor, Miles Edgeworth, at your service. And I'm Mr. Edgeworth's assistant, Kate Faraday. Oh, oh, it's a pleasure to meet you all. Mr. Master, Miles is your old defense, defense attorney's son. You mean Mr. Gregory's. Your father has done so much for me. And yet, I betrayed his good faith when I made the false confession. I've heard the details from Mr. Shields. Mr. Master, I came here today to tell you everything you've learned about 18 years ago. 18 years ago. Kate committed a crime for my sake. Why would you do such a thing? Miss Hall has been trying to prove your innocence for the past 18 years. She was willing to do whatever it took to save you. Kate, she shouldn't have gone through so much trouble for an old man who let her down. She shouldn't have. Mr. Master, I don't think you realize just how much Miss Hall cares for you. I have something here that clearly proves the two of you share an unbreakable bond. An unbreakable bond? Proof of the bond between Jeffrey Master and Catherine Hall. This should give Mr. Master some peace of mind. Jockey, 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 jockey. These chocolates, did Kate make them? She did. They're really sweet and tasty. She's been making these chocolates for the past 18 years, so that she could give them to you whenever you returned. Kate. I'm sure they are very, very sweet. Yes, they truly are. Unfortunately, I cannot give them to you now. But... I can hand them over later in secret, pal. It is against the rules, but right now, I don't have the authority to stop him. It's not 18-year-old chocolate. Oh, thank you very much. Say, you remind me of an old friend. Do you know of a Detective Bad? Of course I do. Detective Bad is my number one role model, pal. How uncanny. Talk about fate. Mr. Master. It's looking like we'll be able to get you out soon. I can only apologize that it took 18 years to do so. Raymond, I'm the one who should be apologizing. 
Has he been wearing those clothes for 18 years? Like, considering he's in prison, shouldn't he, like, be wearing, like, the prison garments? I don't fucking know. No, that's not it. What I really should be saying is... Thank you, Mr. Master. Now it's my turn to wait for Kate. I'll make her favorite sweets every day until she returns. Please look after her, Raymond. You got it. The IS-7 incident. The case I inherited from my father. After 18 long years, it's finally coming to a close. Miles, thanks for today. I am sorry for leaving that final decision to you. No, I made that decision of my own free will. Eh? What are you talking about? To arrest Gustavia, we had no choice but to use Mr. Master's false charge. To use Mr. Master's false charge, which I was originally supposed to protect him from. The attorney inside of me simply could not do it. So that's how it was. But after this, Uncle Ray is going to try to clear away that false charge as well. Yes, I understand. What? But if they find out about this false charge, they won't be able to arrest Mr. Gustavia, right? That's true. It sure is a contradiction in the law. The way the law is right now, it isn't always completely right. A contradiction in the law? Well, who knows what will happen. The law evolves and grows. Just like all of us do. Just like Uncle Ray and Miles have grown up, you know. People in the law both grow. Miles, to fight crime as a prosecutor or to save people as a defense attorney, I want you to think carefully about how you want to live your life from now on. I will. Well, if you ask Uncle Ray, you'll always be welcome down at the, op down at the office. Alrighty then. Looks like it's time for Uncle Ray to get going. Next time I see you, I'll be sure to thank you again. Ellie, though, thanks for today. Mr. Shields seems to be a bit, be in a bit of a hurry. Indeed, I should be the one thanking him. I was able to face my father's last case because of him. <laughs> I'm not crying. When I was young, I wanted to become a great defense attorney, like my father. However, under Prosecutor von Karma, I learned the ways of a prosecutor. Thanks to a certain friend, I was able to discover my own path in life. However, right now, there are forces trying to make take me off the prosecutor's path. Maybe now, it's the perfect time to think about how I should live my life. Gregory, I'm sorry that it took so long. It may have taken 18 years, but finally, we have proven Mr. Master's innocence. Miles, your son, helped me with that. The way he fought for the truth. He was just like you, Gregory. That's the picture they took! Oh my god, I'm still not the kind of attorney you were. But I will forever carry on. Convictions I inherited from you. And if I can... Together with him. Fight crime as a prosecutor, or to save people as a defense attorney. The path I choose is... That was a wonderful case. My god, yes, save, please. <laughs> You're crying, I'm like, almost there. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my 
my god. And that one was how long? Six chapters or something? I don't remember. It was emotional than this. <laughs> what do you mean? Don't you think the artwork looks really good? Yeah, next next has six parts. Let me just check like how long they are. Oh, first one is really short. Maybe I will just finish this game this weekend. You know what? Anyways, I will... Mm, wait, my sister. She said that she might come over this weekend. Yeah, she said she might. So who knows? 100% accurate. Well. My god, though. Like, I can't believe that was fucking nine chapters. No, yeah, nine chapters. And. Like, look at the time. It says 840. So we didn't. We spent less than an hour on each part. What the fuck? How? The other one was like four, four episodes, the no, four, four parts, and we just I spent fucking eleven hours. The hell? But this was a good case. I want to, like, just say that it was because I was not into it. I don't know. I'm not about to sit here and, like, play through that, like, that, that first... That, I mean, that, that other case, like, in my own time. Again, not about to do that. I think it was actually, like, a long case for some reason. I don't know why, but it just was. I know, right? The flashbacks and, like... The similarities between him and his father, and oh my god, I'm gonna cry. That was that was beautiful. Sorry, I I, I can't have K on on the screen anymore. <laughs> it ruins. It ruins the vibe. <laughs> that was so good. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah. I've like been thinking about the like autistic miles the entire time. And I've been like. Hmm. Maybe. Both of them are 100% ready to adopt any stray children. Well, Miles isn't ready, but, uh... Oh, that bad in adoption rates. Miles isn't actually ready. He is just kind of, like, forced into it. But he clearly cares a, a, a big deal about K. Okay. Now, Phoenix, on the other hand, God, you will fucking see in later games. It's just fucking insanity all over the place. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. But imagine, though, Edgeworth as a defense attorney. Oh no, has he started an orphanage on his own? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Any music? It's it's so quiet.
<sighs> I mean, yeah, now that you you've gotten like more used to Kay, what do you think of her now? Because in the beginning you, you thought she was like someone annoying, but what do you think of her now? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, you're not gonna see Maya or Pearls again for like several games, by the way. Believe me, I fucking cried over that <laughs> myself. I had to fucking rewatch the videos of me fucking crying over Apollo Justice. And I was just like, oh my god. Like fuck yeah. I'm of course I'm gonna fucking bring this up. I really like K. She's cute and also like her her little thief is it's it's such a cool like gameplay aspect like the fact that she can just like revert the 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 scene of the crime like to what it looked like prior. So you can like, hmm, there was something here that's not here anymore. I love that. Honestly, like, I think it's so cool. Oh my god. Also, um... Oh, there are a lot of things that we won't see again for a while. I don't believe there's any more Larry. After this... Not, at least not in this game. But also, in this episode, uh, Bon Karma mentioned that he has a wife. And I'm like, bitch, where? Or was this just like a hypo hypothetical thing again? Like, when he mentioned his granddaughter, which I don't believe he has. <laughs> I actually got, like, really upset the other day because I was like, the fuck? They just got rid of Larry like that? <laughs> but then I, I found that he comes back. And like Spirit of Justice, and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. I don't care anymore. I got upset because there wouldn't be more Larry. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know why. His hypothetical wife. <laughs> but like... Who would want to s marry him? Like, I can't get. I don't get it. I mean, yeah, he, he must have. <laughs> but even that, I'm just like kind of just like denying completely. Oh yeah, no, 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 for sure, for sure. Like, she is his daughter for sure. But it's strange, that's like the only mention 
Office wipe. I'm gonna have to like look it up. You can't look up shit. God, Nigel. <laughs> Where did she come from? Where did she go? Oh my god. Oh my god, I just looked up, I just looked up, uh, Matthew von Karma. Is it just because you want to watch my streams? Because that's kind of cute, not gonna lie. Anyways, um, I, I checked, uh, Manfred's, uh, fandom wiki page. And he has a fa his family is an unnamed wife, an unnamed child, Francisco von Karma, daughter and successor, an unnamed granddaughter, Phoenix, granddaughter's dog, <laughs> and Miles Edgeworth, adopted son, student, and attempted scapegoat. Ah, yes. That's also my favorite family member, you know, the attempted scapegoat. <laughs> <laughs> that family member is the best. <laughs> it was coming for Christmas this year. <laughs> Oh, you know, two cousins, your uncle and the attendant scapegoat. <laughs> ah, yes, I see. Oh my god. Let me see, like, how long is, like, the last case? Remember, it took quite some time. Oh boy, that's long. Oh, that's long one. Oh boy. Listen, the ending of this game fucked me up. It's like, oh, what the fuck? It's insanity, all right? Like, I, I just want to tell like everything that happens, but I'm like, no, Lily, shut the fuck up. I know you're excited, but like, you need to fucking shut the fuck up. We don't want you to spoil anything, you know? Uh, but like... Mm. <laughs> yes, I know, and I want you to find out, but I, I can't just tell you. You need to experience it, you know? Uh, I feel like if the next episode is what I think, yes, I say without even checking. I know that you still want to know. Let's see here. Hmm. 
Oh, hmm. Oh, we will definitely do that. If, 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 if I stream tomorrow, I will start the second to last case. And already at the end of the fucking second part, you're just gonna fucking- What the fuck? <laughs> Well, yeah. God. <laughs> I'm fucking terrible because I just want to fucking spoil everything. <laughs> Plot twists. Mm -hmm. Yes. I am muy excited. That is also the one where we can find Phoenix, I believe. The next case. Anyways, um... I should go because it's late you know i love it so much oh wait uh why isn't phoenix right mention in by name in the investigations games anything about it oh well it's really weird anyways <laughs> yeah it would be really cool if I could fucking finish this game this weekend though I highly doubt it would be like Monday or something I don't know <laughs> no but like it's even I feel like it's even harder to forget his name in um, in Japanese because his name is Naruhodo and that is something you say when you're like ah, I, I see I see and then you're like ah Naruhodo <laughs> So it's harder to forget that. Oh yeah, the latter argument. Fuck. <laughs> Listen, I'm fucking... I will pull up my own fucking YouTube channel. Just to like see. No, he isn't. Why do you think he like they they've translated it the way they did because he isn't mentioned. Uh, okay, which one was it? It was the. Uh, it was the this, yes. Let me see here. No, it was not that. It was this one, okay.
Huh. Hold on. I swear I remember that, uh... See here. Let's see, I'm really looking here. I check the uh death letter because i did it and then I, I like lost my shit because it was like oh that were this team's death letter so like somewhere between this i must have just changed his mind right like, not changed his mind exactly but yeah you might come back there as edgeworth i don't think so hold on Yes, spite. That's that's the word I was looking for earlier. For sure. I'm trying to find it. I remember it. I'm literally at the part like where, where we're in like the backyard or whatever with gumshoe. I'm just like looking through they're just talking. I don't care about that. Can you get- No, no, don't do the staff! Lily, what are you doing? <laughs> Lily, you fucking bitch! I guess I can't find it. Maybe I'll find it later and then I can get her or something. I don't know. Anyways, whatever. Ah! I tried. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's up. Tomorrow. How I will do it. Yeah, sleep at time. I think so too. Do I have to get something to eat first because I'm hungry? We both need sleep here for sure. Oh my god. Nine hours. That's not what I wanted to do today, but I wasn't planning on doing the entire thing, but like if, if, if we were like half over halfway through, like four hours in, so I was like <laughs> might as well, you know? And it worked out better than last time. God, I was in so much pain yesterday. Like you can tell from my demeanor, I was just so tired. It just flew past, really. I don't know if it was the case, or me, or what it was. But like, you know, when I play, I always derail because I always find this like little tiny insignificant detail to just like, get like all hung up in for some reason. Today, it was the fucking Zodiac. <laughs> the Zodiac constellations. I remember, how did this make any sense? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh. 
it didn't make any sense at first. But then we realized that it didn't actually make sense. Mm-hmm. It was really weird. I mean, considering their constellations, it actually does make sense. Which is what I like thought at some point, but I couldn't like find like the right words or whatever. So yeah. Yeah, you too. And I hope to see you here uh, the next time. Tomorrow or whenever the hell it's gonna be. I don't know yet. Depends on what my sister tells me. If she tells me that she is free tomorrow, then we will stream on the other channel, I suppose. Maybe? I don't know yet. Anyways, good night, and uh, I see you when I see you, I guess. Bye.